Hey, you pieces of poop. You poop. Hi, poop, you sexy, Ron. Hi, you sexy Jay, pieces of poop. Jay's pandering. He knows your poop. Don't lie to them. It's what Don't I tell do. They're pretty. It's what I do. Dirty, dirty liars and whores. Mm, I'm, dressed, I'm dressed as Andy Brashear. I'm running for office, so I got to pander. That's what I do. <laughs> or no, it's Steve yeah. Brashear. I don't, I don't remember who our governor is. I can't fucking remember. I think it's Andy. Yeah, it's Andy. Uh, uh, I like that guy. He looks like Mr. Rogers. You know, yeah. he just seems like a nice fellow. But that he probably has kids in his basement. Anyways, how Maybe the hell so. are you guys doing on this Wednesday Eve? It's Wednesday, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's going to see Barbenheimer tomorrow? I heard about that. That's so stupid. I actually am going to see Barbie, though. I do. I think it's going to be funny. <laughs> no, I swear to God. No, dude, I swear I to God. I, say, I am going to like, see Oppenheimer, though. <laughs> well, I, I'm not. I don't know if I'm going to have a back to back night. I might, but not really. But I, it was so funny. Dude. I, was, I saw this TikTok video. This girl was like, so it is like so different a mood and vibe. Would you leave Oppenheimer and then you go see Barbie? I was like, you don't say. <laughs> you don't say that you're gonna go see Oppenheimer and come out feeling weird and then go see fucking Barbie and be like it was the, it was weird it was a totally different experience yeah it's like well, I'm yeah. gonna go see Blink-182 and then I'm gonna go see like uh Kenny G uh, <laughs> or, or like just the, the the dark like Slayer so Blink-182 to Slayer I so I'm I'm wanting to go see Oppenheimer tomorrow I'm probably gonna go see Barbie with the family while we're on vacation because I know the girls want to see it but I, I hope to see Oppenheimer tomorrow but the schedule's not looking good because it's three hours. The movies here don't start till twenty. The twenty. The 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 previews at Cinemark take twenty five minutes. I've timed them down to a fucking art. They start twenty. The movie starts twenty five minutes after the start time. Yeah. So by then it's going to be. And I have volleyball tomorrow night, and then we have to leave in the morning. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not. I want to, but I don't know. No, I'm going to see it at some point. I, but no, I swear to you, I think Barbie's going to be funny because it's got what well, I mean, it's not not just because Will Ferrell's in it, but it look I, some of the Ryan Gosling lines. It's like what. He just kind of, he reminds me of like, it's going to be like a Zoolander type of idiot. Yeah. I, like, I, I saw good. one scene was like that Barbie was walking. I guess she was in the real world. I don't know. And she's walking up to a group of guys. She's like, I don't have any genitals. And they're like, what? He's like, I don't have any genitals. And then Brian Gosling walks up behind because I have all the genitals. I have. <laughs> <laughs> it could be fun. Is it what? Well, it's probably PG-13, right? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked up the rating for it. Hopefully it's at least PG-13. Yeah, I, I, I'm excited to see it man i think it's it just feels like one of those event movies like they put so much work into it you know it doesn't yeah. feel like some blumhouse like fly by night cash grab no offense blumhouse actually all the offense blumhouse um mm -hmm. you guys should stop doing that shit so much but you know i'm excited for it as well um mm -hmm. but dude imagine that double feature that's five hours five hours at the movie theater and yeah what a mix. I, I would well i mean we used to, we've done that before i think we reviewed something we went back to back maybe i mean it was it's, it's a rarity to do that shit though do back to back movies, and it has to be something I really, really fucking want to see. I think I had no, I do know a movie I went, I went back into the theater to watch again was uh, X Men uh, Days of Future Past. Yeah, yeah, that was I, badass. I, I two timed that one too. I had one that was terrible. I saw two movies in one night, and it was fuck. I forgot what it was. Uh, I forgot what the second movie. One of them was Spring Breakers with James Franco, mm -hmm. and it was something else that sucked. So it was like a double shit feature, and I was just tired, and I wanted to go eat beans and shit myself to death afterwards because that seemed funnier funner that's than those two do. movies that's what you do with yeah. some beans. spring breakers is weird it's like just watch a fucking porno you know mm -hmm. i'm not there to watch james franco put gold teeth in and pretend my computer's got so much gay i mean straight porn on it it's ridiculous i'm ready to go yeah. in a drop of a hat or a cop you just, whatever's in you forgot it. it you thought it was opposite day that's why you said <laughs> that's what i said it for uh, yeah stupid it's, heads it's it's june it's the month after june anyways we're tonight we're doing 80s versus 90s part the it's gonna be a good time in your holes in and around it's them. funny because they, they actually had i love the 90s part do yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude, I, I never understood the do thing either it's weird but i like it you know what i hate you know what actually gets on my fucking nerves is when mm. Louisiana people always put like the EU GX or whatever, like the EU X after, like GX Tigers. Like just say fucking go Tigers, not GX Tigers. I hate that. What the fuck are you doing? Is it, I don't know if Stop. it's Louisiana. What is, who's the one that did who that or who day? Is that saying who, that's uh, that's Cincinnati? Uh, that's no, I thought that was New Orleans. No, who New day? Orleans does it, but so does God, like no, yeah, because it's like who day say gonna bite they <laughs> like, God, you fucking <laughs> idiots can't even say a sentence correct. Who cares about who? your team? Who likes to home ball with Nike? <laughs> yeah, I hate the Saints. I hate them. Creasefold likes to get fingered in his creasefold. He says, didn't you hear a word I said? Those guys aren't dead. Get a clue. Something's out there, and it's killing people. And if it's monsters, nobody's going to do a thing about it but us, except us. That's um, 
That's from Ghostbusters. I knew that Ghostbusters one. Ghostbusters too. That's what it was. And yeah. a half. Mm-hmm. Baby's Day Out. What the fuck is that from? <laughs> I don't know. I want to. Is it's it Monsters. Monsters Nobody's going to do a thing about it except us. That sounds. Oh, is it? No, is that the Halloween Kills? No, it's not. No, it's Monster. Oh Squad, no, it's right? Monster Squad. Oh yeah. Not- Jesus Christ! Did you hear what I said? Those guys are dead. Get a clue. Something's out there that's killing people. And if it is monsters, no one's going to do a thing about it except us. I had a what, pube. Eugene? Creature stole my Twinkie. <laughs> I, had, I had a pube in my mouth. <laughs> I had well, a pube in my mouth. Well, you need to tell Gary to start using Manscaped. Yeah, it's weird because it's white. It must be Thor's pube, which <sighs> makes sense. Hey, you are in Kentucky. Yeah, I do love my dog. Wolf of Elm Street says, been uh, having more stress than I can imagine. Hard to deal. You guys are a comfort for me. Unlike anything I can explain, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, all right. That's cool. That Thank you, man. That's a nice comment. And you guys, I would I would retort to the same thing for us, brother. I promise you that. I promise you that. Thank you so much, man. Um, Courtney Reed says, Mike, can you do Mark Wahlberg about the Bible Belt? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Let me try to gather myself. I'm glad I haven't had much to drink this evening. But I'll step into a, a Sound of Freedom pile of shit. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I know that's not a see. I already did it. I already fucked it up. Um, uh, so I'm taking the kids, my seven kids, and we're going down the Bible Belt. We're driving to Florida to go to the beach, and I just see the sign that says you're gonna burn in hell if, in eternity if you're a Democrat. And I'm like, I'm a Democrat because I live in Hollywood. I don't know what else to be, but I think actually I hung out with Mel Gibson one time, and we tried to outrun the wind together. We did a whole bag of cocaine, and then we tried to run down the track. So I think I guess I'm a Republican if I hung out with Mel Gibson, right? Is Mel Gibson a Republican? Is Hollywood a Republican? What is this? Am I going to hell? Who made that sign? But that really was a sign that I saw. I'm not going to lie. I saw a sign that said, everybody's going to burn in hell. Or can everyone can find a way not to burn in hell, even the Democrats. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, man. Those goddamn lost Democrats. The plot. You burn in hell, you sons of bitches. <laughs> that was a true story. That was a true story. I was riding in a hatchback with Mark Wahlberg, and that's exactly what he said when he saw that. It is sign. weird. The Bible Valley is like one of the weirdest fucking like, areas or stretch of land to drive through. It really is strange. It's like yin and yang down, like on either side of the fucking highway. You got the big tit porn shops, and then you got the big <laughs> churches and shit. It's crazy. Hey, Action said toothpick, Mike. Oh, okay. No, it's because I had the pube. I really got nervous for a second, Action, that I had like celery <laughs> or like cilantro in my fucking teeth for a second. Mm. That's the worst. Mm. That's the worst when that happens. Um. Uh, so Max Devereaux says Masters of the Universe versus Street Fighter. That's... Uh, it's not even a question, bro. Like the movies, or just like, yeah. you know, like who would win, He Man or, or Ryu, <laughs> Adulkin, <can, laughs> or fucking Grayskull Power? I mean, I these movies, movies. I, I, dude. I, I'm gonna go. I love, I love Masters of the Universe, dude. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I know it's a shitty, corny BS movie, but it's it's fun to me, dude. I don't know, and I you got to give it up for fucking uh, what's his name, the guy that played Skeletor. Uh, what the fuck was his name? He, he played Count Dooku. What the hell? Why am I blinking on him? Uh, Christopher Uh-oh. Lee, I think was it Christopher Lee? I could be wrong about that, but I, no. But, but despite its corniness, uh, it was great. I don't know. <laughs> Frank Langella, like, I'm stupid. It's <laughs> Frank Langella. But Derek's like, you need to do a re-rank of the Stephen King movie. We just did it, Derek. God damn it! I guess people were disappointed with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you get done uh, having sex, and she's like, "We need to do it again," <laughs> but yeah, it's not like a happy like, "Let's do it again." You're yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. You're gonna have to wait about. Fucking 45 minutes. I can't Yeah, go. depends. I mean, you could maybe do an outfit change, see if you could speed it up. But mm. otherwise, it's going to be a few minutes for sure, especially if you've been drinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. You want to shove that dicks. thing in there all flaccid. <laughs> Can you- hey, don't worry. It'll fit. I just got to push it in there and it'll get hard. Just wait. Yeah. You, let me get a let me get a butter knife and just kind of like <laughs> go around the edges and like force it. In. That's disgusting. It's all wet. And goofy. Dude, I'm this one time. I shouldn't be talking about this, but I do remember this one time when I was like fucking 17. No, I was like 16 or 17, and this girl, I think it was technically fucking rape. I don't know. I was, remember, you were, I was drunk as fuck, and she tried to fuck, she tried <laughs> to have rape. sex. You were there. <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah, Mike was in there taking pictures, <laughs> like the sick bastard that he is in the corner. But no, really, I was drunk on the floor, and I was laying on my back, and I was like sick, like drunk sick. And like, she came in there like the fucking maiden of death, and like got on top of me, like the succubus of the whore that she became later on in life, and like tried to like grab this flaccid dick that didn't want to do anything except die and shove it up in there like a worm and it just it just kept bouncing out because i was like oh i was like i was dead and then my somebody opened the door they're like he needs ice not pussy ice (laughs) was this in uh was it was that no it was at your sister's place dude oh it was my sister shit it wasn't your sister but it was at her place 
Oh, was it her boyfriend? But, no, because I then I remember like people just shoving fucking L8 in my mouth with ice, and they're like, chew it, dude. But I was like, not one person is rested fucking elephant in the room was the fact that I was nearly raped. <laughs> and then I, I thought thinking. I actually cheated on me. And Mike's like, dude, God was protecting you that night. He was making your dick stay flaccid. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was. He was sucking the air right out of that thing. Mm. That was weird. I just said God sucked you off. I didn't mean to, but that's just what mm. happened. And we're only like five minutes deep, and I already said something like Good that. Times. Uh, I was thinking of the time when um, <laughs> I was thinking of the time in Satchel Page's basement. You know what I'm talking about? Mm, mm, uh, mm, there was some, yeah. That was definitely... fun, dude. That was like some gnarly ass shit. I've, that, it was like I got taken advantage of. I can tell yeah, you that was, right now. That whole that whole situation was like a club fifty four, like 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 through like a a fog of like drugs, like where you can kind of remember <laughs> things, but there was lights and there was smoke for some reason. I think they had a fucking smoke machine going yeah <laughs> it was just the neon lights it was not good not not it's not a fond memory it sounds like it was fun no, it was awful. You guys, it was fucking it, awful it wasn't these weren't attractive people <laughs> no dude the one yeah that one cornered me dude and i'll tell you what she cornered me because there was there were sisters uh one yeah. of them cornered me while mike was being that she was grab assing with mike and the other one cornered me in the other in the other yeah, part of the room was. and uh dude you know what like dude i got grossed out because she pushed me we were like on the ground and i felt the brush of her chin and i felt like billy goat hair and like <laughs> Because it was like sharp too, it was like stubble, and I was like, "Oh fuck, dude!" And like my stomach went upside down, and I was like, "I'm not interested in kissing you at all anymore." Like I was, and then I felt that brush, and I was like, "Shit, I feel like I'm in prison." And I just got like, "I hope your butt's ready." She was, she was like, "Well, come on, Mike slept with my sister." Like yeah. that doesn't mean I have to. It was a two for one. <laughs> it's a double, t- <laughs> double dare. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that would have been there. Yeah, you Jesus, stupid, yeah, stupid, stupid. Stay away from alcohol when you're in your teens, kids. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's all fun and games until. Jay I don't know, dude. I I really don't know how raped. we've not been arrested and put in jail for multiple. They offenses. should be arrested and put in. Jail. Well, no, that I know, I know. For what but I'm did. saying, well, we've been in situations. Where, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, just situations that we shouldn't have been a part of. As a, as a as like a seventeen year old, when someone's like, "Hey, me and my sister are gonna pour this whiskey down your shirt and lick it off your belly button," you're like, "What am I fucking Nicholas Cage and leaving Las Vegas?" All right, I'll do it. I don't know how to say no because as a guy, you have to say yes, right? And I'm yeah. like, I'm not. It burns. I couldn't give. <laughs> dude, I'm not lying to you. When that happened, when I was like, say, I, I couldn't give consent. Literally, my mouth wouldn't fucking work. I, I all I said, was, oh, and then he needs ice, not pussy. <laughs> <laughs> You put that on a fucking t shirt. That that could be a bumper sticker. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. Fuck. Anyways, back to the that that basically was the 90s. It was so long ago. Yeah. Uh, Norris, thank you so much, Chuck. He says, What's up, my dudes? Could you ever see Jim Carrey as Freddy Krueger? I I would say yes. I think he's fucking number 23. He did great in that. Yeah, I think Jim Carrey could do Fred Krueger and everybody would shit on it and then he would come out and he would fucking crush it. I think so. I think I really think so. Mm-hmm. I know uh, we all grew up watching ca- carrying comedy roles, but his acting is great. I just want a new nightmare movie regardless. Yeah, same dude. I would let yeah. I would let that girl Jay was talking about dress up in a tutu and walk around farting uh, if, if she if, if she if it meant we got to see someone play Freddy Krueger. I, uh, I think that. that I think it's one of those things that the Jim Carrey is like, I think he's a versatile enough actor that he could easily slip on and do that role. But at the same time, he's out of his fucking mind. So I don't know if he'd be able to get him like settled down enough to be able to do a script read for Freddy Krueger. Plus, you know, what's weird about him. I think he gets too far into the character. Like he, what, if, you know what I mean? Like, cause when he was playing, what was it? Man on the moon. Oh yeah. You're actually getting to into fights with Jerry Lawler and shit. I, I know where the limit is. <laughs> I'm not going to go, but I mean, he gets, uh, he's a very big character actor. So he gets really into the role and it's kind of annoying for other castmates. But yeah, Jim Carrey would be fine. I think someone mentioned last stream, Kevin Bacon. We've talked about him before. But again, the thing about it is, I think overall, we all have to remember that we want the franchise built on a younger guy, which I think the studio wants as well. And Jim Carrey, he's up there in age too. So it's not really it's not really a good investment for a studio uh, to put that on a new act or an older actor and have longevity for the series. So it's got to be yeah. a younger actor. I agree with this. I, agree I mean, with this uh, I think Skarsgård would be good. One of the, Scar, Scar. he already yeah. did it though, so you can't really. Well, like, his brother, don't he have like sixteen of them? Yeah, there are like twelve. They're like the new fucking Baldwin's. Mm. Uh, there's like the Bizarro Universe Baldwin. Or you could get fucking like, Alec Baldwin. Didn't he kill someone in real life? He's already ready for the role. That's researched and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's no, called. That's a legend. No, it's a legend. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. allegedly. Um, there's either a black cock floating around in the corner of my screen, or my dog's over here, and it's his, her tail. It is. Go away. 
Take your tail cock and get out of here. Go. Dude, Adam Ball, Adam Ball dude, dude. back in the day, though, I could see him being Freddy Krueger. Like when he was dude, doing The dude. Shadow. Uh, his face is too thick, I feel like. And his his voice is too. Okay. Yeah, he's just too. He actually, actually, back in the shadow days, Alec Bull was too fucking good looking. There's no way. Yeah, so fucking handsome. Mark's movie says King's miniseries 11, 22, 63 for me all timer. I think you're on yesterday's stream, but I don't remember that movie. I don't know what it is. Is that James uh, Franco was in that? I think. <clears throat> Did he draw a picture of a cock eating a frog? <laughs> Does that he draw weird shit? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what that is, dude. I, I've I never it watched it. With James Franco. <clears throat> oh, dude, speaking travel. of Stephen King, because I mean, since we're all talking about that, I just watched the interview. Uh, uh, the, the the guy that was Lex Luthor on Smallville, what was his name? Michael Rosenbaum. Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah, uh, pulled inside... that out. Did you see that shit? Yeah, I loved it. Movie I really, trap. I, I was right there. I caught it. I caught it. When you threw the baseball, I caught it. Okay. I said strike. Oh, uh, but no, that. Michael Rosenbaum, uh, inside of you, great name for a podcast, and he's a really good interviewer. He was interviewing uh, Weber, Michael Weber, I think that's his name, that did the uh, Stephen King miniseries on tv and he was asking him it was actually really funny uh he was like hey did you get any insights from stephen king because i know that you hung out with stephen king on the set when you were doing the mini series and he was like yeah but it was really disappointing because he said this is what happened stephen king was on set and so i would read something in the book and i'm like oh my god the, the the actual author is right there and i could go ask him and so i'd go over to stephen king i'm like hey man what's this line mean what's this one and that one he was like uh well that line right there is about a, some wine uh, that one is because I was standing over a carpet and the colors intrigued me. Oh, and that one is when I was drunk. I wrote it because I was drunk. And he's like, oh, I was hoping for some more insight. but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the kind of John yeah. Carpenter answer, you know? Well, I mean, the, the reality people have asked me, where do you get all these uh, ideas for you? And he's like, I don't know. I just fucking think of them. And yeah, and he did struggle with alcoholism. I know that he was, out, I, I guess, for a while. Yeah, and I, you see some of the shit that he comes up with. It's like totally fucking understandable. Like you're just drunk and you're like, what if that fucking shit happened? Yeah, and you're like, no, I'm type that in. <laughs> I think we, yeah, dude, it's weird because like he watched Stephen King on Twitter and he's like the worst on Twitter. Like it's not his opinions that bother me. I mean, he's obviously super, you know, Democrat. Where I don't care he's about right, he's real shit. left, yeah. Yeah, none of that shit bothers me whatsoever. But it's just the like his jokes are just like like you would think the greatest writer of all time, at least commercially, would be good at Twitter, and <laughs> he's not. Like he's like sick burn huh and you're like no dude well he's also like, like my grandpa he's like a 60 plus year old man i was like yeah but he's still churning and burning through the no he's no books. he's great in long it. long novelizations i don't think he understands how twitter works you can't i mean people <laughs> use like you are like are and he's still using actual sentences <laughs> yeah it's like what true. up boomer fucking boomer <laughs> shut up boomer <laughs> root and toot in texas too hey man it's been a while since the saint chi uh it says i ain't have no money but now i got some damn money <laughs> I, 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 man, don't you worry about your goddamn kids' welfare and or your kids' child support. Don't matter no goddamn way. Hey, what the twisted t forties go up and down? <laughs> There's a scene in H18 when Michael's trying to get into the basement. He stops like I'm too damn old and too damn blind to do this. And to be honest, yeah, same. yeah. What was what's the new word nowadays? Kids are saying based, based and true. I think Eminem said based in like, I, like I had to look do I literally I'm so old dude I like I heard somebody saying it and I was like what the fuck does that mean because I saw I was watching a twitch stream and people kept going based and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck does that mean and I looked it up and it was like the vernacular is like based means you agree I think it means you agree yeah 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 I was like just based. say I agree but it, I think it Fucking can also idiot. mean like you're fucked up like on like no Carol. no so if you say oh something something I agree based I was like just I, say I agree how fucking hard is that you got to come up with a bullshit word based I'm literally becoming that old man with a lawn chair out in his front yard screaming at dumbass kids. But I agree with you. Yes, uh, that is definitely relatable. I'm too damn old and blind. It's like, I don't want to go down there. I don't, I don't yeah, I, I, yeah, I believe base means the lack of an old wooden ship, but I could be wrong about that. Hey, nerd or die, what's wrong with eating fucking cilantro, buddy? Cilantro's delicious. You don't I eat mean, it by what, itself. It, it, so, isn't, that, isn't that just for, uh, isn't cilantro for like, uh, no, you're thinking, no, of, like decoration on the plate? It's, yeah. it's supposed to be decorative. Yeah, no, you're thinking of um hey, what's that fake shit they put on the never mind, she's not this. It's no, like uh what's the fake shit they put on the side of plates at restaurants? Like the leafy thing. Parsley? Parsley. You're thinking of parsley. Oh, parsley. I've eaten Cilantro's... that shit. I thought it was like supposed to be you're supposed to eat it. I'm like, this tastes like shit. It's <laughs> <laughs> <She's laughs> like, oh. like this is bad. And I was like, they yeah. served I know I literally did do, but I'm also the asshole that ate shrimp scampi and I didn't know you had to peel it and I ate it all. Like fucking, <laughs> fucking shell tail. and everything. Yeah, dude. I was, dude <laughs> Comes no, no, no. out of your butt all sharp uh, dude, and shit. I, oh my God, dude. This is what happened. They brought me 
But I was like, oh, shrimp scampi. What's that? That sounds cool. And they brought me a separate bowl. And I was like, why would they bring me a fucking empty bowl? There's nothing in it. I thought they'd put sauce in it. And I'll sit there and eat that shit. And I didn't peel it because I didn't know you were supposed to. And I was like, damn, this shit's crunchy. And they were like, oh, is it good? I was like, yeah, it's crunchy. And then that the woman came back to take my plate and it was done. And she looked at the bowl and it was empty. And she's like, where's the shells? And I was like, oh, you're supposed to peel that shit? <laughs> I, I save them. Yeah. I keep them in my purse. I got a yeah, purse full of them. See, yeah, I that. that's and I wasn't wild, drunk, dude. by the way. I, I was when I wasn't drinking, but yeah, cilantro is good though. I'm just, just saying, and like you got to mix it with other stuff. Obviously, Austin says Jurassic Park slash Aliens crossover complete with Xenomorph dinos, the return of Dennis Nedry as a buff action hero, and the T Rex versus Alien Queen. I think you have smoked yourself retarded. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's not, is that is that going to star that fucker from nine hundred two one zero Anthony? What's his name? The blonde dude that was in Sharknado. <laughs> oh fuck, I can't remember his name. Yeah, I know you're talking uh, about that. Yeah, that dude. Uh, you know what I'm talking about the nine hundred two one zero guy. But yeah, uh, well, here's the thing. I think that the Alien Queen easily overpowers the T-Rex. You got to remember, while the Alien Queen, there are they're technically the Xenomorphs are still they're they're animalistic. They're not stupid, and the Alien Queen is the smartest of them all. So it would be easily overpowered with T-Rex. Uh, Dennis N Nedry coming back as a buff action hero, I think that'd be funny as fuck. Like to be honest with you, the big fat guy coming back and looking like Arnold in his prime <laughs> would be hilarious. I wonder everything else today. Uh, aliens would just gain like that would be cool though. You imagine a xenomorph taking control of a T-Rex and the T-Rex becoming like a new species of alien xenomorph. Because they would lay an egg in the fucking thing and then it would like become like a big giant yeah. asshole that's in xenomorph. Yeah, it's I'm just tired though. <laughs> I'm tired. Like they wore me out with that shit with Jurassic Park. Like, no, man, we're gonna mix the fucking. Like, sounds like he's DNA getting ready to get a divorce. I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm just tired, though. <laughs> Who bought the fucking noodles? No, it's like your your, your your wife's. Like, I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm tired of everything. Yeah, and that's how I feel about Jurassic Park. Like, we're gonna mix the super dino of DNA. Fucking, I'm like, calm the fuck down. Just go back to trying to make the dinosaurs fucking look good. I don't yeah, even or... care if it's like one pterodactyl. Just give me a dinosaur that doesn't look like it was created on King's Quest from 1997 on PC, please. Or maybe, or maybe, stay. or maybe just I don't know. Take a break from Jurassic Park for a while. Probably they should. I feel like that's the that's the answer, Joe. Michael Parton says eight tracks tapes versus cassette tapes. Cassette. Well, that's easy. Cassette. cassette tapes all day long. Although I do like we the were, uh, yeah, yeah, of Michael, we're not that fucking old, dude. I know that we look it, but Jesus Christ, we weren't walking around with Moses. I never <laughs> had an eight track tape. Like when we, I got my license, there were things called cassette tape players, and then I, but eight tracks were long gone. Eight track was just the thing you sat around talking about with your friends, like, oh, dude, you get an eight track? That's no, worth some money. I, You're like, I yeah, know. and then you go to Pedler's Mall, and there's like three thousand. You're like, oh, I guess they're not worth anything. I Nobody saw the cares. invention of the CD player. I got one for Christmas when I was like ten or eleven, yeah, and I was like, oh. Shut up, bitch. Hey, you calm that fucking pussy but, down. Uh, but the pussy, it's not a cat. Uh, <laughs> but I remember I had the the, the uh thought you had one of them one of them yard markers out there. I remember my CD player, I was like really I really really liked it because it had a 10 second uh anti-skip thing on it, which was cool as fuck. I remember getting oh, yeah. that and then uh but yeah, I had and then uh, I had my first car was a Dodge Neon and it had that thing, the adapter where you put the cassette tape in and then you could connect it to your CD player. You don't oh, know. Yeah. You remember that? I, That's, no, I rocked that like as soon as ten years yeah, ago. That was cool. You know? as fuck, yeah. You get a car. I had like a truck that didn't have a fucking CD player. I bought one. You can still get them. They even have like Walmart. You can still buy the adapters. Mm -hmm. um, remember the Talk Boy, by the way. I never got one. I never had one either. I heard they were uh, junk. It probably would have been disappointing, you know. Yeah. Uh, and the end. Sinister Creation says Freddy versus Ghostface. Freddy. Freddy. I, even I say Freddy. Don't like, talk um, to me. Creations of sinister things. Like I'd say Scream over Nightmare on Elm Street, but I would say Freddy is like have you said golf classes right now you come to the house and Listen you insult your host. Listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, I mean Freddy's just he's the he's probably the scariest villain of all time. I think he's the most I, well, he's definitely one of the most unique villains of all time. Yeah, there's no hiding from sleep. God damn it, I've tried it. I was <laughs> on Adderall <laughs> once. Yeah. All you had to do was stay awake. And you couldn't even do that. I was like, bitch, I was tired. I have a waterbed. Johnny Depp should have said. <laughs> JD, holy shit balls, man. Thanks so much. Fucking, I don't know why, but when I saw that pink and that huge super chat, I just thought, -doo 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 -doo. I want to take off all my clothes and rub baby oil on me and play saxophone for you. But I can't do that, so I'll just read this. Hey there, fellas. Good to see your faces. Mike, I had a first. I'm showing someone scream, and they enjoyed three more than one. Anyway, have a great show. No, you don't. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go into the kitchen. I want you to grab the sharpest knife you could find. <laughs> don't say it on stream, dummy. 
<laughs> I'm kidding, but seriously, put strychnine in their in their diet soda. I'm joking. Get new but no. friends. How about hey, that? Man. Just get new friends. You give them a dare dare bumper sticker to put on their car. Dare to keep <laughs> kids off drugs because they're obviously they're smoking a lot of it to say such things. How many gummies did they take before they watched Scream Three? That's that's, that's what it is. They they watched Scream One sober and then they were on their yeah. fucking fifth pack of edibles by the time yeah. they got to Scream Three. And why are you watching Scream movies with your seven year old cousin? <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Hey, oh, they I've, said there's. Uh, no, okay. okay. I, I had to reread that. I was like, I, no, I, I just made that up. up. Okay, I, I, made I, that I didn't up. insult a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, no. I mean, I, you shouldn't let your seven year old watch Scream, but I was seven years old when I watched Nightmare, so I don't know. Yeah, I'd be, no, I'd I, be I, a I, bad. I, you're a bad father. I'm a bad <laughs> how about father. that? I really. Am. I would be a bad father. Like I'd be like <laughs> seven years old. Shit, son, come over here and watch Exorcist with the old dad. Old dad, come be gay with father and I. Um. Yeah, no, JD, thank you so much, man. Hey, I, I've heard people say, I think people are crazy who say they like two better than one, but there's a lot of them. There's also a lot of people who think the Scream TV series is better than the movies. I've seen people comment this, man. And that, to me, is more blasphemy. Yeah, there's a lot of people that think that 9-11 was an inside job, but we just move on with our life. <laughs> <laughs> or that country music's good. But hey, here we are. now. now that Don't one, you dare talk about Jason people. Aldean, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, did you see what Miranda Lambert did, by the way? Miranda no, Lambert. She, she's still kind of Miranda hot. Lambert. Didn't she stop uh, her concert because people were taking selfies? Yeah. Like, first off, if you, yeah. you play music where people sit down to listen, so automatically you're stupid. <laughs> but, like, she she's sitting there, and it's like an auditorium where everybody's sitting down. They're supposed to watch and just, like, clasp their, their, clutch their pearls and watch the show. And she's yeah. singing, and I guess these two girls were just taking a selfie. Like, they well, stood okay, up, but, but selfie it up. In her defense, though, if she's on stage and it's a bright fucking light and it's, like, distracting as fuck and you're singing a song, I it's guess it concert. would be a Bright yeah, light. but maybe it's annoying. I don't know. I wasn't there, but maybe it was like a goddamn UFO beacon or something. If it was really nope. bright, she was mad. She was mad because they weren't listening to the song because it sucks. <laughs> maybe it's like, hey, I was like, yeah, they were like, hey, let's wait till the shittiest song comes on that she's gonna sing and let's take a selfie really quick. Yeah, she stopped the show. She's like, I just want to say, I'm here to play some country damn music tonight, and they're over there taking a selfie, and it honestly pisses me off. And it's like they paid tickets; they can do whatever the fuck they want. Shut the fuck up, Miranda. Yeah, remember the good old days when Axl Rose would just jump in the fucking crowd and beat the shit out of you for disrespecting them. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the world's missing today. Uh, Dude, I would have. You imagine how cool that would have been to be at that Guns N' Roses show when he threw the fucking microphone into the crowd and beat. <laughs> And then jumped in there to fuck someone up. I'm like, dude, this is either the shittiest waste of money I've ever had in my life or the greatest moment in, in the history of rock and roll shows that I literally watched a lead yeah. singer of a former great band jump yeah. into the crowd and beat the shit out of somebody. There was two reactions to that. Like some people were like, oh my God. And some people left angry and some people were like, you got knocked the fuck out. I probably been, <laughs> like, I, I like definitely smoking. went in the third. And then I'd be like, Axel, can I come backstage? <laughs> <laughs> you rule no dude me. i never would i would never want to hang out with axel rose i just never by the would. way i don't i don't need either Shut another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, hey, man, hey man you want some cocaine real quick snort it off that bitch's ass right there and she had like pimples and shit on her asshole she looks like an extra he, from a rob like, zombie the one movie I use all time just use it i'm like no dude i'm like oh, do it <laughs> <That's> it. you'd <laughs> be like good, michael Sierra. you'd be like michael Sierra and super bad i'd be like no way man no way man <laughs> <laughs> no, you would open up the door at him and and and, and he'd be Michael Sarah in fucking uh uh The Last Night. What's the name of that movie? About the end of the world. I think it's called The End of the World. The last night. Whatever. Oh, uh, you know what uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They walk in and Michael Sarah's in the bathroom and he's got a Capri Sun in between his butt cheeks and those two girls are drinking out of it. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I forgot. Yeah, that's a great fucking movie, dude. It's like she was thirsty. Oh shit, Colton, what's up, dude? And by the way, guys, I don't hate all country music. That was just a bad joke. I like, um, I like. Actually, I've, I've come around to a couple songs I like. Tim McGraw's all right. I like mm -hmm. Garth Brooks. I like '90s country. You know, uh, rodeo. I don't know uh, what year they were from. They were not bad. Yeah, Brad Paisley's okay with. Actually, dude, I swear to God, I kind of, you know, people are gonna hate me for this. I do. I don't. I don't hate Five Finger Death Punch. I, I thought I did because I, I never really listened to them. They're not bad. They're just political. But there's some did songs you? that are pretty good. Did you veer off topic, or or do you think Five Finger Death Punch is country music? I mean, they could be. If they, <laughs> if they I mean, I if, no, no, no. Because if the subject material is a lot of what country music guys sing about, because like uh, I'm on the wrong side of heaven and the righteous side of hell, that's a good fucking song. I do like that song. <laughs> yeah, no, that but that is definitely that's and this is that's maybe actually thinking, why no maybe right, that's it, why I don't like Five Finger Death Punch because they are a metal band. 
but you thought they were country, and you're not that. <laughs> I said that. I said that could be if because the subject material sounds like some shit they would sing about in country songs. Yeah, no, I get, I get you, but no, I, I'm actually agreeing with you. I, I'm not a fan of them uh, myself. He can still but, sing really well. Uh, well, I mean, he he just talks. He's well, just no, like that. That's well, I don't know. I mean, I can I, I can't talk like that against the world. Unless I smoke six packs of cigarettes, and I could talk like that. But <laughs> anyway. Oh shit! Fuck. Um, what were we talking? Colton, what's up, dudes? Mike, hope y'all yeah. have fun on vacation. Be careful though. Some places down here in in uh, North in Canada, C- which is where I'm vacationing, mm-hmm. are crazy. And um, North Columbia, Mike's got a deal to run. <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, dude. No, trust me. We always vacation. Goddamn Nats. We always vacation in the South. So, quick story time. Just real quick story time. Very scary. Almost got fucking. Um, just bad things almost happened. When we went to the Blink concert in Atlanta, all the reviews for the place were saying, it's a really nice neighborhood, great neighborhood. But <clears throat> five feet away, it is not a great fucking neighborhood. So we're tired, we're driving, we pull into the to the place. It's a cheap place, you know, it's super cheap. It's like a dorm that we were staying in basically because the concert tickets were so expensive. Anyways, we're tired. So like, we don't really want to Uber somewhere. And there's this place called like the Crab Boiler or some shit, and it's it's within walking distance. So we're like, oh, we'll just walk it over. Sounds there. like some shit in Hellraiser Three, like the place it, where you go to get murdered. <laughs> well, it's, it was two monies on Google. Like you know how you look up the reviews and they got like, money or three monies. Yeah, the oh, cash I, lines. Oh, I thought they were yeah, like two stars. monies. What the fuck? So is it's that? like that's a that's a little fancy for us. Two monies is you're, you're paying a little bit, mm. and it's a crab place. It's one of those places that put the food in the bag and they mix it all up mm. and it's fucking seafood or whatever. Yeah. Holy fucking shit, dude. We walk around the corner, and the second we step onto the street, we are in the fucking ghetto. I mean, mm-hmm. just like like it was weird how it worked out. And there's these people parked outside in front of this restaurant, literally in front of the front door. And they have like a, a Mustang or some shit. All the doors open, blaring music, yeah. playing basketball, yeah. fucking hanging out. There's like 10 dudes hanging around the car. Yeah. And they had a fucking mm-hmm. ballet service wow. for this shithole. The guy opens the door for us, and we walk was in. It's sponsored and by And One. <laughs> it was fucking everybody's wearing and one jerseys look I knew all I, I know was was, area. we were not supposed to be there it was just me katie and my daughter and we were not supposed to be there there was nobody in the restaurant except for I like eight dude just like, safe from store you know like bellevue <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they all just stared at us they stopped what they were doing and fucking stared at us and i'm thinking oh my god what the fuck there's no one in this restaurant and the tables were all, they look like from a, for, from a defunct Long John Silvers. They were like all bubbly and cracked and shit. They the sold. bar, <laughs> no drinks. Yeah, fuck, no drinks in the bar, nothing. No draft. They, they were pouring soda out of cans. Uh, dude, they, you were in a they trap lost their, house. You were in a dude, fucking they, trap house, dude. They lost their liquor license, so they didn't even have alcohol. Mm. And there's one family sitting in there. And the dude's sitting there like fucking kingpin, right? And he's got this gigantic clear thing all around his shirt and he's just tearing up some fucking crawfish and shit and this fucking lady in this huge place that's completely empty sits us right next to them i mean fucking right here and we sit down and i went katie i'm not fucking doing this yeah you should have just no man you should have rolled with it we're going no dude i wasn't gonna do it because i knew it was gonna be expensive too so it's like fuck it i got up and left and the waiter coming over to me caught eyes with me as i got up to leave and he went like he fucking he agreed he was like yeah, man, you should get the fuck yeah, out like, of here. You're a, little too, like, you're a little too white. I can I can see by the way you walked. I, you know, I don't know you're if that was it or just. You're scared I think, I, I, think I, I did some research on the place, and apparently the same guy owns a really sketchy strip club like two blocks away. So I think the house, the, the place is like more of a front than anything. But yeah, it was basically a bar that Wolverine would go to to get information. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was, but everything was white, like everything was pure white, and there was like bubble. I, I can't explain to you how awkward it was. But we leave, and I and I explained to them, I was like, "Hey, I was just wanting a place that had draft beer." <laughs> and she goes, "Mm-hmm." And I was like, "All right." Dude, so you we came go stand. off like such a fucking country club white boy. I, I know. Just, I, did. I just wanted to have a place that had draft beer. I know. I did. Have and it I, on a Palmer. And for some, I am right now. But you guys got to understand, this was fucking scary. Like I have no, I have low. St- I would have gone to a tacos too in the fucking middle of uh, ass crack nowhere. Dude, and I, fine. I mean, well, you have a family, but I, the weird thing with me is like the more drunk I get, the less I give a fuck. So I walk into a place like that, but like, see, pretty normal totally to me. Sober. There could be a goddamn uh, out, like a chalk outline of a victim that happened last week on the floor. I'm like, I don't think about art. That's probably from a horror movie. It's probably not real. <laughs> <laughs> hey. And that's, I, I, that's where I get in trouble because it's like, oh, you get too drunk and then you're like, oh, I'm too, too comfortable. 
And then you're like, uh, and then yeah. you wind up in the back of a car somewhere and you're going to a party that you have no idea where you're going. And then you're like, where the fuck am I? Like, yeah. I didn't expect this to happen. Life's an adventure, y'all. Well, that was the thing. I was completely sober. And like, I know that like, you know, obviously it was not our demographic, uh, but I've also, I just want to be very, very clear. I've walked in places full of extremely fucking scary redneck people and felt the exact same way and been in those shows Oh yeah, before. You, you look but, like us in Kentucky, gelled hair. Right wearing button-up shirts you walk into a country club it's the same there yeah there's places like that where i've had the exact same experience but dude it was so bad that we we walked out stood on the corner katie called an uber and the fucking uber was a tesla which is weird comes driving down the roads sees where we are sees looks at us fucking looks at us from the car and cancels the fucking uber and drives away i thought you were fucking kidnapping those two innocent people that were with you (laughs) <laughs> so that's like, how oh, bad it was oh, like, it's like this piece of shit is in the worst part of town and he has a young child and a woman with him he's definitely a trafficker no way <laughs> it was fucking gnarly dude and i was i was so bad at katie i was like you fucking pick that place what are you dude, it's, it's always funny how that happens with men like because it really what it is is we're scared and we just don't want to admit that our fucking like vaginas are leaking and we don't know what to do so we immediately go after our fucking spouse and he's like this is your fucking fault i told you i fucking <laughs> told you Dude, we could have so goddamn bad. gone to cracker barrel which is in the middle of fucking town where there are lights and police <laughs> I, was so, I was so fucking mad dude i was like you almost literally got us like fuck it was, it was i'm telling you i wish i, I wish everybody could i wish i could have worn a gopro because everyone here would fucking agree with me you ought to be like that shit was gnarly you know i'm what? not picky about shit like that that was fucking scary i watched a, a guy put a, uploaded a video on youtube and it was actually really interesting i'm like God, you gotta have big ass balls for that but whatevs uh, it's not for me but he won't he, he he like goes down like downtown detroit he went in downtown Chicago and he has a GoPro like going around and he just like walks around the neighborhood. I'm like, that dude is either because he never, I don't think he shows his face. He's either the biggest, buffest motherfucker ever and no one's going to fuck with him or he's strapped and he, you can see his gun on him. Because, but, yeah. but it's really interesting to see it. Like, that, like that's the only way I want to experience neighborhoods that I'm like, no way. No way. <laughs> dude, I'll experience yeah. it through YouTube videos. And I'm bad at like, I'm Google, I'm, I'm, I'm very fucking, uh, geographically challenged you know so i get caught in bad areas a lot driving so i kind of know the rules of the yeah, i got I, down to those things i got lost in in the bad. i remember this one time i got lost in the uh, bad side of lexington and was with my ex bitch of a whole wife and and we were coming from a concert and she got dude i've never heard someone scream bloody murder like she was literally having her throat slit because i pulled over just like i gotta figure out where i am because i didn't have a gps i didn't have a smartphone i still had a flip phone back then and I was like, I don't know where we are. I'm just going to step, stop here. And then I'm going to figure out where we got to go. And it was in a bad fucking part of that. It's like, I could hear Eminem recording his next album. And then, and then she was like, just go! Like screaming like this, like, holy fucking shit. It's like someone just got murdered in the car with me. And it was just coming from her. It was this Babylonian demon rising from her vagina, coming out through her mouth. And I was like, fuck. And I stepped on the gas. Stop it. You're turning me you on. Yeah, it did a little bit. But I I got out of there because I, I thought someone I thought like the fucking ghosts from the fog were creeping up on the car. Like I thought people were coming to steal the car and like I don't know. And I was like, I was like we were parked at a fucking like a legged and plat or something. Like it was like it was fine. And the lights were on. That's it. a deep cut Winchester reference, y'all. Y'all <laughs> yeah, don't even yeah, know yeah, about legged that legged and plat. Like that. Yeah, legged and plat. <laughs> they make mattresses. I almost got a job there and then I quit. <laughs> I went through orientation oh. and everything. You did. I mean, you're like, hey, I, I, no, I, no, I, yeah, I think I I'm getting my check for that 696. I know. I got a check for uh, for the orientation, which was four hours, but I walked in there like, hey, so this is what you're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to put you over here. Uh, you're going to be pulling the, the, the springs out and putting them in like that. You know, it's going to be, it's going to get hot because we ain't got no air conditioning. But, but, well, listen to me. You got After 30 lunch, minutes. You got 30 minutes on your goddamn uh, lunch, uh, lunch breaks. That's a hell of a deal right there. Hell of a deal. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, while well, you fucking sweat your dick off and you get like, I think they were going to give me $10 an hour. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, I would, I, yeah, it probably, probably wasn't the best career option. I think you did a good well, job. That's why I quit. I was like, no, I was like, and then he's like, you ain't coming back in. I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm all set, man. Hey, yeah. we should fucking, we should jump into this. We should jump into this. We've been talking. Um, We've been sharing. Well, we're just getting screens. to know people. We're just getting, we just letting them know who he is. Sharing stories and fluids. We've been sharing our fluids, li- literally with you guys um 
And by the way, we're selling our fluids on OnlyFans uh, for nine ninety nine. If you want to check it out, Patreons get a twenty percent discount if you want to join the Patreon and check that out. All right. Uh, well, I, okay. Well, let's do the first couple because I got. I really do have to pee now. Oh my god, we went through the whole first hour. We didn't even start. What's wrong with us? God, we're piece of fucking I know, shit. I, know. I blame you. That's fine. Hey, dude, that eighties one. I have that on my on the on the computer screen background. Which one? Ah. Were the 80s like that purple? I oh, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking smooth. It, I love I it. I like it. Yes, it makes shit. me horny. Mm -hmm. Um, First up, the Goonies are fucking toy story. I, I didn't know I was going to pull out the revolver so early and put something to death. That's the Goonies, I come pull on. pull out my revolver. Andy, you Goonie. <laughs> I could not disagree with you more, God, Jay. You I'm a toy story kid. kid. What a bitch. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toy Story kid. Suck my dick. Dude, the Goonies is like That's a classic goes. adventure of like, like it's got it's got the perfect coming of age '80s tale, and then the, all the characters are relatable and cool. Data, uh, Mouth, uh, Sean Astin. I, what the fuck is his characters? I can't remember. But I love. It's like the Indiana Jones like uh, like starter kit with kids. I don't know. I like, like I, I love it, like even today. It's still good. It's still really really well done. Yeah, well, Toy Story is uh, the best Pixar movie of all time, mm -hmm. and it's got Tom Hanks and Woody Allen in it. Mm -hmm. Tim Allen, Tim, Tim, Tim yeah, and Tom, Tim. not Woody Allen. Okay, there's nobody. He's not marrying a 14 year old. And they've got Pizza Planet, and they've got toys. No, Toy in Story all seriousness, yeah, I but... do like the Goonies a lot. Like, I love the Goonies. It's a great movie, but I always connect with Story, Toy Story more. Fucking that Michael McDonald or whatever was like. You all proud and be that fucking song. Jim man. Barney was also in that movie. Ernest. Yeah, it's fucking sweet toys came out of that. It's great toys, great marketing. Uh, love the story. It was the first time. I think this was Pixar's blast off, right? Wasn't it the first Pixar? Like the first, uh, one, I think. Well, I'm not going to commit to that because I don't know Steve. Um, I want to say, but a beautiful movie, man. You also got to think of the Goonies. You got to think about. By the way, you got fucking chunk. You get the truffle shuffle. You also get the fact, like the lying little asshole that he is, which is great. And then you got you got Josh Brolin, and and again, Sean Oz, Aston have a great relationship as older brother and younger brother. When he, when I think Chunk breaks the fucking David statue, and he's like, "Oh shit, you broke my mom's statue. That's her favorite piece, like where the dick falls off. That's her favorite part." <laughs> and then they glue it back. And he's like, "Great. If God made us all like that, we'd be pissing in our faces because he glues it upside down." <laughs> <laughs> I do. I to be honest, I do need to rewatch the Goonies. But yeah, I probably I've probably seen Toy Story as much as any kids movie aside from maybe Lion King. For me, like Disney, all time Disney, it's like Toy Story, Lion King. Yeah, I could have a. Well, you want to take an adventure and see what happens. See, he slaps you on your ass while you're blindfolded. That's fine. Hey, I hey, I just want to make an announcement. By the way, don't do I switch. It. I switched beers. I knew you were gonna do that, you bitch. I knew you were gonna do that. I was gonna, I was gonna do the joke. I was gonna do the joke and talk over you, but I, I decided to let you have it. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you were gonna open Thank up you. a Bud Light and like, woo, woo, -wee. I do. I just finished Mardi Bud Gras, Light. I actually, bitch. I just, I just polished off some Bud Light. I don't care. I'm gay. Dude, <laughs> I swear to God, if, if those Costco prices I saw on the internet come to the local Costco, I'm getting it. Like, dude, there was like a thirty pack for thirteen bucks. I dude, I I keep hearing that. I haven't seen Bud Light. No, I, well, it's not everyone. Anymore. No, but mm, they were they were sharing it on social media. Like it was like it was like Costco. They gave it the uh, the star of death at Costco, which means if they have a little star in the top uh, corner of where it's uh, like the price, that means they're not going to restock it. That because there's they're not no making. I will I will eat my own dick. Well, well I, I mean, did that. Anyway. There's no fucking way that I'm not going to buy a thirty pack of fucking beer for thirteen right. bucks. Are you yeah. shitting me? Yes, I will have I don't that. Give a shit. I guess I'll have to burn all my kid rock CDs. Woe is me. <laughs> <laughs> Spread it on. All right. You guys agree with Jay. God damn it. 61% to 39% Goonies wins. And the 80s takes round one. We'll do a quick round two. And then Jay can touch his pee. <laughs> he's like, round two. Round two. Round Make two. you make it. Bitch. Scoots. 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 Boat Boogie. Scoot. Boogie. Oh, that's a good one right there. That's a good oh, one. Tight like a toy guy. Mm. Killer clowns from outer space. God, please, if I forget, remind me to say it out loud for the people who watch on the podcast. Um, killer clowns from outer space from the eighties, or Jason Lives from the nineties. That's what weird that Jason Lives is a nineties movie. It just doesn't feel like it's one. But I, I know it's it total eighties. 
all the 80s. Uh, oh, the 80s. Is, uh, it, it, Jason lives. Um, no, it's not. Oh, no, no. I fucked up. I fucked up. I yeah. fucked up. God damn it. We were right, though. We were Hang doing a such second. a good job. And then the I train wreck happened. It. I can make it cool again, Stephen. All right, because I, I I knew. No, you can't. Had... Everyone's lost confidence in you now. Fuck. I'm sorry. I vote I for. A, a lot of I, pressure on me. I move for a vote of no confidence in Dude, Chancellor did Rome. <laughs> did you hear that squeak I got too? By the way, I actually reached yeah. the Josh Hartnett like, like. So I never got it up for you, Mom. To uh, in in H two O. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm going everyone. To I'm gonna fix it. Cody, damn it. Um, fuck. Where'd it go? Shit. Everyone, hold on. Everyone, hold the fuck on. I like Killer Clowns from Outer Spa uh, Space's uh, poster. It looks like Michael Jordan's hand coming out and like spinning the basketball. But even though it's a clown hand, it's Earth. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just... All right, uh, everybody, look at this pin. Everyone, um, look. Equalizer, normalizer, just a memory turns to Thank fantasy. You. Thank you for your cooperation. Nothing went off the rails. I did everything right, and I hey, know no, if, the if you please. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, this makes, this makes a little bit more sense. And now it changes my opinion drastically. Not really. I, this is actually a really tough one. Um, I love Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I think it's a unique, awesome movie. Uh, really stands alone as far as like what it did in the 80s. Uh, but Dude, Tremors is just fucking incredible, dude. Like I have more memories of Tremors and watching that and renting it over and over again at Hollywood Video or Blockbuster than I do of Killer Clowns. To be fair... Killer Clowns is probably the more unique, sleeker movie. But Tremors, man, there's just something about it. Like when I watch Tremors, I don't know, man. I feel like fucking Thanksgiving. If it's like it's like fucking Thanksgiving, it's like that home feeling. I don't know. I, for me, it's Tremors. This is a very very hard one. Like, and so is mine. But it's a very very hard one because, like, yeah, they're. I mean, they have a lot of stuff in common, but they're also very different. You know what I mean? Like, I just childhood wise. It'd be killer clowns for me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm looking at these, like I have to delete one of these from history. Fuck. Which one would I choose? Which one would I choose? I can't make a choice. There is no choice. We'll let you guys decide. Cause I'm honestly, dude, I you will have today. huge boobs, legs that go all the way up. <laughs> when Kevin Bacon was driving to meet the, 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 the earthquake girl. I always get that line confused, by the way, within uh, True Romance when he's like, do I look like a blonde that has big tits, tastes like vanilla ice cream? He's like, what? It's like, do I look like a blonde that has big tits, tastes like vanilla ice cream? He's like, no. He's like, then why are you trying to fuck me? I yeah. get those two confused. I was like, I, I think Kevin Bacon looked the coolest, though, when when, when he was like, when, the, when the, 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 the worm went into the rock, he's like, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I just love the set. Like tri my favorite thing about Tremors is honestly yeah. like the opening of the movie when they show them as they're like handymen and they're like, I, just, God I, damn yeah, it. I love they're it, like Beavis are. and Butthead on on in the in the they're like us. Set, they're know? like us if we were born in Arizona and we're as talented as talentless as they are, and we would be like, hey, we collect trash and shit, and we can fix your goddamn pops. If hey, hey, don't be leaving. We got beer. Shit, <laughs> we gotta stay, Earl. And then no, actually, uh, he's like, I can't believe we turned down free beer, Earl. We're on our way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man it does it just it does remind me of us if we were stuck in that situation for sure but definitely if we had like a mixed story between like if tremors was broke back mountain and they ended up fucking yeah sure that would definitely be more I'll interesting to me that's fine uh, yeah I, I i still say that i i think it's better but I think that's fair better. that's fair i can't I, I literally can't decide so i'm letting you guys decide you want to go take a pee pee i'll catch up with state potatoes all right i'll be right back y'all okay on. man Woo. Woo. Woo! Woo! Suri. 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 Jacob! What the fuck, man? That's two of those in a row. And I just want you to know. I want you to know that I slept with the guy from Full House and went down on him in a theater. That's a really good 90s song. Dude, Jacob, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate you. Uh, he says, yo, guys, since we're in the 90s, have you guys ever seen or heard of a movie called Shoot Fighter? Shoot, 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 shoot. Fight. Like, it doesn't even register. I want to say fucking Street Fighter so bad. Like, Street Fighter. The goddamn pin is blue. Uh, shoot Fighter. It has Johnny Lawrence. Oh, shit. And Bolo. Oh, shit. As the heroes. And John Kreese as the villain. Most of the fights are to the death as well. I liked it. I love y'all. Dude, 
Jacob, I think I like 96% of the people in this chat are going to fucking Google that movie and watch it because you just sold the goddamn kitty satchel out of it. That's not words that I want to use. You know what I mean, right? You do. You do. Uh, fuck. That sounds amazing. That sounds like the best fucking movie of all time. And I'm going to look it up. I'm actually going to write it down in my book right now. There's a fucking gnat in here. I swear to Christ. Um, shoot fighter. Shoot fighter. Shoot fighter. Marvel is made. It says, ever watch CZ's world? He does great with a complete horror history of specific horror characters. You know, um, I have. I have seen him. He is one of those dudes who's just like in a laboratory at all time, like Dexter's laboratory, just like getting deep inside of shit. I really I respect the shit out of that guy's fucking pr movie prowess and what he does. I have seen a little bit of him and have been entertained by him. Uh, I respect that. I really do. Anybody who puts that much work into their craft, and he really does. I'm actually just jealous of it. I'm lying. I actually hate his fucking guts, and I want to hit him with my car. But then I, I just only want to slightly injure him, sprain his ankle, and then offer him a nice Stouffer's lasagna. And then we can have dinner together, and then I will tie him to a bed like in misery and make him give me all his secrets. Just kidding. Have you guys ever had Stouffer's lasagna, by the way? Just as good as anybody else's fucking lasagna. Sorry, your mom can make from scratch. You can go to fucking Azuli's Pizzeria Tavern. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. Go to Fazoli's. I don't give a shit. Stouffer's, you put some fucking red pepper on that shit. You put some goddamn Parmesan on it stouffer's fucking like ten dollar goddamn slap it in the goddamn oven is just as good as anybody's lasagna i just want you to know that even though no one fucking asked john horseside from papa roach says sup guys what would be the funniest horror universe or characters that beavis about had crossed over to you guys have fun live streams and are funny as hell hey i love you man appreciate that and i appreciate you and i appreciate you hanging out with it. and that's a great question you know what's weird is that i've always felt like freddy krueger is the ultimate crossover dude because everyone dreams, right? Everyone fucking dreams. The Power Rangers are teenagers. Still, Freddy Krueger and the Power Rangers. I know they did with a comic book. So I will say Freddy Krueger. Fucking a uh, 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 Beavis in bed. Beavis in bed. Beavis in bed sounds like when when Butthead dies, he should really start a bed and breakfast called Beavis in bed. That was a terrible idea. What's wrong with me? I'm glad I'm going on vacation soon. What I'm saying is this. Nightmare on Elm Street. Freddy Krueger popping into Beavis and Butthead's world. Like they pass out watching MTV videos and eating nachos on the couch. And then they wake up and you use that same Mike Judge animation. And it's Freddy just doing crazy shit to them. That's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to go with. Yeah. Merck's movies. 112263 is about a man who discovers a door to the year Kennedy was killed and has the possibility to prevent the assassination. Best King miniseries. There's no fucking way, Merck's. There's no way that James Franco in that fucking time travel story is better than it or better than The Stand, which well, that wasn't that fucking great, um, or better than the other good Stephen King miniseries that I can't think about right now. But I don't believe you, but thank you. Jay Scott says, sup, gays? I'll have you know. I suck. It's been eight hours since I've been gay. So you fucking respect how straight I've been since like 12 or one today that's the last time i did anything gay so you're welcome figured i chip towards your bosley treatment fund is that like a is is that is that is that a balding is that a balding joke or is that like a power tool fuck you he says love your butts well see you later now i have to google bosley bosley this is gonna hurt my feelings Oh, oh. Yeah, it's a fucking hair transplant. You piece of shit. I, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you, Jay Scott. I'm gonna have sex with your dad tonight. Piece of shit. I hope he's bald. And I'll just, I'll, I'll, that's how I'll get in his pants. I'll be like, you know what sucks being bald? I'll be like, yeah, I'm like, you want me to, do you have any hair down on your dick? <laughs> Can I borrow some? I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna pull it out with my teeth and then super glue it to my head. Michael Parton says, Jay, I know you guys aren't that old. I just meant they still sell eight ta tapes in record stores and other places, but I do prefer cassettes too. See, actually, I didn't know that, dude. Uh, the only ta place I've seen eight tracks at is like a like a flea markets and shit like that. Because I, all I know about eight tracks is that like we all used to think they were so valuable, and it turns out they're not because every peddler's mall have has like twelve of them. Yeah, you know. It's, yeah, I know. You don't know. No, I haven't been know. in a mall in a long time. You don't fucking know, Jay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jay Scott tributed to our Bosley fund. 
know what? what that is? It's a goddamn balding treatment, that piece of shit. Fuck that guy. I I appreciate that, Jay. I appreciate that. We're going to double team. I've been looking at options, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, we're at... um. Oh, or did I get them? Oh, did I fucking get them all? My mom and dad are going to be so proud of me. If I did. Did I? I didn't. All right, we're at Ash Lockhart at 8.46 p.m. Oh, goody, good. Yes. Hold on a second. Okay. Okay, I got it. PM. Okay. Be right back. All right. All right. I will see you soon. I want to touch my dick. Shit. <laughs> okay. Ashley Lockhart says all Disney movies, but remade horror versions. Yeah, that could work. Um. Yeah. I think I agree with you. I think that would be a, a neat way to revive the series of, uh, of some of the long dead Disney franchises uh, without pissing off too many people. Just make it a fucking horror movie. I mean, a lot of, I mean, well, I don't know which ones of the Disney's are grim, grim fairy tales. I know the little mermaid might've been, and then it wasn't is snow white, a fucking grim fairy tale. I don't know. I'll have to look it up, but yeah, I agree with you. I think that would be a cool way to remake those films, but show, uh, cruising through, cruising through. Uh, dude, you told me how to say your name before, and I totally forgot. So I'm just gonna call you Trey. Trey Film Edit. I think that's maybe. Then I'm gonna go there. Hey, fellas, if you had to pick up an actor, or if you, okay, sorry. Hey, fellas, if you had to pick an actor to be in a horror film that had made not done horror before, who would you choose and why? Much love, fellas. Uh, like a um. A director that's not done horror. I mean, okay, it, it, like if this is just like complete fantasy and it doesn't matter, there's no budget and there's no like there's no way kind of situation. I would love to see James Cameron tackle horror. Okay, yes, I I love James Cameron. I will suck his Titanic wiener uh, uh, all the days of my life. I think he's the greatest director of all time. It's just it, it's just fact. I don't know why I'm saying it like as a question. It's just facts. But I I would love to see James Cameron take on a horror film i think he would do a great job now there will people there will be people that argue that aliens is technically a horror movie but it's not really it's more of an action adventure with science fiction elements in it with drippings of horror the ridley scott alien film the original one is more horror than aliens but aliens i think it's the superior film i know blasphemy for some but um yeah dude james cameron i think could do could do a really really good job i, I think he's got a really good uh eye for uh, for telling stories and 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 uh, pulling the audience in is and, and casting likable and unique characters. So yeah, I would definitely go with James Cameron. And if he has done a horror movie, I don't know of it. I know that he was fired. I think it was actually funny because I remember watching a, a Howard Stern interview that he did where he he lied he lied his way on set for Piranha 3D, I think in the 70s, and then they fired his ass because he didn't know what he was doing. So I guess that's the closest he ever got to a horror movie, which but yeah, I would say that. But uh, I think we're caught up. Yes, yes, sir. We're caught up. All right, cool beans. Now we're all on the same. Parker CS says Alien Three is terrible. I don't. I never. I think Alien Three is a huge disappointment. Uh, like I've always thought it was a disappointing film, um, because first off, you kill off uh, Michael Bean's character and Newt off screen. No one and those characters survived Aliens, right? You didn't even give them the goddamn courtesy to fucking kill them on screen or something you just kill them off off screen and then she has a shaved head uh she's gi jane before gi jane and then you know it, i don't i i feel like it was a lazy type of ending to sigourney weaver's ripley story arc my opinion uh yeah i i never liked i never liked um alien three i mean there's elements of it that i thought were cool but then ultimately i was like this is just lazy ass storytelling because you come off with such a huge hit, right, with Aliens. And everybody was like, oh, man, it's going to be amazing with Alien 3 with what happens to Ripley and and Newt and and uh, what the fuck was his name? Anyway, Michael Bean's character and then nothing. And then she's like, oh, well, they died. They died in the fucking space pod. I'm like, what? Yeah, they're dead. Oh, shit. Okay, well, I guess I'm on my own. I'll shave my head because I don't want to get lice is what Sigourney Weaver said. Uh, BA, thank you so much. Says, Does Loomis have any thoughts on Danielle Harris's Instagram post where she showed her return in the Halloween sequel? If you saw it, I haven't seen it, but I will say this listen to me, Danielle Harris, aka Jamie. Okay, you don't know shit about cookie women, 
You didn't help me when I asked you to help me track down Michael. You want to play this game. You want to do, oh, he's my uncle. I want to go be friends with him and maybe have a goddamn life. Start over. Like you got them uh, family matters or some shit. You wanted to have some kind of goddamn full house moment. And you lied. You protected that asshole. No, you're not going to be in no sequel, okay? You're going to stay dead because you're useless. Shut up. Dead. No more. She protected the asshole, okay? No. I think that's what the, uh, Dr. Lewis would say. Uh, Joey Henderson, thank you so much, sir, says, off topic from a horror, but do you think the writer strike will cause Superman Legacy to get canceled like it did with Justice League Mortal? Um, I hope not. Uh, I know that they've had some setbacks because of it. I know that the Deadpool 3 is on stall because of the writer strike and it, it looks so cool I've, I've seen some of the leaked images i don't even know if they're leaked images but the images of, of wolverine and his yellow suit walking alongside uh deadpool with his new updated look and i was like oh man that's gonna be fucking sick it's gonna be crazy cool and now that the writer's strike has happened and, and the actor's guild is, is going along with the writer's strike which is fine i get it um but yeah and now that movie is stalled man i don't know I think I, I think it's going to have a, a big effect on a lot of these movies, and that really does suck. Um, but I, I, by the way, I I did see um, the Superman Legacy actor they 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 chose. Uh, like it is like fucking Henry Cavill light. Like the dude, and I don't know who he is. Like if you look up who James Gunn has cast as Superman, he's a good looking dude, definitely. Uh, he has the build to be Superman, but he there's a very big similarity. It, well, not a huge simulator, but there is like parts of his face that look like Henry Cavill, but like Henry Cavill light. I'm like, why do you just keep fucking Henry Cavill, James Gunn? You're a smart fucking dude. You have spiked hair and you're older, but you're still cool and hip. Why the fuck wouldn't you keep Henry Cavill instead of casting, you know, the, the goddamn Wish.com version of Henry Cavill? Anyway, we, we don't know. But as far as it be, having an effect on Superman Legacy, I, I think it will, Joey. Unfortunately, I do think it will. Uh, Michael Parton say, Jay is more sexy than Dr. Loomis. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I really do appreciate that. I mean, and even though that, you know, Loomis is, uh, is an, uh, an older uh, balding, which I am too, is, I guess as well, uh, psychopath, but I will take what I can get. Um, Chad Joyce says, Henry equals Superman. Yeah, dude, come on. Like, absolutely. I mean, there's nobody in their right fucking mind that 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 is sober or or lacks or at least has a functioning brain that would tell you that Superman, a.k.a. Henry Cavill, wasn't the perfect choice. Yes, differences, creative differences aside, Warner Brothers Studios, like, they may have their problems with Snyder, but you can look at, but you can look at Cavill, dude, a, a, a passionate dude, a fucking nerd at heart. That was the best good looking most better the, the best looking dude I've ever seen in my life in real life playing Superman. It's it's a home run hit, and then you get rid of him. Fuck, dude. Like, I don't know, I don't know what the I don't get it. I just don't get it. And I and again, I, I love James Gunn, but it's like shit, dude. I again, why didn't James Gunn, Gunn just think for himself and just be like, John no, I'm gonna keep Henry Cavill. Sam son. Sam son. You are you are not Japanese, you are not. not <laughs> Sorry, my, my headphones fucked up, so I had to fix that. Um, but uh, okay, okay. Uh, the only here. yeah, I, I'm, we're caught up by the way. But someone did ask a, a poignant question. They were like off topic of horror, but uh, if Superman Legacy will be stalled out because of the writer strike, and I think unfortunately it will, because it's already affecting Deadpool three with that awesome fucking photo shot of of Logan or, or Hugh Jackman in the yellow suit walking alongside Deadpool, and I'm like, yeah. fuck, dude, I just want to see that one fucking time. Yeah, man, it sucks. I that that everything, everything. So it's not hurting right now, but like I'm telling you, man, in like six months or something like that, there's gonna be a dead zone in movies because nobody's allowed to work right now. I hope they yep. get that shit figured out because it sucks. Um, okay. Let's do a music one now. Oh fuck. <laughs> ACDC. Oh from the 80s, AC, 80s ACDC or 90s. You're talking about you're talking about Brian Johnson. Uh, well, just whichever ACDC you want to go with. Just well, Bon Scott more. Bon Scott's more seventies. Yeah. 
Um, I'm just going to go with Brian Johnson because he, like he's the one – like I know that Bon Scott might be – there's always a debate about Brian Johnson versus Bon Scott, but I'll go with Brian Johnson just in the 80s era. Yeah, I, I'm – that, and that's fine with me. Either way, my answer is going to be Nirvana. Um, I, ACDC is great. A lot of hits, man. A lot of fucking bangers. Great stadium music, you know. I, I, I have no qualms with fucking ACDC, dude. But I'm a Nirvana guy through and through. I think it's like Nirvana, and we've made this reference several times, another 90s thing with like Scream. Nirvana changed music forever. Mm. Like ACD, nobody sounds like ACDC. Nobody does it like ACDC, but they never really created their own genre. Like Nirvana, and I'm not saying they created grunge, but they definitely were the band that that was the face of it. You know, It's weird, dude. I worked with a guy uh, when I was at CVS, and we would talk about Nirvana, and he was like... I He's like, people always serve Nirvana. He goes, it's Pearl Jam, not Nirvana. That started the revolution, not Nirvana. Which well, there is an argument to be had there, I guess. I don't know. I never really follow either band like that closely. But he was swearing up and down that Nirvana was just uh, like a product of Pearl Jam. But either way, whatever it might be, you got to give it to Nirvana. They did change the scope of music at the time when they came out. It was something new, gritty, grungy. They all looked like they smelled like butt crack. And they all look like they smell like fucking uh, like uh, like incense, and like you were used to like seeing stuff like ACDC, Kiss, Metallica, shit like that. And then they came along and they were like, "No, man, I still live at home with my mom and dad, but I'm fucking weird and cool." And they took like that Jim Morrison kind of vibe, and then they put their own spin on music. So it yeah. would be Nirvana for me as well. I think Nirvana, like, um, well, I would give it the same kind of. Um, uh, uh, props that i give scream i think that they were a game changer in a lot of ways they they may they forced music to change and adapt in a way that it maybe wasn't ready for but it, it happened anyway but acdc dude i fucking love acdc like i like like and yeah and i know people are like well every fucking song sounds the same the chords are the same that might be true but it's fucking epic every fucking Under song is epic underrated acdc song by the way if you guys get a chance to listen to it jailbreak it's not one of their hits but man it's just as good as in that jail break from down on now and they also had obviously the uh last action hero song big gun big gun big gun yeah number one oh big <laughs> gun <laughs> yeah i was but, a, yeah when i was a kid i always used to say he said big john oh like, no they're saying big john Number <laughs> one. John. I always thought Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap was Dirty Deeds and the Thunder Chief. Well, like I always thought it was. Yeah. Well, um, you know, the argument's always going to be what well, is Bon Scott better than Brian Johnson? I don't know, man. I think they're both really, really awesome lead singers. I, I, I could never get into that debate. But as far as this debate goes, I don't think any, there's, I, 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 just for what Nirvana did to music itself is like alone worthy of being over acdc because acdc really wasn't doing much more than yeah they were great don't get me wrong they were great i don't even know what you consider them i they're not are they a metal band i don't even know i don't think they're metal i don't know what no, kind they of are the weird like stomp billy rockers i i don't know yeah they're their own thing kind of but yeah. uh, a bunch of people asked me where the poll is i forgot to take down the other poll first so i'll put that one up now and see what you guys think about it but in the case of the last one trimmers beats killer clowns 63 to 37 percent shocking Fucking, i hate clowns i agree with y'all <laughs> i hate clowns man <laughs> yeah I hate clowns uh, suck, so that bro. one went to that one i'll put this poll up in there right now you guys you're right i do have pre-vacation brain hey we're gonna miss you guys over the next like yeah it's gonna be a while man before we get back to the all, all of us get back together and start talking about things and, and how our life sucks lately <laughs> yeah um i mean, I mean how great our lives are <laughs> what am i talking about <laughs> uh <laughs> that pulls up there for you guys right now in the meantime happy in the meantime we will take a look at <laughs> okay i got a big one for you i got a big fat one for you this is gonna blow your fucking open mind, your mouth dude. oh i mean <laughs> get ready for it if i give you the funk you go oh dude you had to you hey, combine you? all this shit like oh my god dude i don't know so i don't know i don't know about that i don't know about that because i don't JC, like that i don't like this choice jcvd versus jcvd mm. now there are more in the 90s, but the 80s are a little top heavy. So uh either JCVD in the 80s, which is oh, blood man. sport, kickboxer, man, man, cyborg, man, oh, man, no man, retreat, man. no surrender, or 90s JCVD, oh, which you got Lionheart, yeah, it feels hard good. target, like double that. impact, okay. time cop, oh my god, universal soldier, like nowhere it. to run, Where and sudden death. Oh god. But, but I'm warning you guys, if you pick 90s, you are deleting blood sport and kickboxer. Shut from up the universe. What do you Kumite, do? Kumite, Kumite. <laughs> what? By the way, just every night and day. 
<laughs> oh god, it's also got one of the best soundtracks of all fucking time. Just, just so, so I can, know. Just so I can get this vote in there real quick and catch back up. I'm not doing in this. In the case of the last this. in the case of the last poll, uh you guys picked Nirvana over ACDC closer than I thought, 59 to 41%. That's pretty good. So Nirvana wins that one. The 90s is on one, the 80s is on two. Well, no, no 90s wins two, 80s is on one right now. I don't so remember who won in part 1, but yeah. Uh man, I I'm not I can't decide this one. I can't Stop this it. is like deciding about you know my my dream car and like my stupid kid's college education who's a pot like a stoner. <laughs> I was like, what's the better investment here? I knew sir? this was gonna be a toughie. No, dude, here's listen. Okay, Bloodsport is is maybe the greatest martial arts movie of all time. Okay, I'm not even fucking saying that unironic. I'm talking about like legit the best, maybe martial arts movie of all time. It's got amazing acting. It's got like the tears, it's got the action, it's got the bodies, it's got the fucking like soundtrack. It's so goddamn good, dude. Look at that face. That's the face of every man when when he gets denied sex for the last time. Um, <laughs> but then you got I can't the, take it anymore. You got the tar you got the hard targets, the lion hearts, the double impacts. I, do I feel like Chad and Alex in double impact? I feel like fucking Alex on the boat. When he's imagining that, uh, the, the, or when he's imagining that Chad is fucking his wife and he's drinking that bottle of tequila, he goes "motherfucker," and he's like, "That squirt is coming out of his mouth." That was an amazing shot. I, dude, I'm, I, I can't, I won't touch, I won't touch. <laughs> you must just. <laughs> so I'm the dim Mac. What the shit, hell is fuck, a dude? My, all my touch. shit is fucked up tonight. Hang on huh? one sec. What the hell is a dim Mac? That's touch. That's what this feels like. That's touch. Uh -uh. He says his Shidoshi is, you know, oh man. Bloodsport and Kickboxer alone, dude, are like they almost pile drive the fuck out of the uh, out of the others. I I'm telling you, man. But the other ones are so many good ones. Lionheart's so awesome. Lionheart is basically uh kickboxer light, diet coke version, hard target. It's great. There are some corny, corny fucking moments in that. Well, I think it's remembered a lot better than it actually is, but it's still a great movie. Double Impact is fucking extremely underrated. So goddamn good. Time Cop, I loved it. I know people hated it. A lot of people hated it. I thought it was a really good uh, film, uh, and I think that Jean-Claude gets to explore more of his acting ability in that one. Universal Soldier, I mean, what do you guys say? Nowhere to Run. Uh, you gotta be in the mood for it. I still like it. And Sudden Death, I fucking personally, Mike and I both personally like that film. But it's also not – it's not a home run hit for Van Damme. That's actually Van Damme's where he was, like, going out. Like, it was, like, the last big – one of the last big movies that he was in. Cyborg sucked. I never liked Cyborg. By the way, it was it was one of those movies they, they recycled, um, uh, what was it, like, either it was RoboCop suits or Batman suits or something for that movie. It wasn't even, like – you. They, they had all this extra shit. They're like, oh, we'll just make a fucking movie out of it and write some really quick bullshit. And put Van Damme in it. No retreat. I don't remember. But Bloodsport and Kickboxer itself. I mean, dude, those are those are fucking heavy hitters right there. Like they almost just demolished the '90s, in my opinion. The problem is, the problem is, is that I would argue Lionheart is almost as good. It it, it touches the tip of what Bloodsport and Kickboxer. You were. dare? Like, it's almost as good. Lionheart. It's Lionheart, right? So like it's like they're almost the same movie. Like all three <sighs> of them. I'm not disrespectful. Oh. But they all have the same quality. I felt I felt a chilly stab in my back. I thought it was just the air conditioning, and I realized it was a fucking <laughs> icicle that Mike but just think, put there. But here's what I'm saying: like, if you don't have blood sport and kickboxer, you still do have Lionheart, and and also Hard Target, Double Impacts, Time Cops, fine. I it, I love it, but it could go either way. Universal Soldiers, fucking amazing. Nowhere to run. You could lose, but I still love it. I and I also love Sudden Death. I dude, I I I I I fucking don't know what to say. I, I honestly 80s. can't I, choose I, either. I, I gotta go eighties. I have to. I can't. I can't leave Bloodsport behind, dude. You you can't. You could literally watch Bloodsport any time of the year, multiple times at, at, at like. And but see, if you look at the nineties, you have to be in the mood to watch Hard Target. In my opinion, you I have disagree to be in the with mood. that. I could watch Hard Target no, Monday, Tuesday, but time Friday, God, night, you have to be in the Sunday. mood. Uh, in my opinion, in Universal Soldier. Cop. I think you have to be in the mood to watch it. Nowhere to Run is it. It's a good movie, but do tell it's not that great. And Sudden Death, that is a specifically like that is a very specific taste of film that it you know it, like it doesn't work for everybody. It just doesn't. I would agree that Lionheart and Double Impact are year-round types of movies that you can watch, no problem. 
But Bloodsport and Kickboxer, dude, it like there's it, it transcends in a way also, that I can't. I, I'm gonna go with 80s. I couldn't fit it in there, but Death Warrant also counts as 90s, of course. Yeah, well, that's um, like that's not. I mean, it's there. good, but it's not. All right. So Jay's gonna go 80s. I I I fucking dude. Oh god damn it. I would just be so sad if like all we had was Bloodsport and Kickboxer and we couldn't go back and watch any of those other ones. But I'm gonna agree with you. I, I can't lose Bloodsport and Kickboxer. As much shit yeah. as I'm talking here, I you just yeah. can't do it. You can't do it. Those are the a quintuoso. So I'm going with you, dude. Mike, I am. I will say what? you did not flinch. You have fighting spirit. <laughs> How come you caught him but not me? <laughs> You're not going to call the cops? Not if we can make a deal. <laughs> <laughs> The crowd decides for us. 80s wins. That's how good Bloodsport and Kickboxer fucking are, dude, man. Bloodsport is like magical, dude. It's fucking 55 magical. to 45%, though. It was close. Yeah. I will say that. It was close. Dude, um, Van, Dam, Van Dam's a fucking national treasure, dude. Like, he's a national fucking... I mean, I know he's not from here. He's Belgium, but, dude, he really is. Like, he's amazing. Yeah, dude. I, I That man's unheralded for all he's done in the world. Uh, the next one, we got 80s. Ooh. We got Wes Craven's Swamp Ooh. Thing. On the Ooh. 90s, we got Sam Raimi's Dark Man. I love, dude, Dark Man is such an unheralded, like, in my opinion, unheralded. I don't think not enough people talk about this Raimi classic because they always, they're focused on Evil Dead or Spider-Man, which, you know, granted, I understand why, but dude, Dark Man with Liam Neeson, insanely good. Uh, he was the first, I remember watching this movie and I'm like, dude, he's like an anti-hero for sure. Like, he's like a... He's like the Punisher, but just smarter. Like he's not like you know naked in the sewer with his butt crack being exposed to all the elements of the sewer water. <laughs> like he's actually smart, and he actually and like the the you know the, the fact that he uses the masks to get around and only lasts for a while. But then you have something like Swamp Thing, dude. And, and I remember I never watched Swamp Thing. I never rented Swamp Thing. I think the first time I was ever exposed to it was when it was on TV. I think I watched it on TV and they had edited it. Like, obviously there was like some violence in it, but I liked it a lot. I never read the Swamp Thing comic books when I was growing up. Um, but do Swamp Thing, do Swamp Thing is fucking awesome too. And Swamp Thing is also a very, um, they're both very the same. They're, they're tortured existence uh, of these men that are trapped in these impossible situations, trapped in these, the skins of monsters. And they have to overcome their baser instincts and, and be the hero that no, that no one asked for, but we all deserve. That reminds me of uh, John Wick. He's like, let's overcome our baser instincts. Let's not resort to yeah. our baser instincts. Uh, <laughs> the eggs the phone dude, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm I'm leaning more towards Dark Man just because I can remember it more fondly growing up and renting and watching over and over again and being entertained by it. But Swamp Thing, dude, there's a lot of folk out there that are like, that will hit for a lot of people. Yeah, I do love I, I love Swamp Thing, Wes Craven's Swamp Thing. I thought it was made like like everything Wes Craven does. Like he had a shoestring to work with with that, but it was made with love and care, you know, mm -hmm. and it was good. And and I'm glad that he did it. But I do I got to go Dark Man uh, pretty easily for me. It's Dark Man. Uh, just a better movie, I feel like, you know, um, yeah. had all that nor. It was so strange. There was nothing like it at the time. So my uh, vote is Dark, Dark Man. That is really what they call those people on Maury Povich when they say, and you are not the father. They like they like disappear from the, from the existence. As far as the crowd goes, here's what the crowd says. Yes. Dad. <laughs> uh, the crowd says, "Throw cow." Uh, dark man wins seventy five percent. Whoa! A lot of love for that dark man. I say. I say a lot of love for that dark man, but not so much for the Swamp Thing. I'm actually shocked because I, I there's a lot of people that talk very fondly of Swamp Thing, so I'm actually shocked that it didn't have a higher percentage. Yeah, yeah, I thought it'd be a little bit closer myself, but you guys like what you like, and you do who you do, and I wish you do me on a table of food. You ever seen those those like sushi women? Like they get like that's Kanye West. That sounds like an party. episode from Real Sex. <laughs> have you ever seen that episode where the girl was laying out on a table like a buffet and they were like fucking that's, like eating the cherries off her vagina that's what i saw about like kanye just did that like a couple months ago mm -hmm. like he had a birthday party and had all these naked chicks with like sushi on their nipples and shit i'm like that's just fucking stupid wait man. like just this strawberry smells God. like chlamydia must be new <laughs> just go to coyote ugly you know they'll let you uh, fucking i don't know dumb stupid yeah, really idiots dumb. god they're all so dumb um all right, so sorry, I got off track. I had to go to this to that. Let's go over here. Random pick, chooky, chooky, chooky. Um, I'm throwing trimmers in there again. Yes, I am. 
because that's where I got confused. What do you do? You cannot do this twice. Pumpkin head for the yeah. 80s yeah, or trimmers. Why are you doing it twice? For the 90s. I didn't mean to. Things got fucked up. Mm -mm. Uh, fucked up. So so it's in there twice. But well, I, 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 it's pumpkin head. Oh I mean, and listen, and, and for all the reasons why Trimmers is awesome, Pumpkinhead itself as a unique horror movie uh, created and, and, and directed by the great Stan Winston Clutch. Uh, and also Lance Henriksen, his uh, his humanity that he brings to the, the, the main role, the reason for his revenge, which anybody could understand, but then his ultimate understanding of what he's doing is awful and, and wrong and evil. The, the, the makeup design, the creature design, the, the, the very, like, do this movie, and I, I think I've said this before, it, it is 100%, it feels like a grim uh, a Grimm's fairy tale come to life. It is such a unique, amazing movie, Pumpkinhead is. I, there's really been no other movie like it, to be honest, like, in, in the in the uh, sphere of horror. Uh, it's not the most unique thing ever, don't get me wrong. It's not a Freddy Krueger or a Pinhead, but it is a very unique telling of uh, of a story that, that comes across as a dark uh, fairy tale more than anything else. And I think it works and it's timeless. And dude, for me, Pumpkinhead will always reign supreme as, as a go-to horror movie. If I ever watch it in October, it's Pumpkinhead. I am. I agree, Jay. I'm going to agree. Uh, Pumpkinhead's. It hurts. It hurts to take away the comedy and the fun, love and good times that were trimmers. You know, yeah. it hurts to do that. It hurts me deeply, but like Pumpkinhead is just, it's too special. It's just too special. That fucking, like you said, the Stan Winston, the goddamn creation of that monster, man. It's so scary. It's so fucked up. The great acting of Lance Hendrickson. Trimmers, I feel like, could be recreated, you know? Mm -mm. Like, I feel like you could recreate Trimmers. It'd be tough, but I don't think anybody could recreate Pumpkinhead. It was a fucking yeah. certain thing that just could not ever be recreated. I'll go not with the, yeah, well. and the acting, and, and none of the actors are memorable necessarily, except for Lance Hendrickson, but they all did such a great job as character actors. I, I don't know. It, like it was like, it, like for me, uh, Pumpkinhead is a perfect uh, capsule of the eighties caught in a bottle. Yeah. And I think that, I also think it's easier to scare people than it is to make them laugh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I think w something's truly scary. And I think Pumpkinhead is one of those movies that has moments really scary, that are truly yeah. frightening. I think that's rarer than someone who can make you laugh. Um, yeah, and I, I, I think it's cool. It's it's kind of like also an introductory horror film for like uh, younger kids to get, in, you know, like be introduced to. Like you could probably show an 11 year old Pumpkinhead. I remember watching Pumpkinhead when I was really young too. And I'm like, this is fucking awesome. And it wasn't like too scary, which is going like, to traumatize people, but it was like, it was a good introductory thing into the world of horror. Yeah. I agree, my friend. And the crowd agrees, too. 64% say Pumpkinhead over Trimmers to 35%. Shocking. Shocking. We have a smart fucking work. crowd. That's why. <laughs> oh, me. What will I do next? I will do... Oh, this one's going to hurt buns, dude. This is going to hurt buns. It should hurt buns. No, you're not. it's not going to hurt you because you don't like Zelda. On the 80s side, I didn't mean my buns. My buns are already... <laughs> my buns is burnt a little bit, though. On the 80s side, NES... Gold Cartridge Zelda, The Legend of Zelda. On the 90s side, Nintendo 64's Goldeneye. I don't Fuck! think we need I don't think we need to talk about it. I think it's Goldeneye. All right. Come on. Oh shit. I'm shocked. I'm no, actually well, no, because here's the thing. I didn't get into Zelda until Ocarina of Time, which is on N64. <laughs> to be fair. I I was never smart enough to beat Zelda when I was younger, and I was too focused on playing Mario Brothers to give a fuck about. Hyrule and Link. Oh my God! Gotta go say Zelda. Here's my <laughs> bow in there. I don't. I didn't care about that shit. It wasn't until much later on, when Ocarina of Time came out, that I actually got into the Zelda series personally. Uh, which I think Ocarina of Time is, in my opinion, probably the best Zelda story ever told. My opinion. But there's something about the Golden Eye N64 game, dude. Like you're talking about, like the multiplayer aspect, gathering around with your friends. Like the golden gun shit, yeah, everyone's trying to get the golden guns. Like this experience, it was so cool, it was so ahead of its time. It was fun as fuck, dude. It, like GoldenEye on N sixty four is is a goddamn national treasure that should be kept in the bolts of of, of Fort Knox forever. Yeah, but as you said and predicted, my answer was always going to be GoldenEye. I was never a Zelda kid. I was too stupid. I was too stupid and fat to figure it out when GoldenEye. Was, uh, yeah, or when, when Zelda came out. I was like, oh, I can order a strategy guide online, or I can go to yeah. Walmart and buy a strategy guide. 
but I'll be damned if I didn't always just absolutely adore that gold painted Zelda man. It was a beautiful thing, and it's a beautiful artifact of the 80s. There's no doubt about that. But it's Goldeneye. Goldeneye is a game I played so much with friends growing up, even like in high middle school, high school. You played it so much. You went, you'd have sleepovers and you'd go to sleep and you would fucking dream about it. Mm. And the best version of Goldeneye. Well, there's two best versions. The campaign was so fun. And I actually needed a like strategy playing, guide for the yeah. campaign because I'm stupid and I suck at video games. But like going through those facility, like the facility where those dudes have those like blockheads and like, whoa, 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 yeah, and you had that yeah. terrible like shooting schematic where you had like, mm. and, and the the the, uh, the the silencer would literally go, pew, 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 pew. yeah. Uh, but you had the AK, and you could just mow people down. Uh, what a fun game to play on the campaign, and then also you play with your friends. The best game with your friends was the man with the golden gun. Yeah, and you did it in the I don't remember which one it was. It was the one where both the ramps went down, and the golden gun would sit right there, mm. and. The idea was if you got the golden gun, you could kill your friends with one shot. Yeah, that was that, that. Yeah, the idea, yeah, the golden gun. Yeah, it was that. To me, it was like pre Halo Three greatness. No, it was. You know? I think that this introduced a whole generation of people to the idea of multiplayer, um, uh, like of competitive multiplayer in a, in a uh, first person shooter type of scenario. I remember yeah. I never even heard of it. Like, and this was all like obviously um, I didn't have internet back then. It, w it was just friends gathering around and, and and playing on a split screen and and promising they weren't cheating to look where you were. Yeah, like that's how it was. Like, you you fucking was, knew was... where I was, you asshole. I'm like, yeah. no, I didn't do. I swear to God. Or like, all right, you got to close your eyes for ten seconds so I can go move somewhere where you won't know where I am. That was some real shit, dude. That actually happened. And you guys yeah. agree with us, actually. Shockingly, I thought this would be a tighter vote because I know people love their Zelda. Yeah, and yeah, and they... I mean, come on, dude. That gold cartridge is so so fucking toasty. It's yeah, so they pretty. Had a gold cartridge for uh, Ocarina of Time too. Uh, <laughs> don't you dare disrespect the ocarina, Tom. No, don't you dare. Don't you do it. <laughs> oh, we, oh, we, oh. Don't you ever, don't you don't ever love. disrespect a Pona song. Pona. <laughs> 77 to 23 percent you guys choose golden eye. Well done, my friends. I agree with you completely. Uh, closing my eyes, picking. Uh, we did that one. That's the one I fucked up. Let's do this one. Let's go to games or toys for a second. How about Ooh. in the 80 in the 1980s, the real Ghostbusters Ooh. Ecto 1 van toy versus yeah. in the 90s Damn the power it, rangers it, both sex holy shit package megazord ecto-1 versus megazord toy wise uh tell me all your it's thoughts on god it's the ecto-1 i had uh i remember the ecto-1 from kenner uh the ghostbusters ecto-1 was so fucking cool man it was so unique it was so different uh like i not different but it was just cool to have a piece of one of my favorite movies of all time, even though it wasn't technically licensed by the, the actual film itself, because for whatever reason, they couldn't do that. But to have the Ecto-1, you could drive around, you could put Peter, Winston, uh, Egon, and, and Ray in it, and you could chase ghosts and stuff. The accessories that it came with, it was really cool, dude. It was, it was like, as a kid watching Ghostbusters in 84, and, and then Ghostbusters 2 later on, and you're like, man, I would love to have the car, you know, of course, it didn't make lights, and there was it didn't have lights or sounds or anything like that. But dude, it was so fucking neat. It was just so cool to have a piece of uh, of one of the best movies of all times in your hands. And uh, the Megazord, well, it was cool as fuck. But I never really cared that. Like Power Rangers, I always thought was going to be a trend, and it was going to kind of be over. And to be fair, um, I think. I remember fondly the original Power Rangers and then maybe Zero Rangers. And then after that, I, I don't give a fuck. Then I feel like that was the heyday. And then everything else after that, it's kind of like you're just cashing in. But there's something about the Ecto-1 that's timeless, dude. It's classic. It's like the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Even if it's based on the cartoon, the Ecto-1 is superior in every fucking way to the Megazord. Every fucking way. The only reason that I'm – everything you said is right, and you're actually correct. And actually, what you said is right. And when you're right, you're right. And you, you're you always right. But I'm going to say this. For personal reasons, look at the fucking price tag on this fucking Megazord, dude. This is 40 bucks? Twelve ninety fucking nine, Jay. You know how much you could sell that shit now on eBay for, un, like, packaged? <sighs> it's dude, ridiculous. $12.99 from Kmart on that specific picture look uh and that may not be the main megazord i just found the pictures i could find i'm gonna I, i'm gonna go megazord for one reason actually i think the ecto one's cooler uh i i i think that should win 
But for me, I'm going to say Megazord just because I could never afford to fucking buy one. So I never owned a fucking Megazord. And I'll tell you what, what the funnest thing was, dude, was going to um, uh, one of the first scare fests we went to. Because mm -hmm. at those conventions, like I never pay for like taking pictures with people and shit like that and autographs. Uh, I'm sure that that could change if the we right just take selfies there. like Miranda Lambert uh, concerts. Yeah, I pay myself yeah. to I, I jerk off at the bathroom and I film that. And that's mm -hmm. that's good enough for me. And it's free. But um I, when I saw all those old school Power Rangers toys that like, you know what I mean? Like were so fucking expensive back in mm -hmm. the day. So I would say if I had, if I could, if someone could give me one of these right now, I would take the Megazord, but the Ecto one's cooler. It is cooler. I just I actually, have, I have a, I have a Megazord. Um, it's in not the, pants? It's, no, it's not the, yeah, that's what I call my wiener. I wish, <laughs> uh, but no, I wish. We got to put our dicks together for that. <laughs> I don't have like the actual Megazord. I, I bought one. Um, it's like a smaller scale Megazord. Uh, but dude, to me, there's, there's just something special. If you look at the Ecto one box and like all those feelings that come back and the, and, and Ghostbusters, the cartoon series was so well done. It was so adult. Uh, it, like it, it, like it, obviously it was made for kids, but they, the, the episodes, the, at least the early seasons of ghost, the real Ghostbusters were wrote in a way that adults could enjoy it as well. Much like the Batman, the animated series. While it's made for children, you know, adults can watch it too and be like, oh, it's pretty smart. But there's something about that Ecto-1, man. Like just looking at the box, it brings back so many great fucking memories for me. I love it. The color looks awesome. Like, And, and it has all this. You could put it in the fucking firehouse, the Ghostbusters firehouse, if you got the firehouse. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely the best one. It's the best one. It's so smooth, dude. One of my favorite memories is actually my grandma taking us to a flea market. And I, I somehow lucked upon, you see the figure, like the the Egon and the Winston and like the figures. Do you yeah. remember the figures? They look like they're wearing nurses outfits. Cause they were like yeah. that weird blue. Yeah. Um, and the, yeah. or like Ray had that, that poopy Brown, you know, that whatever. was, that was all explained in, in, in ghost, the real ghostbusters episode, citizen ghost, why they all wear different colored uniforms. I'm that big yeah. of a fucking nerd. I know, I know, <laughs> I know the episode. But that was just a great memory for me, man. When my grandma took me to a flea market and they had them all for like a dollar. And I was like, oh shit, this is so yep. fucking cool. And they had but, every fucking one of them too. So I bought them. And the best part is if, if they if the, if you could find the proton pack with them and the and the the ghost that it came like the, the specific ghost that each Ghostbuster came with, then you're really hitting the fucking big time. But I mean I got this for Christmas, the Ecto One. And I, I never forgot how cool it was. It was so fucking awesome. It's it's the Ecto One. There's something about Ghostbusters for me. Even though uh, when the cartoon uh, came out, I was like three years old or two or something like that. I remember Power Rangers a lot more vividly because I'm still I was older. But Ghostbusters always stuck with me as a as a young tyke. So I um, I didn't say dyke. I said tyke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as a young I know, but I might, I, my forest. tongue might have slipped. Like, oh, he was a lesbian. Yes, I was. Catherine I love Jones. women. Uh, but no, whoa, whoa. Ecto One, man, it's Ecto One all day long. I, I agree with you that that is the right answer, even though mine would be different. And the crowd agrees as well. Ecto won 62% over 38% over the Megazord. Let's take a trip into bat. Oh, fucking. We got to do one food one at least. This is interesting because I, in my research today, when I was putting all these shits together, I realized something. The is blizzard. That stuff crust? The, yeah, the blizzard was oh. born. <laughs> The Blizzard was born in the 1980s, mm. 1985, I believe. And Stuffed Crust Pizza from Pizza Hut was born in the 90s. Uh, so if you got to pick and choose between these, this could be the hardest thing on the list for my might fat be, fucking might, ass. It might be. It might be. We're, we're both like the the jello that, that constitutes the majority of our asses are jiggling in anticipation <laughs> of what our answers are going to be. I would. I would I, that, I, I do. I'm going to go. I, I'm, I'm drawn to blizzards. I'm drawn to the blizzard. I want to be in the cold with some fucking chocolate, Reese cup, or Heath bar, or whatever the fuck. Put it in some goddamn ice cream and serve it up to my fat ass mouth waiting. <laughs> now, listen, you got you to remember, though, back in the 90s, the, 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 the stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut, dude, holy shit. The first time you heard about that fucker, and then you got it, it and was, it was heavy as fucking concrete. And you're like, why is it so heavy? And they're like, because there's fucking cheese in the crust. And you're like, what yeah. the fuck? And you're like, I can eat the crust first, and it's gonna taste some mat. And then you're like, yeah. And then you order it, and they go, in the window, they go, yeah. Like, what are you a fucking like, magician? Just give yeah, me my like, goddamn ice cream, you. Sally. Like, yeah. And I, but dude, but, but listen, man, Blizzard's got so many different fucking options. You got the fucking Heath Bar Classic. You got the Reese Cup. 
you got the fucking Oreo, yeah. you got uh you got the you got the cookie dough, you fat shit. Let's go. <laughs> uh you got so many options for blizzards, man. There's so many different varieties that blizzards can give you. Plus, by the way, it works year round, right? Like in the summer, it's awesome. But in the winter, when you're just feeling the fucking depressed because you drank too much, your wife's getting ready to leave you, you're like, I'm going to go to a fucking Dairy Queen. I'm going to get me a goddamn cookie dough. Large, bitch. And, uh, and, and That's and how so, you order it, too. You want this people out, you're like, welcome to yeah. Dairy Queen. Can I take your order? Hey, my wife's about to leave me. Let me get that large. If you got large, large, bitch. I'll fucking take that. I'm sad. God Put damn some it. extra Put cookie dough in it. And uh, a chicken finger basket with the gravy. Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, dude, you got you to gotta, you gotta get a chicken strip basket as well. Eight piece, bitch. Did I stutter? Eight piece. By the uh, way, I, I do want to mention going to Dairy Queen these days, you definitely need to have a Black American Express Amex. Yeah, well, uh, it's Dairy so Queen, fucking it's, expensive, dude. Yeah, it's dude, like $40 yeah. to get fucking fast food at Dairy Queen now. Yeah, dude. Dairy Queen's not what it was, not even close. But hot dude, uh, eats, but cool dude, Dairy treats. Queen, Dairy we Queen. treat you right. Yeah, man. Now, here's the thing about here's about here's the thing about pizza and the, and the stuff crust. You gotta give them credit. It was good as fuck. It was awesome. And then every other pizza chain copied them. So I feel like it gets lost. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the stuff crust pizza just gets lost in the shuffle. Blizzards have always maintained their goddamn superiority. I'm not talking about Dairy Queen. I'm talking about Dairy King. Dairy <laughs> King of ice cream. Ice There's cream. There's nothing wrong with queens. You fuck. What are you, Morgan Whalen? Get out of here. God damn it! I love Jason Aldean. <laughs> no i i listen i, I like but, the, the, but dairy queen is the champion of frozen treats for a fucking reason okay <laughs> listen what what did mcdonald have right they tried they get a mcflurry then you get some bull and it's always fucking broke it doesn't even matter they have mcflurries it's always fucking That's broke true. they There's got like no... uh what do they got what do they got wendy's uh uh uh, uh Got, they got called? frosty frosty's pretty Fro great. Frosty's all right pretty frosty's great. are classic but no Take listen, it easy on my boy frosty listen dairy queen said fuck it we're gonna combine two unhealthy things <laughs> put them in one and feed it to your fat fucking face are you ready for that transformer i, I have and people to are like yes i want there's a lot of love happening for blizzards right now and rightfully so but i i just i just want to throw the hat in the ring now my pick is blizzard but i there's a specific reason for that like stuffed crust pizza what, oh, time out before you say more. What's your favorite blizzard? You gotta pick one of your fa your, your favorite Cups. blizzard every day, twice on Sundays. Oh, dude, Reese's. it's gotta be, it's gotta be, it's gotta be fucking. I, dude, I, and I never it's thought I'd say this out loud. It's Heath. Heath? Ah, oh, no, man. I guess no, you, you got the, teeth, dude. Dude. no, yeah, but you got that crunch and you got that fucking chocolate. Mm. I'll just take my dirty foot and step on a Butterfinger <laughs> and pour the bag out. Nah, I like it. <laughs> but no, I would I would definitely go right Reese's Cup, dude, because there's nothing better when you get that big but, fucking chunk of Reese's mm. Cup. And you get like half a goddamn yeah, Reese's in the bottom. Have you ever been like, fat oh, enough to be like, yeah, I'm gonna stop. Go. I'm gonna stop at the grocery. Or I'm gonna stop at the convenience store out on my way. I'm gonna buy another pack of Reese's so I can add it in. <laughs> yeah, dude, oh, I'm, that was just me. <laughs> it's uh, like you look, you look at your blizzard like they didn't put enough Reese's in this bitch. Yes, mom, stop by Kroger so I could be a Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I, I will say um, that you gotta you do have to respect stuff crust because. Like nothing tastes as good as the actual crust. Like when you get mm. to the, like the commercials, like eat it backwards, eat it from the crust. I'm like, mm. I'm gonna eat it from the back. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it from the Hell back yeah. tonight. I'm yeah. gonna bend it over and I'm gonna eat it from the back tonight. But no, like no, don't do that. Eat it from the front, bow, bow, and then bow. when you get to it, it's the best part. <laughs> There's nothing like the middle of that glob of fat fucking cheese that's in that fucking roll, and you just tear into it already full. <laughs> yeah, dude. already full. Yeah, from the piece before it. It's great, but the answer is Blizzard because no, they're. But I, how about combine them both? Have a fucking Blizzard, you fat fuck. I'd after you're done eating that goddamn stuffed crust, I'd eat that and die. Give me diabetes. Dude, would you put? Would you put? Would you put a stuffed crust? Would you dip that shit in a Blizzard and eat it? I if I smoke pot. Oh yeah. yeah. Now now if I take me a hit of the you, hookah juice. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I would fuck get in that shit. Uh, but yeah, yeah no, man. Blizzard just has too many variables. You, you know what I mean? And also, technically, it's just cheese and bread. Now, that's unfair to say, but technically, it is just cheese and they bread. They got to bake the get... cheese in the crust. It's harder right. than it looks. It is. But you can find that dynamic in Bosco sticks and things like that. For Let me sure. ask you a cheese question. Sticks, but there is no it... other Blizzard. No, there's no other Blizzard. The Blizzard, like, again, what they did with ice cream is like, goddamn, what fucking uh, Michelangelo did for the Sistine Chapel. Yeah, <laughs> that's what fucking Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen is the Michelangelo of fucking treats. That shit's so dinner. bad for you though. They actually advise you not to eat it when you're fucking pregnant because it's ah, pure death. They don't know what it's they're talking about. That baby they're likes like, ice cream pregnant too. Chicks, 
Don't eat it. Yeah, don't it's drugs, fine. Don't worry don't about it. Hey, you can still drink alcohol and smoke weed. Just don't eat an ice cream. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, yeah, dude. dude I, there's, there's something, here's what I was going to ask you, though. When you think of, of stuffed crust pizza, I think the best stuffed crust pizza of all time, it's from Pizza Hut. Because they, they I, like, like, I know that, uh, like, all the other Domino's does it, Papa John's, but dude, Pizza Hut, Papa John's sucks. Yeah, they're not that good. yeah, Papa John's, the only thing I really, I think Papa John's is timeless for his cheese sticks, and that's about it. Oh, yeah, that melty, yeah, it's mm-hmm. pretty good. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, or in that little pepper they give you in the box, is pretty that's sweet some good. Too. Shit, dude, that I don't know what that sh- that creamy sauce is. I like that though, for your breadsticks that dip it in, it's like queso. Yeah. Oh, that's dude, that's good like fucking fat. shit. Oh, my God. That's like melted fat like they got out of the vat and like Fight Club. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> As you like, get Mike and I, I I'm, I'm going to be pushing 40 next year, dude. Nowadays, if I look at like a cream like that, like a like a queso like that, my ass jiggles for a week. Yeah, dude, it's bad. It's fucking, <laughs> you it's don't bad. have the same. Yeah, you know, the metabolism goes down, ladies and gentlemen. It you wake up away. in the middle of the night and that garlic sausage is sitting in your fucking esophagus. Like, you ever woke like up in the middle of the night from... like, God damn, dude, I want some fucking stuffed crust pizza. <laughs> no, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Yeah, I do. The anyway. crowd says, fuck y'all, stuffed crust pizza, 53% to 47%. Not only do I That's feel like close, that was the though. most interesting conversation of the night, but it was the closest vote as well. <laughs> well, I thought you were saying they were, I think it'll happen, dude, as I think we unintentionally gave them more power to fucking vote for stuffed crust. Yeah, by talking about it. people like damn dude i'd rather have some stuff crust than some fucking ice cream honestly like it depends on what you're in the mood for but yeah i just i'm if you're gonna delete one from history it's got to be one or the other uh okay real quick oh yeah that's true man i don't know though man like you delete one stuff. from history like it'll be gone forever this blizzards are gone forever it. bro i mean oh my god listen don't don't you guys fucking hurt me right now don't you guys fucking hurt me right now but i'm gonna put up one either metallica in the 80s Master of Puppets, so on, or Blink One Eighty Two in the nineties. Yeah, Mark Hoppus looks like every guy when he sees the the, the bride walking down the aisle, and be like, "I'm not ready." <laughs> uh, and then and then Tom looks like I don't know if I'm gay or if I just got a boner okay. for no reason, being this Absolutely close to my gay. friend's asshole. There is no uh, I, fucking question, Jay. This is fucking Blink-182. It's Blink-182. No, I'm going to pick Blink-182 because I don't know Thank that you. much about uh, Metallica. In the uh, like, Metallica's got, obviously, great songs. They're a classic band. But I was never a huge Metallica fan, to be honest with you. I, I, I never was. I mean, shocking, right? The guy that likes Savage Garden wasn't a huge Metallica fan. I'm going to... Whoa! I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hurt people. I'm going to hurt Metallica fans' feelings right now. No disrespect to them. But for me, music is not about how fucking fast can you play your fucking instrument. Well, it's about how you make people feel. No, you're not gonna hurt me. You're gonna get people pissed, dude. It's a, it's about how you feel. Okay, negative dislikes in this video. It's about how you feel when, when people hear your music. And when I hear Blink One Eight Two, I feel like it's summer outside. I feel like everything's possible. I feel like I'm having a great time with my friends. I feel like I fell in love with a girl at a rock show. When I hear Metallica, I have a good time. Yay! I'm like, <laughs> Martha, Martha. And I Dude, like Master it. Pups it's good workout good. music. I will admit that though. It's good grunge music, but there's not like like as far as like what music's about is it it's putting you in a good mood. It's not changing your mindset. Metallica's good for head banging. It's a good time. They're great at what they do. They they're did one. one was good. But they have nothing. Blink One Eight Two. They're not only musicians. They're also fucking comedians. They're funny as shit. They make people feel good. They make it feel like the sun's outside. It's Blink One Eighty Two. Don't you disappoint me tonight, you fucking we watched a movie fuckers. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll yeah. I'll quit right fucking now. I'll okay, storm well, off. Vote I'll Metallica. Fuck Jay. Do it. No, I, I no, you're right. I I would say Metallica is more along the lines of like it's a house party, dude. It's like it's like a house party that you get invited to, and then like maybe Scream One is on the TV, and and it's like a Halloween party, and everyone's having a good fucking time, and there's no drama, and it's just like like let's just kick back and act silly. And the Metallica, while wow, it's cool as fuck and it's dark, though, there's some darkness to it. It's like getting invited to your first Dungeons & Dragons campaign in, like, this fucking weirdo's, like, house. And he's, like, he's got all the shades pulled. And, like, tonight, gentlemen, I we embark on a new adventure. And then they have Metallica playing in the background. There's nothing wrong with that. I will personally say I know Metallica songs, but I have more of a connection to Blink-182 because I grew up with Blink-182 as far as a musical um soundtrack of my life not my life but just like in the background somewhere as i was growing up versus metallica i'm not so i'm not old enough to understand or or not understand but i'm not old enough to really get the metallica vibe but i understand people that love metallica so i don't want to 
this, uh, you know, I don't want to disrespect that and, and, and disagree with people that, that love a childish band that fucking gets Napster removed and then fight among themselves like a bunch of pussies. Yeah, a bunch of prima donna assholes. I mean, what did I say that out loud? They're a great band and they never fucking fight. I can't practice, Jake, because my therapist that, says I can only I, practice from 4 I to 4.15. I cannot 15. believe that documentary was approved and released. <laughs> fucking Lars running around hitting tin cans. Even though I, I think years. Lars, think of, I think it was Lars came out later on and he did say, yeah, we made a mistake with the Napster thing. You, you fucking think? Because you know what happened, by the way, the people that you were going after, your fans. I'm just butthurt because I'm watching the no, poll and it's, bur- it's, it's hurting my fucking soul. Well, no, right let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me put me. something on here. Lars did come out later on and say he regretted what he did. You think so? Because the people that were downloading yes illegally from Napster, they were still going out and buying the fucking album. They were basically sampling the music that you and they're like, "Oh, it's pretty good. I'm gonna go buy the album." You sued fucking your fans in court. Yeah, they sued their fans, but here their fans are voting for them over the greatest band of all Blink time. Blink is a fucking left leaning goddamn liberal tool of Joe Biden, and fuck them. <laughs> Oh, you guys have hurt me more than the crowd has ever hurt I'm me. Happy about that. Metallica wins sixty three percent to thirty seven percent. Oh my god, dude! Bro. I literally Not didn't think that was going to happen. I really, in the middle I, I, I put Blink tour. when I do just because I know more Blink songs than I do oh. Metallica songs, and uh, I well because Mike and my brother uh, had the music going all the time. But holy shit, talk god about fucking Mike's face and shoving it right into the Count Dracula dick. And I'm say, hurt. Suck it, bitch. I'm physically and emotionally hurt wow. by you all. This this audience, the audience about dick jokes and poop jokes. And fucking wow, dads, fucking moms, you guys pick goddamn serious got, ass no, wedgie yeah. up their butts, Metallica. Are you fucking with no, me? Are you, you face you, fucking you me got, right now? You God gotta be honest. It. No, you gotta be. You got. You gotta be like real, like realistic right now. Metallica works better on any soundtrack. Like if it, if it, if you could do a superhero movie, you could do like a serious movie, you could do a depressing movie. Metallica will work. You can't do that with all Blink One Eight Two songs. You just can't do it. They were in American Pie. What the fuck has Metallica ever been in? Except for uh, they were in therapy. like fucking. They, what, no, they've been in. Metallica was used in a couple. Of I'm movies. a millionaire. Listen, I don't. I think Metallica. Listen, I listen. Metallica's got some great songs too, and and the fact that they're still functioning at the at, at their age. That's, I mean, it was funny. Um, Cody Function told me that dick, he actually man. would pay, he would pay like seven hundred bucks to go see him. Metallica, uh, would you? No, I wouldn't pay twelve dollars after this night. <laughs> you fucking I actually, no, I actually, dude. There's, there's no way. I'm never there's no way. I'm, I'm, not sure. I'm never coming back to school. Ever. Would you pay, would you pay one fifty? No, I don't actually have very much interest in seeing Metallica. Honestly, they just stand there. They just stand there. I will say I, I do I do give them props for like standing up to I'm their kidding. own fucking rancid ass fan base when they were like, You guys sold out after Inner Sandman. You sold out. They're like, fuck you, dude. Well, you I'll give you a Metallica money. show in two seconds. Ooh, yeah. No, uh, yeah, you just saw Metallica. You're, you're, you yeah, I know, you're it's oversimplifying fine. the whole thing. <laughs> you're like literally <laughs> shaking the joking. mouse of Metallica. They're bro. they're they're amazing. I'm I'm kidding. I do have to pee though, and I'm gonna go cry in the in the shower. Mm. Um but what 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 time stamp were you at last time? I don't know. I forgot. I forgot, <laughs> dude. We've been like having these discussions. I forgot. Oh, uh, I don't know which one you read last. The, um, Dick Did I'll you read Trey film edit? I'll find it. Uh, yeah, uh, what time was that? 8 50. Uh, yeah, I did. What was his name? Trey film edit. Yeah, I, I oh, I said it right then. Okay, I, I couldn't remember how he said it. Uh, I think I said okay, no, I was at Joey Henderson. That was 9 p.m., and then I was at uh michael parton okay and then austin uh okay no i meant austin it was at 904 okay. I'm at austin. all right i'm gonna go kill myself i'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> film it I... thank you so much austin sir says mike and jay what if you were down on your luck and found yourself as a no-name henchman in gotham you're pulling a job and Batman shows. Do you fight him or you sign the brute closet? Uh, like it depends on what version of Batman we're talking about. If we're talking about the inexperienced young Robert Pattinson, he would just be like an asshole that went to hot topic too many times and, and got a costume. So I'd be like, oh, I'll fight that motherfucker. Like if he's just some weebo, like he's a weeb. But you're talking about the Christian Bell, and that motherfucker is like built and big, and he's like, Whoa! I'm like fucking crackhead broken here. I am not fighting him, so I'll hide in the broom closet. So it does depend, in my opinion, more on 
what version of Batman we're talking about here because my answer will change drastically depending on what we're talking about. I'm not saying I could beat Robert Pattinson's ass, but in the Robert Pattinson universe, Batman is still kind of an unknown. He is uh, much also in the Christian Bell universe, but more so in the Pattinson universe. And he's not as built and big as, as Bell. I was like, this fucking Weebo, this guy that plays like fucking Genshin online and, and, and fucking anime shit. I'll take him down. But you know, it, it, it would depend on which Batman we're talking about, but it could, dif it could differ a lot. God, I don't, I hope you guys are not too disappointed with, with the, what we've done with the, with the, I didn't know Mike was throwing musical stuff in here. Like, like music's, like Nirvana and ACDC and Metallica and Blink-22. But anyway, uh, DJ Graham says, I can see this channel doing vlogs every now and then, especially on Halloween or any special event. Seems like a lot of crazy entertaining moments happen off camera. Just a free idea for you. Uh, free idea for you. Uh, yeah, DJ, uh, we could. And then, you know, then we would incriminate ourselves, incriminate ourselves on camera and people would have evidence. We can't do that off stream. No, there's no variable for control. Uh, but no, we have talked about doing something, uh, at least something similar to that, like doing a, a vlog, but we're pretty boring outside of, uh, of streaming. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I swear to God, you guys are not going to be interested in what I do. Like, uh, not, not doing this. It, it, it's boring as fuck. It's like, all right, I gotta go pee. And then after I'm done peeing, uh, I'm going to go look around the yard. Okay. It doesn't need to be mowed yet. So I'm going to go back inside then I'm, I'm going to turn my computer on. I guess I'm going to start playing Knights of the Old Republic, uh, Republic MMO. Uh, I need to I need to uh, grind for some gear because I'm stupid and a nerd. And then after that, I'm going to turn the computer off and then go watch some police videos and then maybe fall asleep in the chair. See, it's not really <laughs> it's not a really uh, exciting life, is it? Uh, but then I might go on Amazon and look up like what's the Black Series Star Wars Darth Vader look like because I got um I got um Star Wars the Black Series I got um Luke Skywalker from the Mandalorian and Darth Revan and they were fucking amazing they look so cool so I'm kind of like getting into the into the Black Series of Star Wars uh, as as far as like collecting toys but I really am running out like I don't really have a lot of room to anyway. <laughs> I'm giving you a lot of stupid problems, but yeah, who knows, man? Maybe one day, maybe one day. Um, Merck's movie says JT, would it take to do or just, I don't know what that means. Would it take to do a seance Ouija on zoom? I'm not doing any of that shit, dude. Like none. I, I don't care. I mean, you could give, you could literally do a thousand dollars and I won't fucking do it. I'm not doing that. Like I literally told Mike one time, like, it was like a birthday party. It was either for me or him or something like that. They're like, oh, we could pull out a wizard board and summon a fucking demon. <laughs> Nothing will happen. Ugh, I don't know who Captain Howdy is. Who is that? Fight your friend. Oh, that's stupid. I said, fuck you. I will leave the party early. I will be that asshole. I will get in my vehicle and I will go home. I will not be. I will not. There's not a ma There's no amount of fucking money that's going to get me to do that shit. I'm not doing that. No way. No way. No how, sir. No way. I will not play the piccolo on the devil's taint. No way. I'm not doing it. Like, I don't care. Oh, it's sold by Parker Brothers. So that shit's fucking... No, you are dumb if you don't think that shit's evil. But, okay. Dan Murphy says, uh, Sup, you beautiful bastards. Okay. If you could pick one horror movie franchise or one off to release a new movie this Halloween, what would it be? Um... If you could pick one horror movie franchise or one off to release a new movie this Halloween. Um, this Halloween, I'm I'm gonna go with Nightmare on Elm Street. Like I, I if I could pick a movie that could be done uh the way that it should be done and and and, and cast it appropriately, and you had a great story and a great script and a great director and a great direction and and, and good production value. And people that believed in the project, I would pick Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that we've all, as a horror, uh, uh, as horror fans, have gone way too long without any type of a dip back onto the Elm Street. Um, some would say Friday the Thirteenth, but I, I, I'm, I think that I want the cerebral mindfuck that a Nightmare on Elm Street movie done correctly could give us. You know, so it would be Nightmare on Elm Street. But thank you, Dan. Uh, uh, 
Ed Boy Movie says, uh, hey guys, dropping into show love. Can't stay because of third shift. Oh, that sucks, dude. But yeah, I get you. Ha uh, have had a rough time lately, but always have your videos to keep laughing. Man, I appreciate that. We we both appreciate that. Thank you so much. And yeah, man, third shift is, it blows ass, dude. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. It is what it be. And you got to do what you got to do. Um, I've worked third shift uh, multiple times, but amen. Good luck to you, and I hope you have a great shift. Thank you so much, man. Um, BA says, I watch Swamp Thing all the time in the 80s because it was an, it was on HBO nonstop. That's true. It was. But Dark Man is on another level. So many great moments. I 1,000% agree with you. There was something about Dark Man that reminded me, and I know it's not on the same caliber like at all. Like, Don't get me wrong. And I don't want people like, what the fuck does he mean? He must be drinking way too much. Get that cocksucker help. But it reminded me of something like The Crow. Like Dark Man reminds me of something like in the vein of how they shot or 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 the, the, the there's something about it that emanates the crow vibes. You know what I mean? And it's very unheralded. Again, Dark Man is very unheralded. Uh, it, there there's there doesn't seem to be enough love or respect or admiration for what Sam Remy did with the character of Dark Man, and and it's like it, he's a tragic character. Much like Swamp Thing, don't get me wrong, but he's a tragic character. Uh, but there's it, like there's like in, um, intrigue and and romance and action and darkness. It's very much like The Crow, but before The Crow, which is what Dark Man was, I think personally. Um, but it, but it has the same vibe. Uh, do, give me the Cure doing a soundtrack song for Dark Man. Oh, we're talking. Movies that, that like line up perfectly. That would be fucking amazing. I would love to see that. All right, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your talk tonight too, by the way. What uh, stamp B are you at? Nine uh, nine eighteen on BA. Okay, sweet titties. Yeah, from Texas Town. Well, uh, and then I, I will I will ask you this question because someone asked for both of us. I, I'm at nine eighteen on BA. I just answered that question. Uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Dan Murphy says. Um, he said, "If you could pick one horror movie, I answer mine." There you go. You can read it. But I'm at nine eighteen. Or after right. nine, I'm at I'm after nine eighteen. So all right, all right. Enjoy your dick. Yeah, I would. <laughs> oh me, I'm still mad at everyone. I just want you all to know I'm still mad at you. Just so you know, I'm we're not we're not as good as friends as we were twenty minutes ago. He says, "Sup, you beautiful bastards. If you could pick one horror movie franchise or one off uh, or one off to release a new movie this Halloween, what would it be?" Uh, one horror movie or one off? Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. I want to say Halloween because I love it so fucking much, but it's time for Freddy to come back, right? I mean, that's got to be the thing. I think Freddy stands alone in a in, in a big field of fuck you to Universal, not Universal, but uh, Warner Brothers or or New Line or whoever. There was a, there was a story that came out a while back where they were like, "We're more concerned with the Conjuring universe. We're not dipping into that." And I don't know if that if there was any truth to that or not, but that's just fucking insanity. That's insanity. We're on the nun too thing's going to pop out and go boogie boogie boo and then it's going to run away into a corner and it's not going to hurt anybody and then at the end someone's going to get possessed and that's going to be the real danger but then they'll they'll get the demon out and then it'll be fine again it's the same fucking plot line over and over again but they're like we're more concerned with that than freddy you know uh freddy is the thing that needs to happen it's time we got we got jason coming back fucking probably be 2029 now that the, the, the goddamn um strikes going on not the actors or the writers fault it's the fucking studio's fault uh for sure but yeah that that's the one man that's what i'm going with for sure and thank you so much thank you so much um austin says true story i spent one easter naked and i pooped in a coffee can and now i gotta live with it i spent one easter naked and i pooped in a coffee can and now i gotta live with it uh you know easter's my least favorite holiday it's 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 probably my least favorite holiday that or valentine's day so at least you didn't have to waste money right at least you didn't have to waste money or or deal with the crazies so i mean pooping in a pooping in a coffee can on easter is not the worst easter i could think of i could think of a lot worse things that you have to do on easter you know than pooping in a coffee can but I'm now I'm imagining what poop in a coffee can looks like, like a like a tin Folgers can, which is like a swirly shit. And you know what? Fuck you, Austin. <laughs> Dirk Diggler, who wants a mustache ride? I do. I do. It's a great movie. I need to watch Super Troopers again sometime soon, man. It's a great fucking movie. It's an all time 
all timer. They don't make them like that anymore. Even Super Troopers Two didn't feel like Super Troopers, you know. Um, it's fucking all timer. I'm still hurt about Blink One Eight Two. I just want you guys to know that, and so is my dog. She's coming over here to say, "Fuck you guys." That was messed up, man. I was messed up, man. Um, I'm kidding, but I am shocked. I am shocked. I feel like that was a that was a ruse. I feel like you guys did that to me on purpose because you knew it would hurt. John Horside, thank you, man. Says so excited for Scarefest. You see what he did there, right? Six, six, six. That's the devil's juice. He says so excited for Scarefest. I was going to mention I got my tickets. Yeah, dude. Uh, we're going to be at Scarefest. No, no diggity fucking doubts about it we're going to be there it's going to be awesome it's always so good doing scare fest meeting so many of you guys coming up there it's going to be so fun i can't wait to meet you dude it's gonna be fucking awesome come to the booth don't worry everything's free we don't charge because no one's going to pay for that shit <laughs> so uh come hang out with us say what's up we'll be drunk hanging out our booth it's gonna be a good time mercs movie says just watch host the host commentary i died laughing it's easy one of your funniest videos mike sheer and jeep I'm having a stroke. My sheer enjoyment of Jay's terror is hysterical. That was a good time. I had a good fucking time that night, man. Um, if you guys don't know uh, uh, Rob Savage's movie Host that came out during the pandemic, I watched it and I was like, oh, this would fuck Jay up. So we recorded Jay watching the entire movie and I just sat and stared at him like this. By the way, Jay's the worst about that shit. I don't know if you guys have a friend that does this, but Jay does this thing where if he shows you something that he likes and thinks is funny, he'll bring it up on his phone and then while you're watching it, You'll look over and he'll just be eyeing you. He'll be going and just waiting on on your reaction to it, won't you? What? Wait, I was well, he was talking about how funny it was when you watch host, like well, like the reactions oh. to you watching host and so. And I was saying that's what I was doing to you the whole time. What you do to me whenever you whenever Jay has something to show to you on a video, he'll show it to you and he'll give you he'll give you his phone. And but while you're watching it, <laughs> it's like that Thor joke. You'll be watching it and you'll see Jay creep into your peripheral. And go. Oh yeah, like if it's like if you don't find this funny, <laughs> like I'll, I'll be like, hey man, you gotta watch this video. It's funny as fuck. And Mike be like, oh, let me see it. And then I'll, I'll be like, <laughs> oh, Mike, you, then, you made me Mike, uncomfortable. Yeah, but then Michael be like, <laughs> like you didn't laugh the same fucking way that I thought you would. What the fuck is going on? You put me on the spot. No, yeah, but I, no, I agree me. with that, dude. Mike likes what, dude. Mike. Mike's fucking like nefarious in that shit because he wants me to watch scary ass fucking shit for no other reason than it's entertaining. Yeah, and it's bullshit, dude. I hate that shit because I don't. I you, all, you all know how it is. I, I don't That's like the same what. reason. We it's all like, like, hey, dude, hey, hey turn beers. it the fuck up, turn it the fuck up, and get really close to the fucking camera, dude. <laughs> That's true. Robin Parker, thanks, buddy. He says I'm sure you know Wes Craven was originally slated to direct, slated to direct Batman. Given Craven's dark and cerebral approach to storytelling, God, I like the way you talk. You should write novels. Uh, how do you think his version would have differed from Burton's? I, I, I think Batman would have been like perpetually fucking drunk and like <laughs> and like figuring out like is my life worth living? And then Alfred would have to pull it out of his drunken stupor. He probably like beat the shit out of criminals drunk and like injure them really severely. And then Alfred would come in and be like, "You can't do this, Master Bruce. You're better than this." And then it would be like a redemption tale of him coming out of his drunken stupor, realizing that he needs to be more than just a drunken man bent on revenge. He has to be more than the knight. He has to be more than a man. He has to be a symbol. Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I, I don't think it would. I honestly like it's weird. I can't imagine. Been, yeah. But I don't think it would have been that different. Like, I really don't think it would have been. No, that I, I think I think uh, I think Craven would have focused more on uh, the cerebral even though Burton did do a really good job of doing the more of the cerebral context of Batman's psyche, he did a good job. Like, don't get me wrong. I think that Craven would have been more interested in the effects that it's having on Bruce Wayne as a man versus the, the actual character of Batman. Like, I think that Burton balanced out the two really well where you have Batman uh, doing his awesome shit. And then you have Bruce Wayne trying to figure out how to be Bruce Wayne. I think what you would have had is much like what we had with the Batman with Robert Pattinson, it would have been more focused on a, you know, a kid that lost his parents and what I I'm more comfortable in the skin of this dark avenging angel than I am as uh, being Bruce Wayne. I think it would have yeah. been a lot more focused on the man behind the mask more than Batman. And as much as I do adore Wes Craven, I think Batman 89 is so specific. I would, I would leave it alone. There's, there's a lot of properties. If you said, Hey, would you rather see Wes Craven's take on this than the person that directed it? That I would say yes to, you know, yeah. uh, but with Tim Burton's Batman, that's one I'd be like, do not touch it. Do not touch it. <laughs> you put a hundred dollar bill on that's what you're not going to touch. Do not go touch it. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I, no, I, well, how many, okay. Well, here's a question. 
Uh, I'm gay. Would you have loved to have seen the uh, Tim Burton uh, trilogy completed with Michael Keaton, Batman Three? A thousand percent. I would take Tim Burton's Batman Three over Batman Forever. No questions yeah. asked. Well, I mean, as kids, you didn't know any better, but now as you're an adult and you realize that you know it, it happens. But like, don't ever just go sit on a random person's lap and be like, "Hey, you want a lollipop?" That's what Joel <laughs> Schumacher did to you with Batman Forever. Like, yeah. that was a bad idea, sir. It's like uh, Super Troopers. Like, oh, yeah. he goes, "Sit on Uncle Rabbit's uh, lap." No, don't. Sit on Uncle Rabbit. That's a good idea, Rabbit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, but, yeah um, I would have, I would have loved to have seen. And do maybe it'll happen one day. I don't know. I'm I'm sure it won't because Warner Brothers is as fucking they're as mental as Marvel is. Uh, yeah. To have a Tim Burton conclusion to this trilogy, I do. How many of you would love? Because obviously it's been proven. I mean, whether or not you hated the Flash or not, Michael Keaton still got the cojones to play Batman. Like you, you said it like 25, 30 years after Batman Returns, and you have Tim Burton come back and do the trilogy ending. With, yeah. with Michael Keaton. That's what they should have done. That's I would, it. I would, That's that would have been fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. Back to the 80s versus the 90s. Got mm -hmm. another one for you here. I already know Jay's answer, but I want to know your all's answer. Rock until you drop. Dance Fuck until your feet fall off. off. Um, 80s, on the 80s side, you got the Monster Squad. On the 90s side, you have Hocus Pocus. And I, I like, Mike, I'm going to be on. I'm going to say Jay. this one time. Jay. Give me the ambulance, you bitch! <laughs> <laughs> it's Monster Squad. Get out of my face. I knew you would say this. I knew you would say this. Um, I almost wrote Hocus Squad because I drink beverages that are for adults. Um, look, I... It's tough. But Hocus Pocus was a way bigger part of my childhood. I didn't watch Monster That's Squad until... Fuck? I didn't watch Monster Squad until a couple years ago. Oh my first God, time I seen it. And I enjoyed it. That part. <laughs> and it's great. And it's great. Wolfman's got an arts. Uh, and I love it. And it's great. But for my childhood, for my money, just based on pure nostalgia, it would be Hocus Pocus for me. Come on, guys. He's great. Don't be chicken shit. Talk about Frankenstein, <laughs> which, by the way, was played by uh, uh, Noonan, uh, the guy that played uh, Kane in, in RoboCop 2. Awesome. Dude, I cried. That was one of the first horror movies that made me fucking cry. It's like, be good, Phoebe, when he's, like, getting sucked into the fucking <laughs> vortex of evil. And yeah. he, and she, like, please don't go. And, like, she throws him her stuff there. God damn. Yeah, dude. And by the way, I honestly think in Monster Squad, the guy that played Dracula, dude, he's got some of the best lines. And he looks so good when he was, like, uh, uh, when he throws a piece of dynamite and he blows up the Monster Squad's uh, 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 fucking funhouse or, or their, their club, he's like, meeting a joke. And then, uh, like, he's talking to the dad. He's like, I will have your son. <laughs> I was like, God damn. Plus, you had the great moment between father and son sitting on the roof, eating a Burger King sandwich, watching the fucking horror I love movie that across scene. the way. Love that scene. Dude, there's something about, and he's like, well, can I have stupid $20 when he's talking to his dad? Yeah. He, like, the, the way they captured that, dude, I, I, I fucking, it makes me, like, it makes me kind of, like, teary a little bit, dude. Like, that, you know, that's, like, that's how it was with your dad. Growing yeah. up back in those days, like we're gonna have stupid twenty dollars or something. Like, I don't know, man. It's just it's <laughs> fucking perfect, dude. I love that movie. That, I th that's the that's the highlight of Monster Squad is that rooftop scene right there. I love that scene, man. That was that was amazing. You and when the, the dad crowd... smoking a cigarette, he's like on the edge of the bed. He's like, <sighs> oh, they put him in the blender and they mailed him to fucking Norway, but he still came back. It's like that was part seven. <laughs> I was like, that's so cool, dude. I love it. It reminds me of the scene between the the dad and the son too in Rockstar, when he's like, "Do they play back Black Babylon?" And he's like, "Well, they haven't played back Babylon since Osaka in '75." <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. I mean? <laughs> but uh, in that, this case, is your last chance for pie. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd agrees with you, man. Monster Squad, fifty-seven percent to forty-three percent. The '80s takes another one down. I think dude, the '80s is winning. Yeah, and they do Rudy's badass, dude. Rudy's like, "I'm in the goddamn club," and you know, I and he like pulls the fucking <laughs> stake out, and he like. He's like, oh, yeah, real religious, Sean. Why don't we just go to the parking lot of Burger King? You know, they did have the balls, by the way, to take a children's movie and, ha and make it have adult themes and adult jokes in it. That's something they would never do today. I, I really don't think yeah. so. Like, you know I, what I mean? Like, it stands alone in that regard. I like that part. Where, yeah, exactly. No, because the, the member, they had to have a virgin. And there's one part I was like, what we really want to know is, have you ever? <laughs> and then he's like, and then Rudy's like, well, your brother. Is trying to so eloquently put is have you ever been at any point in your life doinked? It's like 
<laughs> it's like, guess what? Fox Photo got a two for three deal. And guess there's also a picture, uh, a room on the bullet board between the prom committee and the football squad. Because <laughs> <laughs> he had like fucking pictures of her naked. <laughs> oh, uh, here's, here's, okay, I'm going back to a thick one. I'm going to a thick one, Jay, which mm. is something our wives have never said. Thank they, God. They've never seen that they, in their life. If Thank they God. did, they'd never come back. Yeah, we'd be Adam 22 if that was the case. <laughs> uh, 80s versus 90s. on, And this is 80s oh. Arnold. 80s Arnold for the podcasters. Let me explain. 80s Arnold versus 90s Arnold. On 80s Arnold's side, you've got Conan. Conan mm. 2. Terminator. Mm. Commando. Mm. Raw Deal. Ah. Predator. Oh. Running Man Ooh. and Red Heat. Nah. On the 90s side of Schwarzenegger, you got Terminator 2, Ooh. Total Recall, Whoa. Kindergarten Cop, Wow, Last Action Hero. Don't stop. I fuck dudes in Burger King bathrooms. No? No. True Lies. Yeah. Eraser. Wow. Jingle All the Way. Okay. In the days. All right. Batman and Robin. Oh. Which one do you choose, sluts? I'm going to go knee-jerk reaction. Got to say it. Got to believe in it. Got to fucking go all the way to the mountaintop. 90s, Arnold. 90s, bitch. 90s. <laughs> I don't want... Oh, by the way, you... I've had up to here with this goddamn trouble bed doll. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, you left out twins, dude. You left out twins. No, twins is on... You piece of shit. Fuck! I t I typed it. I typed it. I swear to God, I remember. I remember my mind's eye fucking. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Wiping it. It doesn't matter. Uh, Dude, what, Terminator Two. It, Terminator Two is one of the greatest movies of all fucking time. Total Recall. What a goddamn beastly ass fucking movie. Good God. Okay, Last so action hero. You could talk add, about Corneas. Add, add twins to the eighty side, by the way. Just okay. Yeah. That, eyes, well, that kind of helps, but it doesn't. That's important. Dude, look at Arnold in the eighties, dude. He's having a good fucking time. Like this is a man. That you can look at him and be like, hey, I I'm a foreigner. And guess what? I just made a fucking life for myself, believing in the American dream. I'm ready to fuck shit up and take on Sylvester Stallone and body count he looks body like, counts of movies. He looks like he's about to fuck Adam 22's wife. Yeah, yeah, he looks like he's getting ready to take over fucking tractor supply. <laughs> and in the 90s, that's a pure smooth motherfucker. That's like, I get it now. I'm going to be governor. I know how things work. I'm pure fucking adrenaline. I'm steroid, not free, but that's fine because only bitches don't take steroids and they drink milk. As Action I... says, what is best in life, Colton? <laughs> what is best in life? You see your enemies <laughs> driven before you to hear the lamentations of their women. I don't remember the, all of it. But dude, listen. <laughs> listen, just because... Look, dude, you got Terminator 2. You got Total Recall. You got Kindergarten Cop. Last Action Hero, which I know it's like some people don't like that movie. Fine. But you got True Lies. Okay, and you got all right. Well, I think everybody would agree. Jingle all the way. Now, truth be told, put the cookie if, down. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> boys, that penis goes up the china. Uh, but you <laughs> do have some, was, you nah. do have some great fucking like dude Conan the Barbarian. I James Old Jones is the main bad guy in that. Holy fucking shit! What a goddamn man of a movie. That's a like you when you watch that movie you you feel a little you feel like hair pop out on your chest a little bit it might not be it might be acne but you think it's hair but then you got conan 2 it's not as good as conan 1 conan the destroyer is good though terminator yeah i like commando i gotta be honest i <laughs> you shut your fucking mouth no it's not bad I and mean, it's got a great soundtrack but it's not like raw deal i don't like predator holy fuck yeah okay we feel good running man uh red heat uh but then you got like Terminator, dude. It's nineties all day, dude. It's nineties all day. Like I feel like that's where Arnold really fucking found himself. In the you're a hundred percent and fucking a thousand percent correct. I go nineties all day long, and it's not just it's not it's not just yeah. But they were all bad. It's not <laughs> it's not just Terminator yeah. two, you know. Like you think Terminator two, but like Conan one, a fucking amazing Conan two. You know, it's fine. Terminator's fucking great. Co Commando, amazing. Uh, Predator, amazing. The rest of them, there was some, there was some mid shit with like Red Heat and like yeah. Running Man's pretty great. But like, dude, True Lies, mm -hmm. True, uh, like Terminator Two, Total Recall, Kindergarten Cop, fucking True hey, Mike, Lies. Mike, real quick though, uh, True Lies and Terminator Two, who directed those? Uh, uh, uh David Fincher. As well. Oh, is that what it was? I, uh, well, oh, okay. That's, that's I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I, I with, thought it might have been James Cameron. I don't know. It was, da it was I don't, David. I don't know what happened there. Shut okay. the fucking hole. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
So, so you could argue that Arnold Schwarzenegger is actually responsible for James Cameron's success, but I'm just, you know, what? that's just a thought that I had. I mean, you can do what you want. Actually, with it. it could be. It uh, could be. I'm not. I'm not gonna argue with that. <laughs> Holy that's shit! Fine. Those were his two best movies. I mean, not really. No, you're fuck lying. Titanic. You're lying in your face. Fuck you're Avatar li- and fuck Titanic. Yeah, but they were the ones that made him the most money. So you're lying. That's a, money doesn't matter. JP <laughs> Pfizer makes a lot of money. Yeah, money doesn't matter. It's only my respect. <laughs> the fucking Twilight made money. Yeah, no, I, I don't need to make it's... payments on my fucking mortgages. It's just respect. <laughs> I don't need money. Uh, but yeah, it also has the darkness of Batman and Robin in there for sure. And also, again, we forgot twins for the 80s. So that goes in there. But yeah, dude, it's, I think, tr- honestly, like, I think the thing that takes it over the top, though, it's not Terminator 2 because, you know, Terminator's close to greatness and, and Predator's close. The thing that actually takes the 90s over the top for me are two things, and they're true lies and dark horse end of days. You're a fucking quad boy compared to me. Yeah. A fucking quad boy. <laughs> like yeah, dude. end of days, the like the way that Arnold, like, dude, you can like that was I, I think that was the last movie that he did, and I think it was 98, right before he started running for governor. And you can see like the emotional damage that he's had. Uh, in that movie, and you're like, man, that's everybody that's getting ready to turn 40, which I'm going to be doing next year. That's like, that's a shadow beard. You don't. Yeah, I, wish we, t- I wish we looked like that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, you want to look like that, but you don't look like that. Nobody looks like that. But you, like, that, that's like, oh man, my fucking life. Holy shit, where did time go? What yeah. the fuck? Calm down, Time King. And they said no. And then you find out the devil is like fucking literally real. And like taking over the streets of Manhattan, I'm like, I gotta go do what I gotta do and fight yeah. that bitch. But I'll tell you what, man, no, it, I, I gotta be like on on end of days is literally so underrated. One of the yeah, dude, it's it's one of his best movies ever, and everyone forgets about it. Eraser's also good, but Eraser's uh He's gonna fuck you, Christine. Yeah, <laughs> he's gonna fuck you. I also like uh what was it? Wasn't the sixth man or no, not not that not the fucking six- last stand is the six days no the six day oh oh yeah, yeah yeah that was that was probably the clone maybe that was early 2000s i think yeah the clone shit that was a really good movie yeah. too and um, i didn't put everyone in there because there's a couple like i feel like 90 just that. dominates dude I, I just feel like there's too much like heavyweight champions in in the 90s yeah yeah I, i'm with you dude i think it's 90s all the way the crowd agrees with both of us by the way 69 percent, dude 69 69 Agreed. dude 90. Arnold is better than 80s Arnold. I'm not done fucking with your holes. Oh. Is what I Yeah. On the 80s side, Wes Craven in the 80s or Wes Craven in the 90s? On Wes Craven in the 80s side, you got Shocker, Swamp Thing, Serpent in the Rainbow, Deadly Friend, A Nightmare on Fucking Elm Street, The Hills Have Eyes Do, and Deadly Blessing. On the 90s side of Wes Craven, you've got Scream 1, you got Scream 2, Vampire in Brooklyn, New uh, Nightmare, sucks. Sucks. and The People Under the Stairs. Uh, well, I, I don't, you know, listen, um, the biggest heavyweight, uh, it, it's like fucking George Foreman coming up. Like, I still got one round left. I got 15 kids I got to feed, Michael Moore. Knock you out. Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> is the George Foreman in the 80s. Uh, Swamp one, Thing yeah. is great. Serpent, uh, you know, they're all good movies. But Nightmare on Elm Street is the fucking heavyweight champion right there. But then you look into the nineties, dude. Now you got fucking Mike Tyson. You got fucking Riddick Bowe. You got Evander Holyfield. You got some big ass motherfuckers that are ready to go to war. It's got to be the nineties, West Craven, dude. It's got to be the. It, it has to be. Well, let's say, let's say, in my mind, and you know which I would pick, but let's say that Scream and A Nightmare on Elm Street cancel each other out. Right, so let's forget about those two. Okay, and then you're looking at Shocker, Swamp Thing, Serpent, the Rainbow, Deadly Friend, Hills Have Eyes, Two, Deadly Blessing versus Scream Two, Vampire in Brooklyn, New Nightmare, People Under the Stairs. People Under the Stairs is the knockout punch for me. People Under the Stairs, yeah, okay. In that particular instance, it's uh, nineties. Yeah, but you can't. Yeah, if you took Scream out, yeah, then it, it would be the eighties. But now no, you, if you took a Scream and Nightmare out, like equally. Oh yeah, like if they cancel each other still, out, yeah, it would still be the nineties. Even though I know that everybody, like, there's so many people that love the Serpent in the Rainbow, but I, I just don't like. I've watched that movie. I, I don't. I never really gave a fuck. I mean, it was a good movie, but I, I never really like. Oh, I'm gonna watch that again. But do yeah, I've never seen there, it. People mm-hmm. under the stairs. People under the stairs. In my opinion, it was like that. Felt like actually bringing horror into your living room in a way that hadn't been done since Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, that's a good because way to that shit it. could happen down the street from you. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you would never know that that one, that seemingly cool, decent family is the fucking Duggars. It, dude, people under the stairs is probably the fucking one of the Duggers, most, dude. <laughs> yeah, it is. And people under the stairs is probably one of the most underrated horror movies of all time. People understand should be up there with Nightmare on Elm Street with Scream. Like it's that like, fucking yeah. good. I, I like, think yeah, well, because it's so realistic. Yeah. It, it, like how it, many times do you good. hear about open like crimes that are so horrific and they happen in like upscale neighborhoods or some shit like that, and you hear about the darkest, most fucked up, twisted shit you've ever heard of in your life that took place five houses down from fucking Ned Flanders from Simpsons. And, and also, like, it also what? did it. It did the exact same thing that uh, that um, Night of the Living Dead did. You know what I mean? What what it said about like uh, um, a classism and all that shit like that, and about yeah. racism and shit like that. Like, I don't know racism, it, just class. Maybe classism, like class. Yeah, well, uh, 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 intertwine. Yeah, betwixt each other. But yeah, mo- uh, on the on, mo- more than anything else, classism, like mm-hmm. for sure. And like the way they let these people get away with it and stuff like that. And you're right. Like it does feel like something that could actually realistically happen in the world that you, I think so. About. Yeah. I mean, how many, you how know? many, how, like, like imagine that dude, how many horrific stories have you heard that have come from like really what, what, what seemingly is uh picturesque neighborhoods and then next door, the neighbor from hell and yeah. all these, all you read that shit things. today. Yeah. That happens all the fucking time, dude. So I feel like the people under the stairs, is is more like hard hitting and relevant and scary because it it is closely tied to reality than something like maybe everything he's ever done. Maybe Scream is the closest thing that he's ever done where it's like that shit can happen. Yeah. And that was that was the beauty of Scream. Hey, quick question by the way. Top 3 films on both these lists. What would your ranking be? Top 3. Um Diamond Elm Street Scream, people on our stairs. Mine would be Scream, Nightmare on Elm Street, people on the stairs. Just flip the top two, exact same. Yeah, I think that I think most people would be one variation of the other yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I saw somebody on the on the last 90s versus 80s we did, they were like, Why didn't you do Nightmare on Elm Street versus Scream? It's like, dude, because we've done that <laughs> like 30 yeah, it's times. Happened a lot. <laughs> we did that during the Friday night fights yeah. ages. We did that during it all. So uh, but that being said, Jay and I both agree, both agree it's 90s West Craven, and they agree with us 75%. Whoa. 25%. So a lot, Craven of, smart had folk, his lot of smart folk in lot the smart. 90s. Hey, you know what's going to be fun is when we do 90s versus 2000s. There's going to be some fun I won't shit. I'm doing that. I, I will stick not your be finger a part in. Of that. No, I don't want to be. You got it. What you do, dude, you put two fingers in, right? You know what's weird? And then you go around the back and then you hit the you hit the wall on top. Yeah, it's like it's like Mario when you get the magical flute. You get the wall on top and it's like a net back there and you got to reach back there and get it. Just in case anybody's wondering. Hey, what God are you talking damn. about? God uh, damn! By the way, I just was just letting say, you know uh, what to do. No, I was gonna say uh, G spot, dude. It's hard, like with, with '90s versus 2000s. The early part of 2000, like 2000, just 2000 to 2004, felt like an extended part of the '90s. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, for sure. I, I can mm-hmm. see that. It'll be interesting to go into those for sure, man. That that'll that'll be really interesting. <laughs> Brandon Riddle says that's referred to as digging. For Definitely like one of those old man. That. I was I was like, my ear was itching, but I was like doing this, and I was like, if I had done this, like smelled it. I watched this dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I watched this guy in camera. I was watching one of those police footage videos, and he was like this. He was like. <laughs> it's not a fucking earwax dude <laughs> oh fuck me speaking of scream let's go right into the scream boat hard and twice to the left 80s you My, got the shining stop your ass on the 90s stop your ass it's leaking you got from scream. all the bullshit right now no i dude. know what you're gonna say you piece of fart, fart. oh you're gonna tell me stanley kubrick the fucking classic the man the myth the Kubrick, the one that said Shelly Duvall, I don't care if you lose fucking hair. I'm trying to do a goddamn masterpiece. Jack That's Nicholson a negative, with the Jay. That's a negative. You're saying negatives. You're not saying positive. No. He said, I don't care about your safety or health. I want to make a good. great fucking movie. And he did it. Stanley That's Kubrick good. said, fuck yeah, I don't need That's steroids. That's bad. Oh. That's bad. You're tr- fuck That's, your work not conditions. good to treat people fuck that your way. your pussy shit. Stanley Kubrick wins. The Shining, the hands down, <laughs> the guy, the myth, the legend. Let me bring my axe to your fucking maze. Why are we recording WWE promos right now? I don't know. I feel like I was doing that, though. 
I was I was feeling I was feeling good about it though. <laughs> no, I, you know, I literally watched this kid go into um, Hulk Hogan. Apparently, has got like a, a beachfront store. Uh, I don't know where. Oh, I've been, been there. It's on Clearwater Beach. I've, yeah. I've walked in that. But he was there. I, like, I don't know when he's. I, I guess he has a schedule where he's. Act, I would do. I would fucking love to meet Hulk Hogan or get him to sign something. But anyway, he was there, and this little boy came in. And he was like, "You met me when I was three years old, brother." <laughs> and, and it's ready. I'm ready to lift you to the highest heaven in front of all your ninety thousand Hulkamaniacs. And put you down once and for all. And dude, and, and dude it was great, dude, because Hulk Hogan was like, well, let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> Did he you jump know, into little, it? Did he? Yeah, dude, he was into it. Like, they were like, <laughs> the little boy, he was like six years old. That's he amazing. Did, he did the fuck. And I'll lift you. Like, that. he was doing the thing. And then Hulk was like, well, let me tell you something, brother. You come in here with your attitude and meat and cheese is over there looking at me. <laughs> but you don't know what it takes to be a Hulkamaniac. Because in front of the Hulkamaniacs, you're going to go down at SummerSlam 1994. <laughs> yeah. That'd be fucking amazing. That You got to love Hulk Hogan for that. Despite, I love it. You know, I think he's great. All yeah. the other shit. Uh, no, I, in, in this case, I you know The Shining's probably, I mean, top at least top 15 greatest horror movies of all time. Yeah, it's got to uh, be. Probably top 10. But Scream's my number Ooh, one. My, of you all, know my of all time? Scream. Of all time? My number one scream of all time. It's my favorite horror movie ever. No, I'm saying yeah. like, but The Shining. You're top say ten, top fifteen, or top ten? Top, probably top ten. But I, to, to be safe, I'll say top fifteen for sure. But probably top ten. I've never looked. I've never done it. But our last, our last fucking stream that Jay and I will ever do, we'll give our top one thousand movies of all time. <laughs> we'll just we'll sit here for seven hours. Yeah, naked, that'll be it. No, that'll jerking be jerking off, and the first one that comes wins. You know, they'd be like, well, you guys should probably already do seven hour streams. That that makes sense. Yeah, why don't you do it? Just do, fucking do it. Just do it already. Your fucking horror channel. Just do it. <laughs> Oh fuck! Dude, I watched it. I watched a streamer last night. They were live at three thirty a.m. in the fucking morning. Were people watching? He, fuck, dude! He had twenty two thousand people watching him. Twenty two thousand? Yeah. What, dude. Was he showing his dick? Yeah, yeah, it's huge. Uh, it looked nice. like Conan's sword. No, it was Asmund Gold, which you guys would know who he is. Like he's already a huge. Like I think he's the most subscribed Twitch streamer. But yeah, like twenty two thousand fucking people. Like, fucking 3 a.m. watching him he'd That's already wild. been streaming for five and a half hours Good but he, but he wasn't doing like what we did he was like looking at videos and like taking suggestions and stuff and then watching like you know whatever we could do that but i feel like we we could fucking no we'd have we'd have nine people and they would be fucking we'd probably we'd probably be accused of like causing alcohol poisoning on one of them by that point <laughs> well no, yeah plus he's not alcoholic we we are so he didn't uh, have to yeah. drink I'm not. I, I've never had alcohol before. I could get addicted. I don't know about you. I don't. You shouldn't do that. Just yeah. being careful in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, the crowd says "scream" fifty eight percent to forty two percent, but it's close. That was good. That was good. That's a good. Question. Uh, you, I mean, honestly, okay, it's a good. No, question. no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Did you? Are you surprised? Yeah, dude. Are you surprised? What the fuck are you talking about? I used to put some respect. You guys are telling me that Scream is better than Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Are you fucking high off they fucking meth rocks? They said it. They they said it. I didn't say it. I did say it, but they said it more. Whatever. God damn, <laughs> dude. We're moving on. <laughs> oh fuck. Hey, I'll trade you Blink 182 for, for the Shining. <laughs> They, Both of our feelings got hurt. Was never going to win over Metallica. That was a weak ass sauce fucking argument. Shut up. And the eighty side, we got the Cure. On the ninety side, we got Radiohead. That, you, you for me, this take is a better picture for Ra the guy from Radiohead. Looks like he's just spitting out cum from a Bukaki film. <laughs> well, that, that's just what he looks like. To be fair, yeah, that's just okay. his standard. Well, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm really not down. <laughs> I don't know either. I'm gonna pick the cure just because I know the fucking crow song. <laughs> but -dum 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 -dum. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick the cure. That's it. Every night I burn, every night I fall. Now, you know, I feel like the cure song is like one of the best songs I've ever heard in my life. It's one burn. of the greatest soundtrack songs, no doubt. Yeah, no, you know Radiohead at least from Creep, right? You know, I wish I was special. So very special. Oh, is that those pussies? Yeah, it's yeah. the cure, dude. But I'm a creep. Oh, yeah, he has a great voice, but he sounds like a wussy. 
it's I'm pure... a wiener. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know who they are now. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna keep going. It's but the I cure. Not it's the it. cure for everyone's sake. It is the cure for me. It's the cure. But like, I mean, I just like to be honest. They they both have that same like dark twisted vibe. So I, I thought it would be at least an interesting matchup. But in my opinion, Radiohead has always been one of the most overrated bands in the history of the 90s i don't say like, shit about i i, I can't even talk on music so you're you're probably like gonna get people pissed did. off dude no nah, dude just like google google like radiohead on snl and they come up there and like dick, 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 oh dick, 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 well, who's dick, hotter oh. is the least like, it's not even hotter is it least of cure hotter than the least of the cure wears lipstick and he dyes his hair black and he wears white makeup so obviously he's hotter uh he's he's basically like he's like if your uncle if, if your uncle got really drunk and got into goth and gay bars uh be oh, like, i was i was gonna say Smith. caitlin jenner singing music um well like but like with like i don't know there's nothing i can say to to respond to that i just think the cure i love the cure they have like 20 fucking great songs i only know like two radiohead songs mm. so it's easy for me I imagine it's going to be easy for them. But People are going to get mad at you. Like, why the fuck are you putting them on there if you don't even know Radiohead? Like, why are you actually, putting them on there? I just think that they have the same vibe. But, like, the Radiohead is like a 90s vibe of The Cure. It's actually closer than I thought. The Cure wins 63% to 37%. I thought it would be further than that because The Cure is like mm. a classic band. And the Radiohead is like fucking like half a good song. <laughs> Well, Radiohead, I think a lot of people still consider them classic, don't they? Or now they do. They so. do. They do. I'm just being a smart ass. I just never, I never understood Radiohead, to be honest with you. I probably shouldn't even put that one in there. You're right, Jay. It, it wasn't fair. Heads made out of radios. It's not fair. But this one is, this one's tight, like a toy. Uh, it's Predator in the no! 80s. No! <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger in 1980s Predator or Mel Gibson. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Braveheart. Oh, Fridham! Oh, fucking shit. Oh, God damn. What was but that I'm feeling? But I'm a wiener. Oh, I feel like my asshole's going to fall out. It's not Taco Bell. It's just my indecision. Uh, Oh, my God, dude. This is a hard one, dude. This is a hard one. What the and hell I'm not am about I my doing dick here? Right now. Uh, all right. You know what? I'm just going to go. First fucking thought. Boom. There it is right there. Braveheart. Give it to I, me. Oh, uh, he did it. He's done it. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. All right, you gotta do it. Okay, you gotta do it. Listen, Spread it's it Mel on. Gibson and Brave Fucking Heart, dude. Listen, it's one of the best, most timeless films ever, shot in a way I'd never <laughs> seen in my life before. Okay, you're talking about on VHS. It was two tapes. It was a long fucking movie, and you watched every fucking you bit of it. You watched every <laughs> fucking bit of it, right? When you when you did two tapes, you had to fucking. You knew you were commitment. Invested. Listen, that's right. That's how they got you. You're that's like a goddamn afternoon. Dude, that's it. That's that's how you know that it's better than Predator. Oh my god, but Predator's <laughs> so fucking good though. Predator's so good. But listen, dude, Braveheart came out. It's two fucking tapes on VHS, and you pop in the next VHS tape after you fucking go reel to reel on the first part one. And you're part two now, and you're already invested. The the, the shots, the look, the feel. The actors, the characters, <laughs> Braveheart, dude. Look at that fucking sword. He's ready to shove it up your fucking woman's ass with his dick and then cut your fucking husband's head <laughs> off. I don't want off. that. I don't the want Predator, that. Predator's a man's movie, right? Like, you got to eat meat and potatoes. A bunch of slack jaw around oh, here. This will put, that's why I bleep myself like Jerry Springer. You have little <laughs> hair on your chest. Yeah, you Jesse Ventura with some of the coolest lines ever. Like, this was like G.I. Joe's come to life with Predator. You had uh, CIA got you pushing pencils, huh? <laughs> Getting a little weak there, Dylan. Huh, Dylan? I'm, uh, I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. It's Braveheart. Like, and there's nothing more. But, I mean, I would say there's nothing more Arnold than him in the fucking forest in the middle of the night wiping goddamn mud on his face. Like, you know, if it bleeds, we can kill it. You know, all that shit. Like, you are one ugly motherfucker. Mm -hmm. But there's... To Braveheart's different. It's an epic, like you said. You got to donate an a, an afternoon to watch that. Like three shit. hours, like three. If, hours especially if it's just shits on TBS, because that's where Braveheart gets you. You turn it on, and like you see a war scene, you're like, it's on TBS. You sit through the commercials, you sit through it all. I'm gonna go Braveheart as well. The end. They castrate that motherfucker, and he's sitting there on the table holding his goddamn. No, 
his what goddamn. Yeah, his, they were, his, they were his, pulling his guts out, dude. They weren't castrating him. They were. Well, they also castrated him. I do they believe. were disemboweling him. Either way, both those things suck. <laughs> but he's holding that. He still has like, wiener. <laughs> freedom, and he lets it go. It is so fucking heartbreaking, and it's so gnarly. And like, yeah, it's it's. It, I I hate to do it. It's tough, and it makes me really happy. When I when I go through these and I, I try to find really good matchups, I get no more joy in life than I do when I when I put one of these up and I watch people go, oh fuck, it's the worst. I know. God I know. damn it, this sucks. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna go Braveheart as well, my friend. I am, but it's tough. It's tough. But I'm yeah, dude. Uh, and dude, and like again, the supporting cast around Braveheart was so good. It was like the Irish guy was like, the good Lord said I might make it through this, but they, he says you're fucked. <laughs> I mean, dude, there's so many like little again but i i can't take away how awesome predator is dude the talk about a, a movie rented over and over again as i was growing yeah. up fucking predator was it man the i think Braveheart, honestly, braveheart's an upset like I, I haven't looked at the chat yet to see but like i think braveheart is an upset most people would pick predator i would imagine but i agree with you it's braveheart yeah well they're gonna say well at least arnold arnold doesn't hate jews <laughs> even though his that's dad was a nazi that's but whatever that's okay that's that's, that's we don't have to go assessment. in there <laughs> uh the crowd says predator wins 72 to a lowly lowly cook 28 percent fucking part. kidding said, me fuck you mike and jay suck our dick are you serious like are you really for real okay they did they they actually every single person in the chat sent me a private message and all of them read suck our dicks okay that's I didn't happened. know I was watching G.I. Jane too. God right. damn it. I have to pee again. What the fuck? I have to go first. All right, go first. All right, go. Fucking go. Just just do just do it. <laughs> he actually just walked away. <laughs> there was no conversation. He just <laughs> rolled the chair around. And just fucking just said, I said, I said, fucking go. And he just went, just rolled out. There was no, we'll go. Well, I'm gone then. We'll go. Well, I'm gone then. Jay just fucking <laughs> rolled in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, God. Zod, I don't even know where we were in the fucking chat. That happened so fast. I'll go backwards. I'll go backwards. Austin said, if you guys lived in Pumpkinhead Town, would you stay and think it's cool or move ASAP? Also, what would it take for you to summon it? Um, I think, obviously, the death of a child. Is probably about the only thing that would make me summon pumpkin head. But yeah, I probably would. And it's another question too. Would you what would make you walk to pet cemetery and like go through that? The death of a child, I'd be like, oh fuck, I gotta consider it at least. That's probably about it, you know. Um, because that's just just too it's too much to deal with. But yeah, that's a good question. Um, Christopher Sampson, fly me to the moon like that bitch, Alice Crampson said, Hey guys, just want to say I appreciate what you guys do by providing. It's because I haven't had enough water. It's not that I've drank too much. It's because I've had I have I haven't had enough liquids. So I apologize for that. I appreciate what you guys do by providing a great service for people that have had a rough time. I ask all of us to raise our drinks and say cheers to Mike and Jay. Keep real. Hey man, I raise my fucking drinks to you. And this drink, by the way, says I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. Uh, we raise our drinks to you guys because you know uh, hard times happen on our side of the screen as well, and there's nothing better than having a couple hours to just cut loose and you know talk movies and hang with our friends and that's how we consider you guys is to be our friends and uh thank you guys man thank you guys for that as well and thank you for that man that was a sweet thing to say appreciate you i'm a sexual tyrannosaurus that's what i saw someone say in the chat and i couldn't agree with you more i am a sexual tyrannosaurus you guys have seen us talk movies but you've never seen us fuck that's where the magic is. And that's where our final act will be. The last, the, actually, that's where this is all heading is our OnlyFans. We're just waiting till we're like 60 and like watch these old dudes fuck. They've watched all the movies. They've watched Mel Gibson fucking movies. They've seen it all and they know how to fuck. The horror couple says, hey guys, happy to be here to hang with you guys. We're wondering if Dr. Loomis prefers 80s Myers or 90s Myers. I will ask Jay when he comes back. That'll be a perfect question for him to answer, obviously. But yeah, we've watched all those softcore 90s sex scenes, you know, where they're like, oh, oh, 
and they're all sweaty and like it's always the chick on top i don't know if you guys remember if you guys know this or not in the 90s movies the chick's always on top the windows are always open but for some reason it's always really hot and sweaty and they're all sweaty and the lights are blue and the chick's on top and she's just oh oh and that that's 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 basically 90 sex scene. I just acted it out for you guys. You guys don't have to have watched any 90 sex scenes, but that taught us how to have sex. We thought we were supposed to be soft, and then I was soft, you know, sweet about it. And then you watch, then you grow up and you see Pornhub, and you're like, oh, these dudes are choking chicks, they're slapping them in the face, they're choking them, like, what's going on here? And then like, oh, we gotta add that to our repertoire too. And then you just go, you've been you've been giving a girl soft sex for so long, and then all of a sudden you're just ah, and they're like, No, I didn't want that, and then all of a sudden you end up in jail. It's never happened to me, but I have friends in Texas who it's happened to. Robin Bark says, I'm sure you know Wes Crate. Oh, we already answered that. Shit. Fuck. We're caught up. Look at us. Look at fucking us. On the ball, on time, eating shrimp baskets on vacation. Sorry, I was thinking about next week because that's going to happen. I'm going to have 12 to 19 fish baskets. Fried fish baskets. Anyways, uh, this has taken quite the turn, D-Land, but... I mean, you've all seen 90 sex scenes, haven't you? You know how they go. You know how it works. They're the best. <clears throat> you know, what that's what I was just telling them, Jay. It's like in a 90 sex scene, there's always a windows open. There's there's always a blue light. And the chick's mm -hmm. always on top. And she's always like, oh. <laughs> and like, oh, it's always like sensual and soft. Oh, <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's how it goes. Is, yeah. That's it how is. it goes. I'm all caught up on the Super Chats, by the way. Oh, and, we're live um, then. We're live. Yeah, we're live. We're live. Mm. It's on. It's on. It's on you now. <laughs> oh, Actually, I'll, I'll pull up. I'll pull up the next thing if you want. I'll pull up the next thing while I'm gone. Okay. Um, if you wanna, if you wanna get into it, I'll, I'll just give my opinion real quick on it. But I'll try to pick a good one. Uh, oh, this is a good one. The answer, my friends, is seven. And there's no doubt about it. And I love Hellraiser. And you need a shower after washing it. You got a loofah deep. And it's a great horror movie. It's an all-time great. But yeah. Seven is one of the greatest goddamn movies that has ever existed in our time. What's in the and box? What's in the fucking box? Uh, it's Seven for me. opening the box. Easily. But what do you guys say? Let me put the chat. Let me put the poll in. And I'm going to pull the fuck out. Be right back. Yeah, dude. Uh, well, it's going to be uh, 100%. It's going to be Seven, in my opinion, as well. Woo! Uh, I don't want it to be true. I don't want this reality to become real but i must okay while pinhead doug bradley is one of the most unique horror icons to ever exist ever okay and he deserves his place in the legendary look at that ugly crack there it smells so bad i thought i got hit with fucking um <clears throat> uh what, what what's that shit called uh, vinegar anyway but yes, uh, Doug Bradley uh, as Pinhead is is one of the most unique monsters to ever exist in the echelons of greatness in horror characters. I mean, you have Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, um, and then I think you 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 definitely have to put Pinhead in there as well, along with Chucky. So he is a classic villain. He was one of the first villains that would show up be terrifying in his visage in his presence but then actually explain to you in a very cultured way exactly how he's going to rip your asshole from your butt and then put it in your mouth and then this is what you deserve and you you're going to believe him then you move on to seven you have morgan freeman looking saucy and then you have brad pitt maybe in the sexiest role that he's ever done next to fight club okay He's got this smoldering look, this detective that wants to prove himself against this old veteran cop in Morgan Freeman. And they're up against the psychopathic serial killer in Kevin Spacey, which you don't know when you until you watch the movie. That's enacting all these sins based on the biblical seven deadly sins of the Bible. It's shot, seven is, so amazingly, so wondrously. The soundtrack is incredible. The pacing is on point. That it has to be Seven. I think that Seven is a movie that is put together in such a way that it's horror, yes, but it's thriller. It's it's a, it's it's a, it's a um, it's a an actual school on how to tell a story and keep the the people entertained and, and along for the ride. The horror part is actually very human. 
the horrific parts of of the film is because a psychopath crazy person could actually do these hellraiser while disturbing in, in, in for for multiple reasons and and the blue lighting effect that they use and it makes you feel all ooh, ooey gooey the whole movie it's supernatural for the most part um and, and that's just the way that it is but seven transcends it in a lot of ways because it shows what one man is willing to do for his own fucked up weird uh outlook on life in order to bring, to bring this to reality I, I i like i know it's like i'm big braining it i'm five heading it five heading it in a, in a way that I, I i can't do it but i gotta go i gotta go with seven dude i want hellraiser to win but it, but it just must not it just must not um but that's my opinion it's seven for me all day long because to be fair um seven uh and this was was before M. Night Shyamalan was the first time I watched that movie. I, I did not see that shit coming at the end of the movie with the box. I did not, I did not see that shit coming. And I'm like, Holy fuck. Look, I think that movie is disturbing on multiple levels, but like, especially the ending, you're like, what the fuck just happened? Chad Joyce says, so you hate Nightmare on Elm Street? No, I don't hate it. Chad Joyce, <laughs> supernatural. You just can't go there. No, no, listen, I'm talking about these two movies. Like, I'm talking about comparing these two movies. I, I I prefer the supernatural aspects, but I feel like Seven is more grounded in reality where it's so evil. The, the evil that actually happens is committed by a flesh and blood human being where it almost becomes supernatural because you're like so taken aback by a human being being able to commit these crimes in my opinion but i but again uh, that's my opinion the the um look the the, uh, the box from hellraiser you opened the box we came what a classic fucking line what an amazing setup the fact that the box itself is attractive to sycophants it's, it's attractive to uh, people that I've always thought like the 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 La Merchant configuration is is more for the purely perverted, uh, disgusting sides of humanity that are wanting to have more of an experience. So they they seek this box out, and that's fucked up too. But seven, again, I think it could actually happen. I mean, I think that you could be on Law and Crime Network. Uh, on YouTube and and find out about a, a fucking serial killer that was enacting these types of you know crazy ass uh, rules and and implementing them. I, I think the closest uh, they they actually did do kind of a seven thing uh, with with Hellraiser in the newest one. Uh, what was it? Hellraiser uh, the one not the new not the not the bullshit one on Hulu the one before that. Um, <clears throat> Give me a second. What was it called? It wasn't Redemption, was it? Mm. I can't believe I forgot that, so I have to go through here now. Judgment. Yeah, Judgment. Yeah, I feel like they <clears throat> they did a, a, a like they kind of mixed Seven and, and, and Hellraiser together, I think. Yeah, you guys know. Judgment. Yeah. Action says, Jay, will you drink Bush Light? Yeah, sure. I mean, whatever. If I'm low on money, I don't mind. I'll, I'll drink it. I'll drink anything if if I need to. Uh, the Evil Resident says, the Auditor was awesome. Yeah, dude, I agree. I, I think there there was so much more to be explored with Judgment, and I, and I feel like they should have just continued the story, the thread, the story thread they were going with, with Judgment, rather than just doing the reboot and doing the Hulu thing. I know a lot of people like the Hulu reboot. I personally thought it was just kind of like whatever. It felt like too clean. It felt very uh, cinematic. I don't know. I just didn't like um, the new one. I think that they already, they had a base with Judgment. And I feel like going forward, using Judgment as as the, uh, the baseline, I think it would have been really good. Doing a sequel off of Judgment. 
I actually uh, liked um, I actually liked uh, the guy that <clears throat> played Pinhead in 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 Hellraiser: A Judgment. He he had the element of Pin, uh, of Doug Bradley, but there was the presence was there. But he had his own spin on it. But uh, yeah, I feel like ultimately Judgment. There were some bad parts to it. Don't get me wrong. And it could have been done well. It could have done. It could have been done way better. But I, I, I still feel like they did a, a, an incredible job uh, with acting and 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 uh, story and pacing. And then with the Hulu thing, I don't know, man. I, I feel like it was like a, a lot of bullshit at once. They were, and then they changed the whole fucking dynamic of the the mythos of Hellraiser in a way that I I, I just don't think works. You know. Um, that you can easily trade souls and do this, you know, goddamn swap meet shit. I feel like it was dumb, but anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent here. I think it's going to be the nineties seven as a superior film overall to Hellraiser. You would be correct. My friend, the crowd agrees 65 to 35%. I thought that would be way closer. Mm -hmm. I really did. Um, I don't think we have too many more left. I don't, let me look here. Let me look softly in my basket. Okay, I got a comic book one. I got a comic mm. book one, dude. Uh, how about this? How about the 80s Frank Miller, the Batman Dark Knight Returns comic book series? Or the 90s Death of Superman comic book series? I mean, I think it's an easy... Uh, this is a layup. I think it's the Dark Knight. Frank Miller. I feel like what Frank Miller did for Batman... Uh, in the in those days in the 80s was a, a shot of adrenaline to the character because it, like i don't know if you guys were reading the comic books in the 70s i mean some of you might be old enough to remember that or maybe not Ooh. but if you go back and look at the 70s comic books era they were still using adam west as a baseline so he was kind of a joke he wasn't batman okay what frank miller did for batman was what tim burton did for batman in, in the cinematic uh field uh, he brought Batman back to this dark, edgy uh, crime fighter that's like, I'm fucking done with the goddamn <laughs> Miranda rights, bitch. I'm going to pound I've had to face with this turbo into cop. the gravel until you tell me turbo what the man. fuck is going on. But yeah, I feel like Frank Miller's Batman Returns is without a doubt one of the best comic books ever as far as story story wise but also one of the best comic books ever for the changes that it created in the tone and, and, and uh, overall production of, uh, of comic books going forward. It, like it literally said, people don't want this hokey ass bullshit anymore. They are ready for a badass Batman. They are ready for the, the, the Avenger of the night. They are ready for this guy. That that's not enough. Yeah. They are ready for a guy that has a Metallica soundtrack when he swoops in. Fuck the 22. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fuck you, man. Fuck you. But no, I mean, I'm serious, man. Look at that cover. Look how amazing that looks. That's also, sweet. the art style was incredible. It was so unique when you uh, when you cracked open this novel or this comic book and, and to look at that. It was so cool. The death of Superman, I remember it very vividly, and it, I, I definitely remember it uh, when it happened. It was... Um, it was DC's um, crapshoot to kind of shake things up and get more people interested in buying comic books from them again. It was a good comic book. I think that Doomsday was a great character, and I definitely enjoyed the storyline. But they knew everybody knew when they were buying this, the death of Superman. They were, I mean, it made fucking headlines. It was on the news. Yeah. They knew it wasn't going to be a lasting thing because you, DC needs Superman. But it was still really unique and different, and and, and I got to give them credit; they went there. Like they put big dick energy into doing this. <laughs> that BDE but, will get you. But yeah, it, it, but it, it was always like uh, it was very clean to me. It was like the the the, the art style was okay, but it was very it's very like uh, I don't know the right word for it. Um, consumeristic, and that's not that's not a word. That's it's fair unique. though. I see what you're saying. Yeah. But it was very, but it was very consumer driven. You know what I mean? Like, oh, how many, yeah. how many magazines or, or comics can we sell by doing something fucking crazy? Let's kill Superman, yeah. and that's yeah. it. Yeah, and that's fair. And and honestly, like, I'll do this right now before I even give my opinion. I'll throw in the damn towel. Throw in the damn towel. 
Crowd agrees with you, man. Dark Knight Returns, 83% to 17%. Yeah, I don't think that is Superman. Frank Miller is, a, Frank Miller is the John Carpenter of comic books, dude. That's for, just what he is. For me, it's Death of Superman. Like uh, I, I know that's that's obviously that's the, that's the minority pick on it, but it's I mean it's it's my favorite it's my favorite fucking comic book of all time. So uh, it, you know I got the fucking you know the tattoo of, of that of that cover, uh, but I just think that you know uh, for me it's that I love Dark Knight Returns. Everything you said about it's one hundred percent correct. Batman was so fucking badass and that it was so cool and it transcended comic books. You know, like they did something that's not. Well, that's what Ben before. Affleck's character was based on. In right, the right. Universe. And that's why it was so fucking great. And so, uh, you know, uh, underappreciated for what they did. It's the death of Superman for me, though, just because uh, like I, I the one the one thing you can say against Superman is like, oh, he's unrelatable. Right. You can say, oh, he's this perfect being. He's unstoppable. But this guy went up against Doomsday and he literally gave his life uh in the face of metropolis to save these th this 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 planet that that he just kind of was adopted to you know like he gave his life and he gave his life in front of everybody and yeah they retro fixed it and all that and they did the multiple remember uh, remember a blue and red superman like and all that shit terrible yeah they, I, yeah, have they, that, I have the first appearance of that yeah it's awful yeah they they rode that shit into the ground but just this comic specifically when he when he dies in front of lois and everybody and he gives his life to save the human beings like there's something about that that's just always resonated me more than any comic book i ever read like he was such a perfect being and he didn't have to but he literally died with that last punch to like save everybody so it will always be death superman to me it's my favorite but i totally get it the Dark Knight. Well, wait, I got. I got. I got to give huge props. Uh, Dark Knight Returns, the DC animated film with Peter Weller doing the mm -hmm. voice. God damn, dude! It's some of the yeah. best shit of fucking all time. When he was like, when he was like, uh, "You're in an operating clinic, son," and he's like fucking him up, like in in the dirt, like the the main mutant thing. Oh my yeah. like, god, damn, dude! It's so dude. Peter Weller's voice fits so well with that character. Yeah. It almost, make, it almost makes me think, dude, in my mind, if Peter Weller was younger, cast Peter Weller as fucking Batman in The Dark Knight Returns. Well, and another thing, dude, both of these stories, it's a, it's amazing. It's an amazing failure on Hollywood's part that neither of these stories have gotten an appropriate. Like, I know that they were doing that Batman with, with Snyder and also with Batman versus Superman, they shoehorn the fucking doomsday yeah. story in there and they shouldn't have as much as I enjoyed seeing it on the big screen. It should have been like a three, uh, a three picture arc. Like right. 100%. Right. Well, and the I, dark Knight returns. What happened was, I think that people, well, I think what happened with the dark Knight returns is because they were like, that shit's too fucking dark. I mean, you literally yeah. have the Joker coming out of retirement and then killing a bunch of people right. in, in like a, a Conan O'Brien, David Letterman studio. And then doing yeah. a, I feel like they were just too scared of doing it. Like, but they should. I mean, they should though. Like, like they should look at what they did with the Joker, making it a one-off. I know they're doing a sequel, mm -hmm. but making it a one-off. And they should do uh, maybe even no, a, dude, like a imagine three movie. Them doing, imagine them doing an actual dedicated The Dark Knight Returns adaption of uh, right, uh, like That's, in a movie. That's what I'm saying. Both, both. Like they should. There should be a three-picture arc that it doesn't tie into any outside universes. Mm. It's literally just covering Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. Three movies, all covering it, and then they should do the exact same thing with the death of Superman. Yeah. Now, in, even if they don't go into the post-death of Superman, where they have all the extra Supermans, that's the world too much without to ask. a Superman. Yeah, yeah. That's too, when you have like the multiple Supermans coming yeah, out. Maybe lot, that's too yeah. much to ask. But like the Doomsday story should be like a two or three picture arc. Dude, I, I, but I, should be got, three pictures. Easy. You got to remember how Snyder, the Snyder had to be on top of the moon when when Miller said the dark, the, the, his version of Batman was exactly the Ben Affleck version of Batman that Snyder uh, like gave to the screen is yeah. exactly what Miller saw. And then when Christian, uh, not Christian, oh well, yeah, Christian Bell. And uh, Christopher Nolan was like, "Oh, well, we took inspiration from Frank Miller's The Dark Knight." He was like, "That is that is not even remotely related to my version." Yeah, because like, if you look at it, one hundred percent, Ben Affleck's uh, Batman is one thousand percent more related yeah. to Frank Miller's. 1, yeah, one thousand percent, one hundred percent. They really, that, and that's just another thing that WB's dropped the ball on. You've got. D DC is a top heavy property. They have all this great. They have Greenland. They have all this amazing stuff, but they really are top heavy. Yep. They have Marvel has all this shit, but DC has Batman and Superman they and nothing compares to they that. And they've characters. never fucking been able to hone yep. in on it and figure it out. It's a disappointment uh, for sure. Okay. How about this? 
On the 80s side, Mike Tyson's punch out. On the 90s side, NBA Jam Super Nintendo. That feels good. I feel like I, you know, good you got to go um, you got to go with Sean Kemp and Peyton on the Supersonics. You win every fucking time. This is the best duo. <laughs> and, and everyone's going to say, "No, you're going to go with the Bulls." But remember, no. Michael Jordan didn't give his likeness. Uh, so you were playing uh, with player and You got to get Pippen. Sean Kemp. Uh, it's punch out for me. It's punch out. I mean, I, I like I spent hours and hours playing punch out. Dude, it's it's classic. I remember playing I didn't get to play Mike Tyson's punch out as much as like the the regular punch out when they had to take Mike Tyson out of it and it was just uh the dream or I think it was Mr. Dream because <clears throat> they had to replace Mike Tyson as but I beat that fucking game, dude. And it, it took was me hard, forever. Dude. It was so hard. Yeah, it took it me forever really to beat that game. But I remember beating that game, and it was such an achievement. It was so fucking awesome to finally get up through the world circuit. And that music, by the way, ooh, the eight bit music <laughs> when you were training as little Mac, and then when he's running in the daylight and he's running at the night, dude, yeah. it's so fun. And I, you know what? To be to be fair, I am surprised that there is not a actual Hollywood movie called Punch Out with Little Mac. <laughs> and, Dude, and and fighting glass Joe jaw and, and and kaiser and and yeah. uh all the other you know soda pop kawiski or or bald soda bull. Pop Popinski. Where, yeah bald bull or whatever where the fuck is that do it's punch out it's fucking punch out dude to me punch out is as much of a system seller for nintendo as mario yeah oh and it was and 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 like I, I haven't even decided yet. I, I, I honestly haven't decided yet because NBA Jam was super fun. And NBA Jam also had that arcade feel where you could walk into an arcade and you still can at some of these places and you can yeah. play it. Hang on one second. I got to think. Dude, I got to switch my thing. Uh, it's a really tough one, though. Boom, shakalaka. It's got to be the shoes. It's got to be the shoes. I remember more of um, Super NBA Jam uh, where it was like the silver cover with the ball on fire. And I remember that more than just regular. I I, I, never, I never rented NBA Jam. I, I know I didn't rent just regular NBA Jam. I rented the, the, I think it was Super NBA Jam. But dude, punch out fucking classic characters. A great story told in, in, in a very simple way. You know, this nobody boxer coming up through the ranks. Nobody believes in you. You've got this fat trainer eating Hershey bars. Who cares? Uh, and, and he, and he does great dude. I, I cannot, I swear to God, dude, it's so strange to me that punch out was never made into a movie, like no, an actual I, cinematic movie, I guess, because they were like, well, it would be too much like Rocky. So they didn't want to do it. And that makes sense. But someone should do that. Like someone should do that right now. Like someone no, they should did. There's, right a fan, now. there's a fan film on YouTube. It's great. Yeah. It's great. It, that's what someone should do, man. A hundred percent. Uh, for sure. Uh, it, it's sitting there right there for the taking, Grab that ass and spread them cheeks and go for it. But the only thing I would give NBA Jam the, the edge on is it was a communal experience. Like you can play NBA Jam with your friends and like he's on fire and like you're know, that fucking yeah. the ball going in with the flames on it, or you can play it in an arcade with your friends. If yeah. I had to though, like if you're looking at me and like delete one of these from history, man, you have to pick one to delete from history. Punch I gotta, I gotta, I gotta delete, I gotta delete NBA Jam and go with Punch Out. Um, I, I I hate because like I think Punch Out's the greatest boxing game of all time. Whereas there are probably Fight better good, Fight NBA. Fight now, yeah, but but it wasn't yeah. But like if I had to pick, I would I would choose Punch yeah. Out. But like yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Punch Out. But NBA Jam was fucking awesome, like it was. So well, I was telling him I was like I feel like it's more like Super NBA Jam, where it was like the silver cover uh, the the cover. Yeah, when they yeah. added more teams and it was like a lot more like uh, I don't know, but yeah, it's Punch Out, dude. I think Punch Out is like a classic fucking NES game. You and, and, I, and again, are... I, I feel like it drove like okay, people are like, dude, are you serious? Like, yeah, dude, I, I I am serious. I I have seen so many people that talk about their NES system. It's like I play Punch Out all over and over again next to Mario Three, yeah, and and fucking uh, and Zelda. Yeah, I, I'm with you, but I could go either way. The crowd says NBA Jam, 56% to 44%, but it was close. It was damn close. Whoa, dude, a lot of young it, folk in here. A lot it of young was folk. real close. Here's a weird one. This one's kind of strange, all right? On the 80s side, you got the Ninja Turtles van. 
the original 80s Ninja Turtles van, which I, it was really hard to find a good picture of. Mm. On the 90s side, you have Crash Test Dummies, the car that I breaks had apart. I had both. Yeah, I did too. Like that, the, the, when I saw that, I forgot about Crash Test Dummies, but when I saw the picture of this, I was like, oh my God, I fucking remember that. And the commercials and how wild mm. they were. Uh, I'll put this up in the poll. I'm going Ninja Turtle van, dude, because that was just like, like That's Crash Test Dummies was fun, and it was a, it was a <clears> really good Zeke Geist at the time, Zeke Geist or whatever the fuck however you say. It. But like uh, the Ninja Turtles van, dude. The wor- but I have the weirdest thing, dude. Like so, with the Turtles van, I had this reoccurring nightmare. My dad had a green Ford Tourist back then uh, that he got from his work or whatever that he was doing. And I had this terrible dream that, that was reoccurring that my parents were pulling up from like a dinner or something like that. And I wa- I go to the window and I'm looking forward to seeing them, you know, pull inside or whatever. And then I left my fucking Ninja Turtle van in the driveway and forgot about it. And even though they're going like four miles an hour, they hit the Ninja Turtle van and the car flips over and they die. Mm. And I try to scream to warn them that the Ninja Turtle van's in the way. And it's one of those dreams where there's no voices that come out. So I'm like, so I, I'm almost haunted by the Ninja Turtle yeah. van, but there was so much more to do with it. It was so much, yeah, like well, Ninja Turtles were so the, much cooler. I'm going the, Ninja Turtle. The crash test dummies could have been like sponsored by fucking Allstate Insurance. <laughs> yeah. uh, like it was so happen. dumb that that was marketed to kids but i understand why i mean it was a cool car because if you smashed it against the wall it would like crumple up but dude it's the fucking turtles dude it's the goddamn turtles all right it, the turtles win come on yeah it's just it's too it's too popular of a you know what i mean like you could do so yeah. much more with it crash test dummies was like hey dude well, i got crash the crash test dummies, test dummies like, thing well, let me they were, they were the a wall. gimmick thing they only lasted for like two years like their right popularity, right yeah, yeah. That, it, it was a gimmick like you, you have your friends over like dude watch this and then it was over and then you're done but the turtles van you could you could i wish i kept mine though i wish i kept my crash test dummy fucking car and yeah. and fig- i think i had one figure but yeah well the fun thing about the turtles van though is you could also reuse it for like other because like, i don't know if you're like me but like the way i was with my action figures i would tell stories like i i wasn't like i wasn't one of those kids who would take two toys and like bang them together and be like oh whoa. like i would actually make out stories like so i'm like you're gonna roundhouse kick this dude in the face he's gonna fall into a pit of acid then his best friend's gonna come and fight you so like i could use the turtles van for other stuff whereas the crash test tummy th- dummies thing was just like a oh this is a joke yeah boom it's <laughs> over it's like a gimmick so no uh, i had it, i had so many stories dude they, they call me the stephen king of star wars back then <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> you could have written I, fucking no, fan I fiction do. i was like all right well darth vader wound up on this weird planet with a carpet plushy uh brown <laughs> and he's never felt this type of, of footing before and it's all in your head yeah, dude. Dude, it was fun back in those days yeah man the best man uh you guys agree with us tmnt van with the biggest uh one sider of the night wins 86 percent to 14 percent. that's a smart fucking crowd right there yeah, you guys got that one right. Not many left. Uh, very, very much so not many left. Let's jump right into the next one. On the 80s version, you got Aerosmith. 80s Aerosmith. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. On the 90s side, Soundgarden. It's a, oh, Black Hole we gotta go. Uh, it's Aerosmith for me. Aerosmith, get out of my face. I am fully and 1,000% on the side of Soundgarden on this one, my friend. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Yes, you have sucked the devil's dick for far too long. You become corrupt. <laughs> like Aerosmith, like fun. Like I have no problem with Aerosmith, but to me, they've always been sort of a joke band. Yeah, they like corrupt of your damn desires. They never sang about anything. Like, say, it's, like I, I get like well, the uh, the Armageddon song was, and I don't want to miss the thing. And they also had the pink song. Pink is my favorite color. No, they've always been kind of like, like a lady. A, they have a fuck. To, I mean, they have like they walk like a lady or a uh, walk this way. I mean, love it in elevator. Even though Living technically up, walk this way, why it was fucking popular, it really got more popular with Run DMC. So right, but for me personally, their stuff was always very commercial. It was never very like, like just like it didn't really stick with you. Soundgarden for me has multiple songs that that were deep as fuck, and I think Chris Cornell. Actually, Chris Cornell versus um, um, Stevie Tyler singing wise is like mm. would probably be one of the greatest matchups of all time. Like, yeah, so. Jesus Christ, they could both sing the shit. Maybe out we'll of find them on American Idol. 
<laughs> it would be fucking nuts. My personal taste just leads me to Soundgarden, but I, I get it. Aerosmith's bigger for sure. You know, like they're yeah. definitely more commercially successful. Um, and in the we're going a little bit quick on this one, but I'm going to take a look at the crowd. Five, four, three, two, fuck fun. Aerosmith. Oh, it's fifty to fifty. Okay, first one to take take over the next vote wins. It's 50 50. It's a dead tie. Boom. Soundgarden wins 51 to 49%. The closest vote of the fucking night. I can't dude. wait till the comments come in on this one. Hoyt. Oh my God. You fucking people have Hoyt. sold your fate. <laughs> so tight. There's that was no the closest way. vote There's in forever. No dude. way, dude. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a world we live in. Just says, fuck ya. Yeah. Like Antonio Banderas. Fuck ya. Yeah. <laughs> my God. It's just a guitar. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So we're almost done. We're almost there. Um, did we? I don't think we did this one. We didn't. We didn't. On the eighty uh, well, side, yeah. The ecto trap, the ghost trap, fucking with the squeezy pump. Mm -hmm, that's good On stuff. the ninety side, uh, you know the ghost trap from Ghostbusters. For those who are just yeah, listening, the real and Ghostbusters. Watching. Yeah. So they yeah. Uh, the ghost trap with the the glow in the dark glow trap that you can just slide into a room and you press the pump. And on the ninety side, you've got the Power Rangers Morpher, the one that they held up. And with it the actually, in the middle. well, yeah. And the and the Power Rangers Morpher actually had lights. Like when you when you uh, when you morphed up, it's morphing time, bitch. And the lights would actually come on. I think there was sound. I'm not 100 percent sure, uh, but the uh, it's still, dude. I mean, I think that more. I think a more innovative uh, design is the morpher because when you when you actually did get one and you could you could actually hit a button on the side of the morpher and have the coin in it. And then the, the red light would would like you could actually do that. Like the red light would show up. And the, the the ghost trap from the real Ghostbusters, like nothing happened. It was like you you stepped on that shit, and it was like that's the, that, <laughs> that's the sound that it would make, like from the air. And then like you got to pretend like you're you're shooting down a ghost to go into the trap. I'm shocked, but, dude. I, I thought no, I thought... but I, no, I'm not. No, I, I but I'm gonna give it to. The ghost trap. I mean, I, I still think the ghost <laughs> trap is Ghostbusters, dude. Yeah, it's still better than Power Rangers. Yeah, I like like the Power Rangers thing was cool as fuck. Like it was dope as fuck. Fits in your hands. That's that's so. We cool. never got a morpher. I never had a morpher. I had I coins, either. but I never had a morpher. Yeah, same. I never had one either. I've never actually held one in my own goddamn yeah. adult hands. But dude, I did have a ghost trap. And what I loved about that ghost trap was, you know how like toys smelled, like new toys smelled. Yeah, it was like the greatest fucking thing of all time. Yeah. That ghost trap, dude. That entire thing smelled so fucking good. It smelled like the inside of a ghost face mask, like that. Well, like J.C. Penny for the first time. Yeah, it was yeah. so good, dude. Yeah. And the and the way it was glow in the dark. If you put it out under the light, and then you would go in the dark and throw it out, and it was like that weird green sheen. Dude, it was so fucking cool. Yeah, it's and, ghost trap easy for me. Yeah, and if you had, if you were lucky enough to get the proton pack with the styrofoam fucking uh, stream, yeah. man, you were set for fucking life. Like the, you, you had you were a full on Ghostbuster then. Yeah, dude. I, and I wanted because you know, like, here's the thing about the Power Rangers thing: you had to have the fucking coin, you had to have the morpher, then you had to have the gloves and a mask. You had to do the whole fucking thing to even be complete. In this, in Ghostbusters, all you really needed was the fucking proton pack and the trap, and you were yeah. set. Yeah, it was a good time, man. I, and I actually, I dude, I had the the proton pack from the '80s in here, and I actually couldn't think, I couldn't find a single thing that was cool enough from the '90s to go against it. So I just left it no, out. Yeah, like it, I think that's like the coolest toy of all fucking yeah, time. You, you you can't you can't fight it. It's impossible. You know, it's uh, yeah. Can't stop a dick to the to the dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys say though power morpher wins 56 percent to 40 fucking five percent what a bunch of fucking nerds they said fuck you fuck you crack no well i will say uh it's true though like like the power morpher was cool because it made lights and shit when you when you morphed it up it had the yeah. red lights going you know it's cool but i just didn't maybe it's just that i, I didn't not that well no i mean you had to actually like have imagination when you yeah. had a fucking ghost trap, because all you had was like a, psh. yeah. When you stepped true. on the fucking trap, you didn't yeah. have lights and sounds. So when the nineties came around, <laughs> a bunch of fucking bitches were running around like I'm a Power Ranger, pterodactyl. I like, and I like, like that. 
and they're like, yeah, well, you didn't change, bitch. Dude, I love that you remember the same sound that I do when you stepped on it and went. <laughs> that was fucking awesome. Um, okay, so two more to go. Two in the box, ready to go. We be hot and they be slow. They be slow. A music one for you now. On the 80s side, dude. Oh my god. Bon Jovi. Get out of my face. On the 90s side, fucking Creed. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna like I'm gonna like <laughs> I'm actually I have to go pee again, but I'm gonna say it right now. Creed. Go ahead. I'm gonna say Creed. Oh shit. I thought you were for sure going Bon Jovi, dude. No, Bon Jovi has got the mega hits, dude. They've got the fucking, they've got the it factor. Bon Jovi, John Bon Jovi is incapable of losing his hairstyle or his hair, no matter what dickhead that he goes through. He has got immortal juice running through his fucking veins and his voice. I don't think he's real. I think he's a demon. I think that Bon Jovi, though, their sound is very similar to their last album, and their last album, and their last album, it's a very much, uh, um, what would you call it, um, pop rock type of sound. And it is definitive of the 80s, though. I will give them that. They are very a uh, definitive uh, band from the 80s. Now, Creed, what an interesting history that we weave, Scott Stapp. What an interesting path that we walk. Because if you'll remember My Own Prison, the first album they released, My it's fucking reason. hard, it's dark. Uh, and, and you can really hear a guy struggling. Like, it, like in my opinion, I know people are like, oh my God, what are you fucking talking about? It's very much Linkin Park early on in a rock version. You know what I mean? Without like rap. It was a very, it was a very uh, personal album. And you can hear that through his lyrics. I feel like Scott Stapp was struggling with a lot of problems back then, and you can hear it. And then as they continue to grow and they they got better at, at, at telling their uh, stories through their music, uh, is it a sellout band? Are they Nickelback before Nickelback? I mean, yeah, I mean, there are certain songs, 100%. I, I, could, I could easily see why people would say they're ballads more than rock songs. But, dude, Creed, to me, like, it speaks on... Um, even if you don't believe in, in in their God or the Christian God or whatever, but they, they speak on a higher power and, and they give you like hope and they give you like direction and they give you like, um, I don't know, like it speaks on a very um, poetic side of humanity. Bon Jovi is like, let's fucking pound it out. Let's drink this fucking beer and smoke this joint and go fuck those girls at that fucking house. And then and Creed's like, hey, slow and down. they did. And Creed's like, slow down. Let's smoke <laughs> that joint. Okay, let's smoke that joint. Let's drink that beer a little slower and then figure out whether or not this is the path for me. <laughs> I don't know. It's Creed for me, right. dude. It's Creed. Enjoy, enjoy your pee, man. By the way, before you go, I do want you to know I agree with you. He's gone already. He's gone. There, he's gone. there he goes. Oh, he, oh he's gone. Uh, <laughs> look, uh, I, 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 I thought for sure, and I'm not looking at the chat, but I thought for sure Bon Jovi's going to blow this one away. Because they're like Bon Jovi or Creed, right? But like Creed to me, maybe I'm more of a kid of the 90s. I guess I just am at heart. But Bon Jovi to me is like three good songs that people sing and fucking beat the shit out of at karaoke, you know? And they're great fucking song. We're living on a prayer. Fucking amazing, right? Um, but Creed is more my speed. They're a little bit darker, just a little bit more twisted. And yeah, they have some fucking atrociously bad music. They have some terribly bad songs, but I just, I dig the, their vibe more, I guess when they're on, they're fucking more on and it's more my speed than Bon Jovi. So I don't know who's better, but I feel like Creed makes albums and Bon Jovi makes hits and then other shit on the album. And like they, they have a, like one of the corniest songs I've ever heard in my life is "Have a Nice Day." Na, 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 na. Like I'm like that is cringy as fuck to me. But also Creed has some cringy stuff too. But I don't know. There's something about bringing my hand on Sunday morning, bringing my. It's a direct memory of the '90s. Or can you take me higher? Holy shit! Now with arms wide open, it got a little cheesy or whatever, but it was still fun. And then also you got Scream Three. You got. What if I did? What if you lied? Uh, so for me, it's Creed, but I'm 
I'm no judgment either way. Let's see what you guys say. I have a feeling it's going to be Bon Jovi. I don't know. It is. Oh, it's dead tied. 50%. Fuck. First person to vote changes the whole fucking outcome. It's Bon Jovi. 51 to 49% on a last second vote from some random fucking person in the audience. It was dead ass tied. Creed to Bon Jovi. 50%. Someone voted Bon Jovi because they heard it at a karaoke bar at Applebee's. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, um, you know, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I, I actually love some of some Creed's underhelded songs too, or unheralded songs too, you know, like uh um I'm 18 <laughs> whatever the fucking Creed voice is. Um, yeah. All right, so one more, the last one. This is the last song, or was that the last one? Let me look. Dude. What does the goddamn vote say? They fucking chose Jay. It was fucking it was 50-50. Dead tied 50-50. And I said next vote wins. And the next vote was for Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Oh my god. In the end. So you guys believe in aliens? <laughs> Who does it? Like that no, John Bon Jovi's alien. literally a fucking alien. Let me ask you this though. Our last vote of the night, my friends. And I, I think it's a tough one. Uh, yeah, it is tough. I don't like to talk about this, though. I feel like we're talking about childhood trauma. <laughs> Do you guys like the 80s version of Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge? Mm. Or do you prefer That's the faculty strong. from the 90s? <sighs> what say you? Vote now, motherfuckers. Uh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say... Uh, I gotta give I gotta give love and appreciation and support to Nightmare Two. Me too. I just have to do it. I just have to do it. Listen, I feel like Nightmare Two gave us the best look of Freddy ever. The witch, the witch uh, ears, the, the 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 makeup, the eyes, the story. I fucking hated the glove. I I, I think the glove was atrociously dumb. Uh, but I, I, I like the story, dude. I, I think the story was really, really good, especially because it feels so separate from Nightmare One. It feels like it's its own movie, like an interpretation of what the director felt that uh, Freddy could be. It's so unique. Jesse is also the only male protagonist in the in, in the series ever, and he's awesome. I, I, I loved him. I thought he was great. Uh, I just feel like it's such a unique film, dude. I, I feel like Nightmare 2 is the same way I feel about Ghostbusters 2. I feel like it stacks up to the first one, in my opinion. I just do. Right. I say, Jay, I say, touch me, baby, drive me crazy, put my dick on you. That's not how the song goes, but I yeah. agree with you 110%. It's a, uh, it's Freddy 2, dude. It's a, it's Nightmare on Elm Street 2. I love the faculty. It's fucking awesome. It's a great piece of 90s fucking lore and it's 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 an amazing movie but Nightmare on Elm Street 2 holds up so much better I, and yeah. and that's a movie yeah. that came out years before 85 and, yeah yeah and Nightmare on Elm Street 2 gets better as the year goes the years go on and I feel like the faculty gets a little bit worse as far as like the the effects and shit, mm, shit like that yeah, as years yeah. go on I still love it no matter what no matter what but like as far as the effects and stuff like that, that go, it, it does. So I love both, uh, but my pick's Nightmare on Elm Street 2. It's unheralded. Nobody gives the respect it deserves, uh, but it's one of the best fucking Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Top mm -hmm. four Nightmare movies, no doubt about it. Probably my second favorite Nightmare movie to the original, to be honest, but fuck me. What do I know? Dude, I, 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 like, there are some times I wake up in the middle of the night sweating like a fucking hog. And, like Nightmare 2 is better than Nightmare 1. I'm like, what, is, <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> What am I saying? What, what am happened? I doing? God, I felt like Freddy was coming out through my gut and be like, you've got the body and I've got the brain. Uh, That's yeah, the kind dude. of shit that wakes you up at night, though. Dude, really? I mean, no, imagine that, though. Like, you, you imagine that, like, what a what a home run hit Nightmare 1 was. And this guy, <laughs> this director comes out of nowhere and he's like, I'm going to take the story, right? I'm going to make my own spin on it. And he does a fucking incredible job. But it takes years for people to really appreciate what he did. Yeah. In true. that movie. It's a hundred percent fucking true, man. Um, 
Hang on, I'm scooting back. I'm scooting back while you guys are voting on this these last couple couple minutes. But the faculty is good, don't yeah. I, I love the faculty. I mean, I, I do think the faculty is better, like not better. I think it's a good movie. I feel like personally I would watch disturbing behavior over the faculty, but that's only that's just me. Uh yeah, the, dude, I, I just I just talked about that movie today, disturbing behavior. Like between that and the faculty, even though they're both 90s, that's a good vote too. Like I would take the faculty, but disturbing behavior is pretty fucking great. Yeah, it, like um, Katie Holmes gave you like some sexiness. It's no wonder that Tom Cruise like selected her for Scientology. It made no sense, by the way, that she was like this trashy, like gutter slut chick that they tried to make her. It's like that's Katie Holmes. Stop it. Well, I she mean, was trying yeah, to do her dark candle in wild things. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But they they did they went all the way with that one. Ooh, you know what I mean? Fucking hot they went all the way with that one. I'm trying to find there was a super chat that I was supposed to uh have you answer, and I totally fucking jizzed on um It's okay. It's okay. Um oh here it is. Uh, the horror couple wanted to know does Dr. Loomis prefer 80s Myers or 90s Myers? No, I prefer the dead Myers. <laughs> The one that get up from the grave and, and, and continue to terrorize uh, Haddonfield. That's the one that I prefer. Well, the chef will listen to me because you don't have a police force. <laughs> you run around with your head tucked in the sand and your ass is up for Michael to fuck. <laughs> you know why? Because you don't listen to the threats that Michael gives to the town. You say, oh, Michael's dead. Michael's in the hospital. He's wrapped up in bandages. He can't move. And then bandages, more, bandages. Bandages. No, shut up. Go back to Candy Lad, you asshole. <laughs> then Michael comes around and he kills the whole goddamn town. You're like, oh, why didn't we see this coming? You did see this coming, you dumb asshole. It was right in front of you the entire time. So no, I don't prefer an 80s or a 90s Michael. I prefer a death Michael. That's what I prefer. And in the case of a Nightmare on Elm Street 2 versus the faculty, our last vote of the night, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 wins. They agree with us, Jay. They like us. They really like us. 57% to 43%. Nightmare on Elm Street 2 wins. Hey, we're, right. we're putting some, we're taking it back. We're putting respect on Nightmare on Elm Street 2's fucking name. Yeah, man. I'm proud of us. We need it. We need it. We need so that respect. Doing. We need that respect. Like, you, you got to be like 100%, dude. The the protagonist in Jesse is is awesome. I think he's a great, uh, great protagonist throughout the entire film. And again, he's the only male protagonist ever in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, and he does a, a, an incredible job. Uh, yeah, I I just think that Nightmare Two is uh, man, it's so. I'm not gonna say like I I won't say it's uh it's um uh it's underrated because I feel like more people come around to Nightmare Two lately but it is definitely one of those movies that people I, I feel like people don't talk about number two nearly as much as they talk about number one number three or number seven yep you said it you fucking said it you piece of shit by the way when you were going christopher samson had a really sweet super chat he said i just want to say i appreciate what you guys do by providing a great service for people that have had a rough time i ask all of us to raise our drinks and say cheers to mike and jay keep real hey uh, man chris thank you man thank you dude. um you guys do the fucking same for us. I promise you that. Austin says, if you guys lived in Pumpkinhead Town, would you stay and think it's cool or move ASAP? Also, <laughs> what would it take for you to summon it? Fuck that, dude. I'm leaving. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I'm going to like, It sounds too much like the town that I already live in. Like, Where's I'm already living in that town. Yeah, it's like, hey, if you keep going up this goddamn road, uh, <laughs> that twisty and curvy path, you're going to run into that witch woman. Uh, what would it take for me to summon it? Uh shit dude i don't know i i guess it's like is my ex-wife still around <laughs> oh fuck i forgot to answer that that was like it would have to be a dead kid you know what i mean like that would be the oh that would be yours okay I, i'm what's, more petty <laughs> what's weird too though like honest to god like when we're mm. traveling and we pull over to some fucking chick-fil-a in the middle of the you know as, as courtney said the bible belt or someplace and it's just some asshole town that has nothing and it's just they're dirt biking person. Yeah, it's depressing as fuck. It's like a pumpkin in town. And I'm like, MJ, I tell her, I said, look, listen, when you're older and you decide to have relationships with guys or girls or whatever, when you find a significant other, don't 
let them move you to some shithole fucking town with no options. Don't do it because you're going to end up in a town like this in Chelsea, Tennessee. And I, that's actually a place. So I apologize. I, know. I don't know where no, that is. No, 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 and I'm no. like, don't do it. You know what I mean? Think about your options first. <clears throat> don't do it. Cause that's how it happens. That's how you get stuck in those situations. <clears throat> D Mitch says, want to say, I appreciate you boys found you in March, 2020. And you fellas have helped me through tough times, through hard times. Shout out to the Wham fam for being so welcoming. Hey man. Uh, thank you so much, man. Uh, D Mitch, D Mitch, D Mitch, dig dig dick mitch we love dick it through the bitches and turns hey man thank you big thank you for tuning in and, and thank you for your support man we really appreciate that me and mike are always like flabbergasted and taken aback by how many cool motherfuckers that are out there like you uh and, and me and mike are lucky we, we we've said that several times but thank you thank you d yeah. mitch we're the lucky ones, man, to have a group of friends like you guys. Thank you guys so much. Benzilla 2.0 says, I kind of stop watching Power Rangers when they... <laughs> That's weird because he's like, I kind of stop, but it's like, I kind of stop yeah. watching Power Rangers when they started the whole Super Mega Morphing time. Yeah. I stopped after the initial wave. I, I, was I stopped. I, I, like, I watched up to Time Force. I think I did watch Time Force, and it wasn't bad. Time Force was actually pretty good. It was actually a darker take on Power Rangers. But I feel like the magic of Power Rangers kind of went out the window after, in my opinion, Zeo Rangers, because they went they went to uh, Lost Galaxy and then they went to uh, another one. And then, yeah, I, I get you, man. I get you. Yeah, I couldn't get past the initial show for real. Adrian Yabara, how do you think a Texas Chainsaw Massacre directed without any script writing by Rob Zombie would be? I think Leatherface would be uh, very portrayed, very brutal, very scary. Look yeah, at I mean. I, I, yeah, I, I think we've talked about that before. I, I think that Rob Zombie is 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 a hundred percent suited to that dirty ass. My vagina smells like mayonnaise. Uh, <laughs> the whole air smells like butt crack type of environment that the TCM would bring. So yes, I feel like he would do a very good job of uh, of doing a, a, a TCM movie. That or 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 I would give a child's play to Rob Zombie, but. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you, man. Like, I, I think that TCM 2003 already did that. They already gave us a, a, a gnarly mm -hmm. fucking... So, like, stay away, Rob. You go away, Rob, you fucking dick. Uh, Adriel B. 1138 says, Breaking my wham chat, Cherry. Hey, welcome to All the All right, man. Where things get weird. How you doing, bro? Nice like to see you. Dicks. I see your Stormtrooper outfit in your profile pic, and there's tricks. no shame here, sir. All I gotta know is... These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> uh, to say I love you guys. Much love from San Diego. Hey, I've always wanted to go to San Diego where Blink-182 was born. Greatest band of all time. Way better than Metallica. I don't know if you guys know this Ooh, or not. Oh, shit. Mike's hey. continuing asking for ass ravings. Adriel, check out a song called San Diego by Blink-182. It's fucking awesome. Going back to San Diego. Sounds stupid. Fucking awesome. Shut up! Dr. Graham. <laughs> Dr. Graham says, next time you're making love to your woman, whisper in her ear, dead or alive, you're coming with me. And see how she reacts. Enjoy your trip, Mike, not the drugs. Yo, we are, do dead or alive, you're coming with me. Dead or alive, you're coming with me. And she's like, dead or alive, you're going to get a divorce paper. Yeah. True story. True story. Um, uh, wife and I were, were going to have some sex. And uh, the kids were in the house, but they were otherwise preoccupied. So we turned on a movie right to like drown out the sound a little bit and uh it happened to be the new top gun and as Ooh, i was going cool. down on my wife it was at the exact moment that he goes talk to me goose and we both started laughing and that totally ruined the whole moment so yeah. i just want to let you guys you know say, that happened did you like mouth the words talk to me goose to her vagina? i didn't know it was coming i was like going down and then it was like talk to me goose and we fucking goose. both start burst out like, he get, talk to me goose <laughs> what do you like my tongue here or there. So you're welcome for that story. <laughs> Take my breath away. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hey, we're fucking done, man. Hey, all right. Hey, we're but fucking it's, done. It's, it's it's kind of bittersweet though, y'all. It's kind of yeah, bittersweet because it it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a, a hot fat fucking minute before we <laughs> before we get to see you all again. But yeah, sad. it is what it be. It is what it be. Hey, we're gonna get a nice. This, this is the this, this. What's gonna happen the next ten days? Jay is the equivalent of wedding crashers. He's like, I'm gonna choose to eat my waffles. I'm gonna choose not to eat with you. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna shut down the here. engines. I'm gonna move over here. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't need I don't need company. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna miss you guys, man. Uh, this especially specifically these past couple months. Uh, this this these these live streams have have uh, been more to us than you guys know. And we really appreciate you guys. And we're going to miss the fuck out of you. I know that. Yeah, and uh, hey, fuck it. Thanks yeah. for showing up and hanging tonight. Yeah, it's been really fun, man. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, Mike and I uh, have really appreciated all you guys tuning in and, and participating and, and being like rock solid motherfuckers for us through the entire thing. And uh, listen, you know, there are some... Uh, um, like there, there are some really bad shit that happen in your life, like happens in your life sometimes. And, 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 uh, you, you, you get really grateful for the things that you do have. And man, I gotta be honest. I'm so grateful for you guys. I'm so grateful for this channel. Grateful for Mike. I'm, I'm grateful for the platform. I'm grateful for all of it. It's so cool. So thank you guys for, for hanging out with us and, and being retarded. I, I know that's not the right word. You I fucks. said that I, now I'm going to get canceled. That's okay, because I don't have Twitter. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll, like, get stupid with us. And uh, and I, and we really do appreciate it, man. Uh, and, and um, um, yeah, man, uh, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get into a lot of, like, certain things that's been going on. But, dude, like, you, you guys, you guys really have helped a lot. And I look forward to this shit a lot, man especially lately, I really do look forward to this shit a lot. So I really appreciate you guys giving us uh, an opportunity to, to be on here and, and just, you know, shoot the shit with you guys. You guys mean a lot to us and we, and, and we've all, and, and that's always true and real. Um, you guys make it all worthwhile. So thank you guys. Thank you guys. Hey, we love you guys. Thank Good you night, guys. dark continent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. For Goodbye. We'll be back.